Hello everyone. Welcome to Zarantech SAP Basis Training Course. In today's digital era, businesses rely heavily on technology to streamline operations. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just dipping your toes into the realm of SAP, you're in the right place. Let's dive into the fundamentals of SAP Basis. But first, let's clarify what SAP Basis is. In simple terms, SAP Basis is the underlying system administration framework that supports various SAP applications. It's like the backbone of the entire SAP landscape, ensuring smooth operation and optimal performance. Understanding SAP Basis isn't just about mastering a technical skill. It's about positioning yourself for success in a rapidly evolving job market. According to recent industry reports, the demand for SAP basis expertise is steadily increasing with over 80% of Fortune 500 companies relying on SAP systems for their day-to-day -day operations. Well, simply put, it's the foundation upon which countless businesses around the globe ready to streamline their operations, enhance the productivity and drive growth. Whether you're an aspiring ET professional or a seasoned executive, having a solid grasp of SAP basis can open doors to exciting career opportunities and ensure you stay ahead of the curve in today's competitive landscape. In this course, we'll cover everything you need to know to become proficient in SAP basis. From understanding the core concepts and architecture to mastering essential administration tasks and troubleshooting common issues, we've got you covered. By the end of this course, you'll have the knowledge and skills to confidently navigate the world of SAP basis and make a meaningful impact in your organization. But before we begin, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to receive regular updates from us. Now let us take a look at the agenda. Agenda 1, Introduction to SAP. 2, What is ERP? 3, History of SAP. 4, Concept of Transports. 5, Non-ABAP Transports. Let's dive in. So getting started with SAP, um, mainly this is the first day and then we have around uh, uh, 14 days of content. I will walk you through the content after some time. So this is the disclaimer and the presentations or the examples or images what we use in this one or the pictorial purposes only. So please do not share with anybody else. And it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, with the great uh, efforts, we have prepared this content for you. And uh, <clears throat> wherever we have taken from open sources, we have given the credits. Okay, it's a simple disclaimer. So for today, day one, okay, so even though you have uh, experience uh, in SAP basis and you know it still some of you have some questions or clarifications and theoretically or what SAP is and stuff so what I'm going to do today is in the next three or four hours so I'm going to give a, a course overview quickly how we are going to plan for this uh, next uh, 15 days and then uh, we are going to talk about introduction to SAP I mean what is SAP uh, you know, as a company and as a software or as a system, you know, you might have heard about what is SAP system and SAP company, you might get confused about it. So we will differentiate what is an SAP company, what it is all about and what is SAP system. Okay. So, and then we talk about briefly SAP solutions. And when I say SAP solutions, it's not the entire SAP portfolio. And we talk about technical overview of the SAP system. Okay. And then we talk about the architecture so and the uh, in generic landscapes sap system landscapes yeah after that the most important thing is the sap basis administration that is what you all would like to upskill or you know understand in deep but to start with sap basis administration it is very important to understand these few basics yeah i mean about the sap and its history so that your uh, fundamentals or the understanding about the product is clear Okay, so that you can relate whenever you hear some functional terms or, uh, you know, some jargons about ERP, S4, whatsoever. Okay, so if you have this background, how SAP evolved and etc, then it is easy for you to uh, technically work on these systems. Okay, okay, so introduction to SAP. 
so if you th- do you really think that learning sap is hard and then sap learning sap is not hard if you know the right way to start and way to start and what to learn and uh, as per your uh, role if you catch that basic understanding because if you look at the entire sap it's uh, ocean i mean too many products too many modules you know too many domains okay it's not hard if you start rightly from the basics and it's all more or less similar i mean uh, no matter whatever the domain or whatever you work it will be very similar so way to click i mean if you really want uh, i mean uh, way to start and these are the some of the questions i mean whoever comes to this uh, thing you have some confusion about uh, what is this sap and what i am doing especially if you are in a basis right i mean some of you have said that you are working from last 3 months or 4 months you might be working on day to day tasks but still you have this confusion what is exactly is is it a software is it a database is it uh, you know so much frustration i mean uh, is it a functional is it coding or is it a platform uh, you know right uh, we have a lot of uh, abap cloud platform and then java and itweaver platform you hear a lot of these terms so what exactly is it and where you start okay all this frustration if you follow this course carefully i mean with the structure which i have given and with the content slowly i will take you uh, to a level where you uh, relate your current role and then uh, the sap sap in general what it is okay so in this course uh, yeah introduction to sap okay so in this course we don't focus on entirely on what is uh, sap and its entire portfolio okay the most important thing is you have to understand is sap main product for sap is the erp okay so they have started their uh, entire uh, business portfolio with erp and most of these uh, companies use erp and then they have 40 to 50 another uh, components of the solutions which they have but erp is the core product okay now the question comes why we need an erp okay so how sap evolved starting with erp to what it is today and is it a only an erp solution sap is it a, it's not we will uh, i will explain you why it's not an erp only erp solution yes they started with erp but it is not only the erp solution so yeah let me uh, quickly uh, go through what we have uh, discussed so for day 1 uh, we are going to start with introduction to sap and then overview of sap what is sap and uh, you know as a system and as a product or as a customer sap or a vendor service provider okay and then we talk about sap solutions architecture and sap landscapes and basis administration of that if we have time uh, definitely we'll have some time so we will do an uh, basic exercise or a labs uh, where we log into the system and then uh, we will see some basics okay so i'll just quickly uh, review what we discussed uh, before we have this uh, we had this technical problem so we were talking about uh, you know most of us uh, might think learning sap is hard it's very confusing and uh, it has a lot of products lot of solutions and is it a platform or uh you know sometimes people may think that uh, uh, what are these functionalities of uh, so many modules okay so if you are uh, obviously you are here if you want to learn sap and in that particular you want to learn sap basis okay so what we will do is we will uh, going to start with the sap as a company complete portfolio and architecture and then i will slowly take you to the basis administration okay so yeah again is it a software or a database fine okay so many of you might have these uh, confusions or the frustrations uh, when you start and if you google it or if you go to the help.sap.com you may find uh, it's a version of information at too much to go through okay so that's always confusing but don't worry so we will start with the first module introduction to sap okay so when we say sap uh, the first thing uh, which comes to our mind is erp okay what is erp erp full name uh, enterprise resource planning okay so we need to understand uh, what is erp why we need it and how sap could able to make such a big company out of it okay 
how it was earlier i mean before erp how the companies are doing their job you know and how, how sap uh, with the erp product revolutionized the entire industry you see you name any industry okay in the market it's automobile or finance banking or manufacturing you take any industry today in the world okay 95% of sap uh, financial transactions like uh, purchase orders invoice you name anything 95% it's a huge okay will touch an sap erp system okay then you see how they have uh, taken the entire uh, world's industry or how they revolutionize the software with this particular product okay so it's very important uh, you name uh, anything you take banking every transaction or the most of the transactions touch the erp system okay so sap proudly uh, shows it to the world that 95% of the world transactions goes through my system or at any point they touch the ERP system. That's the uh, criticality of this ERP and that's how they evolved in last 40 years. It's a huge success that we will see. I mean, as a, when we talk about the history of SAP. Okay. So this we will discuss why we need ERP and how SAP has evolved to till today. And is it SAP only ERP? No. Okay. So ERP is their main major product and they started with ERP, but they have evolved to an uh, multiple levels. Now uh, it's a very vast portfolio what we have now. Okay. So yeah, again, uh, SAP solutions, uh, which will be very confusing. If you go to the help dot, as I said, if you see the portfolio, oh God, it will be crazy. You'll see a lot of things and it's very confusing. Okay. So, yep. Yeah. Now we will start with what is ERP. Okay. So before we get into the uh, basis administration, right? So we would like, we need to understand what exactly the ERP do. Yes, you might be working in a basis administration from last three months or one year or whatever is it, but you might not have a glimpse of a uh, functional aspect of SAP or the ERP. Yeah, we are talking about ERP now functional aspect, how it is going to solve the purpose for an end user, okay, how it has changed the business, okay, how it is improving or automating or simplifying the things what were being done by the uh, manually earlier, okay. So for these to understand, I mean, to get a glimpse of what SAP, what ERP is, okay, you, we need to go through one particular example. Yeah, I'll give you one magic bookstore. Let's say we have John. Okay, he's, a, he's the uh, one guy who started a startup. It's a magic bookstore. Okay, what he's doing is he's selling the books. I mean, uh, he's one person, he started a startup. So he uh, deal with the authors. Uh, I mean, when we say procurement here, he talks to the authors or the uh, book, uh, whoever written it or publishes it, and he will procure the books or from the printing or whatever is it. And then he will sell them to the uh, particular area, let's say Bangalore. So in Bangalore, John is uh, has a magic bookstore where he is uh, deal with the many authors and get the books and procure. And then uh, some of them, he will put it in a warehouse. So he has a warehouse or, you know, his room or whatever is it, warehouse, go down. So where he keeps the most selling books and uh, based on the sales, what he has every day. So he will procure them and then he will put it in a warehouse. Okay. And then, okay, so his sales, and then purchases, right? So he's purchasing from the authors or the printing presses, and then uh, he will sell. So he has to manage that finance at certain point. So he is using like we all do, right? So what we use basically Microsoft Excel, okay? So in Excel, he is maintaining his uh, revenue details. I mean uh, sales and then purchases details, and then he is doing a simple calculation of okay, he is easy making profit or easy making losses. So that is doing simple uh, someone formulas using in Excel. Okay. And the controlling, since he's the only guy who is taking care of this uh, magic book and yeah, some people will be there, but uh, only for the ordering and stuff, but he's the own guy, only guy. So he has the entire control over the system or his bookstore. Good. So he's the only guy who's taking care of these entire bookstore. Okay. Now let's see. So yes. So he's making good profit. He's selling well and he wants to expand his business. Okay. Because if he wants to expand his business, what he has to do as a startup. So number one, 
he may have to start more bookstores you know in a different region or a different city from bangalore to hyderabad hyderabad to delhi or whatever so he wants to start his bookstore because he got very popular in this particular location and he is making good profits so for that he has to sell more books and then eventually he will make more uh, money yeah more dollars or more money so that's what so he has got a thought that okay i am very successful here let me start or let me expand my business okay so what he is doing to do now is magic book chain so guys uh, you know it's worth spending this 5 minutes uh, on this example to get a glimpse of erp so that most of the sap products okay revolves around the erp so that's why you need to understand these terms also you know finance controlling procurement warehouse sales that's why i'm stressing on this aspect so once you have this understanding then it is easy going forward whenever these terms or the terminal this comes okay so now he is expanding his business so he has recruited five people uh, four people mary call and then just bob okay so one to uh, five or four people he has recruited i mean so five locations let's say so he has taken uh, he has expanded his business to five cities one to five cities and from one person so where john was controlling the everything he has taken to the 25 25 people so now 25 people working for him and five different cities okay now you see the problem so each one of them mary carl bob jess right so even though john tells uh, you know uh, the standards and all these things everyone works in a different way so mary manages her bookstore i mean her procurement her finance or controlling sales different or call may use excel or he may use he is comfortable with the book or a ledger he will use in a physical book okay or just may use something else so each one of them for procurement or warehouse or sales they are using their different different softwares or different different things even though there are standards but again it's a person who is working right so for example if john wants to understand in this particular week how many sales or how many purchases we made and what is my profit and loss so let's talk about the finance so he has to talk to all these five people i mean five cities and get a glimpse of it and some may give proper data some may not give so this is a big problem for him so even though he has expanded so he is not making money what he expected so so he has expect he has expanded his business and he has uh, selling books but not to the level what he was doing and he is not getting generated the revenue what is expected then he started analyzing what was the problem where exactly i am losing money i mean you expanded and you invested more money five cities and five uh, 25 people you recruited but he lost his control so and if he is running like this then it's not good for his firm okay so when he started analyze so he understood that there is a multiple version of truth this is a very important term which you have to understand so this is what erp has solved for the uh, many industries that's what has led them to evolve to a level where i said 95% of the world financial transactions touch an erp system yeah in a particular day which means this is the biggest problem for an any industry you have so many departments finance procurement warehouse sales so each one of them so this guy mary looks at the system and uh, you know she documented some other way you know columns or whatever is it so then carl documents it something so he orders his procurement in a different way and this lady uh, bob bob may do a warehouse in separately so at any point in time it's very cumbersome and john doesn't have control over his department or the people across the cities okay which means each one of them for example you are selling a book called fountain head okay which is the most famous by ayn rand so mary uh, you know in his, this city it might not be a top selling book she puts it somewhere else and she thinks that it is not useful and she rate it as a list rating one and this guy thinks that okay it's the best one and he puts it so it's a multiple versions of truth for the same product so each one of them are organizing differently each one have their different opinion or different thing so that's the problem so then john understood the problem so now he has done an erp so you see here at the bottom he introduced the erp system what erp will do so erp system he implemented erp and he has given access to mary curl bob just everyone is using the same so the biggest problem uh, was the multiple uh, version of the truth for the same products now you have one product listed in the system and the same so you have a catalog of products and you know 
which of them is selling across the regions it's a tabular form and simply organized and everybody has to use the same thing and john for reporting he doesn't have to talk to anybody so he can log into the erp system at any point in time he can see okay which of my city is doing properly which of my city is not doing properly where i am having a warehouse problem what all things i have to procure so all this data is available in the erp system in a structured way and everyone see the same data without any uh, individuals intervention or individual structure of organizing uh, products or the data or whatever so he has single version of the truth okay for a particular product or for a particular thing or everybody looks into it as a one system suppose if you look into an erp system anybody whoever has the access to the erp will see the same data suppose you guys working 3 to 4 months right you go and open one sc section and table you get all the same purchase order same invoices everything is same so now you see such a complicated model where he has lost control of the people products everything and he has bought everything under control so what do you understand from here erp has solved the problem of multiple versions of truth and it has given a very good control about his organization now you see he has expanded to the four cities now he knows where uh, exactly which is which of my location is not doing good then he can control that location and what he has to do to improve okay so now the scaling up or the scale out becomes much easy if you want to expand so now from five cities to 10 cities you can expand without any uh, cumbersome activity or engaging lot of people because your erp you just have to give them the access to the erp system okay see this is what has solved the problem for many industries erp has solved it so anybody who started their company as a startup if they want to expand or grow erp helps them okay that's how the companies were able to do a lot of automation and then expand drastically so you take examples of uh, tata tcs itself you have tata steel right so you have tata steel you have uh, consultancy services you have uh, many tata hotel management right so now how ratan tata organize all these things right ratan tata how does he gets it so it's a conglomerate right in india so how does he understand if his businesses are making right or not so he implements an erp system for each and everything you see in tcs you have human resource management you have finance you have procurement everything right so those all things are tracked in this one and you take tata steel tata steel again there steel purchasing right then the coal so the manufacturing thing everything has to be integrated so they all connects to an erp system and as a ceo you will get a glimpse of okay which of my business is doing fine and which is not doing properly and then he can take some improvement actions okay so now you understood the erp how it solve the problem for the industries and this is what erp is doing in the market now okay so now you understand what is erp right enterprise resource planning so this will simplify good so whatever i already talked so i have put it in the uh, slide okay what i have given example as a tata steel or the tcs so it uh, as i said he has the multiple businesses rather than uh, hotel management and all it collects manage and share data you know it's a single version of the truth so that you can make better decisions or the better choices and then as i said if your one of your business is not doing properly and then you can control those processes okay where exactly you get a glimpse with the analytics or you know as soon as you have the data you can do in the market so many business analytics tools you know you have sap analytics cloud is there uh, microsoft business intelligence is you know that's a trend now data science or the so many uh, things are available to do the analysis okay so but do the analysis with those tools and then get control the process where exactly you are making problem where exactly you have the problem identify it and easy to control that particular so track and measure again uh, every of your all of your businesses you can track uh, in in a real time data okay so earlier there was no real time so at least uh, i mean uh, i don't know if you heard it e even now you hear right month end reports in bw okay month end reports and where uh, you don't take you don't implement any changes in the system and you ensure that those reports are generated but now we have this trend of a real time so that we will talk when we talk about the hana but yes so you can track and measure earlier they used to generate weekly reports or some critical reports daily reports and monthly reports okay and automate process so as i said uh, so once you have this picture of the integration of these departments uh, procurement financial finance and then sales right these are all integrated in erp so which means 
for example, uh, let's take an example of the magic chain. You have sold 100 books today. Okay. One particular book, uh, let's take uh, Chetan Bhagat's book. Okay. It sold a huge number of copies and it's a very good success. So earlier you have to call and place an order, right? I mean, uh, hey, you know, today 100 books are sold. I need a 100 book stock. But here, when they are integrated, the moment as soon as you release the purchase order, as soon as you sell those books, immediately you get, uh, you place an order for the 100 books. Okay. You know that what is your warehouse capacity? Okay. I can hold 100 top selling book as 100 books. Then immediately you will place an order. So the procurement to the sales, it's been automated. So such process, I mean, you take in a, a steel industry as well. Okay. The moment you generate the iron and then you sell the steel and you have to place an order for the raw materials, right? So those number of uh, uh, raw materials immediately it will place an order. So then it will generate a purchase order and it sells to the vendors, whoever provides those raw materials. That's what. So you can automate these processes. Okay. And then improve quality and efficiency. So now you have a single version of truth and everybody or the every uh, business is following the same uh, ERP system. So you can, I mean, if everybody is using the same, then there is a chance that very less mistakes because you test it properly and everything is proven and then it improves the quality and it's a repetitive and automated task. The efficiency will increase better. Okay. So then at the end, run business better. So that's the slogan uh, for SAP, right? So, I mean, they, if you look at the SAP, there's a tagline, run business better, or then there is a run simple. Okay. So run simple means because ERP is taking care of all these cumbersome activities where you used to have different, different departments. They were taking uh, ERP takes care of such a nice and controlled way. So that's why they say run business better and run simple. You know, that that's the current tagline. They say it's a simple run. Okay. So that's about the ERP. Okay. Now the question comes. Okay. Why only SAP succeeded? Don't we have another ERP solutions? I mean, what were the competitors? So we have many uh, ERP solutions. But uh, we, uh, I will uh, put you only the main uh, few, uh, few. SAP is there, Oracle, and then Microsoft. So SAP uh, is the leader in ERP. And uh, nowhere the, these Oracle and Microsoft come closer to SAP. Okay. So in the sense, uh, as I said, 95 to 98% of the market is captured by the SAP. That we will talk about when we come to the customer's data. That you can find it in help.sap.com. It's open source information, which they will provide. And same is the, with Oracle. So they were not able to succeed. Uh, I mean, uh, so as SAP, Microsoft, they were different regions, but uh, you know, it's not, uh, it's a business once we have time at the end of this 40 day, 40 hours of sessions. So we can discuss those things. Why SAP only successful and why Oracle and Microsoft? It's a very interesting topic, uh, how these uh, compete each other and how they come up. But know that in ERP, the leader is SAP only. Yes, and uh, along with those top three players, uh, you have uh, Seabill, you have JD Edwards, and so on, so things. Just know it, just for information. I mean, you should not think that ERP means SAP only, no other players. No, there are other players, but SAP is the leader. So, okay. As a part of this course, we'll talk only about SAP. So, we'll not uh, cover about any any of these other solutions. Okay. So, any questions before I proceed further with the history of SAP? Before that, I was just giving an introduction of uh, the confusions and uh, you know when you want to learn SAP. Uh, you, you might feel confused and where to start and what to start. Is it a database or software and how difficult it is to learn those things we were discussing. But uh, have you gone through the case, uh, ERP case, what would have explained? So now uh, you got a glimpse of, um, you might not have got a glimpse of what is SAP, but at least you understood uh, what is ERP, how it can simplify the uh, business, right? how it can help you to scale out your business with the use case or the example what we have discussed. So now, uh, as I said, then interesting question, how SAP was able to capture the 95% uh, of the market? Okay, now we need to see the history of SAP, how they started and uh, because this is also important because when you are working on the particular solution, right? It's always good that how they evolved and uh, just what spending some five minutes of time. And here also, I will try to explain about the uh, technical things so that you get, uh, yeah, this is what, I don't give you the entire uh, business, um, how they evolved and how they competed with everybody and how they earn more money. Fine, <laughs> we, we can discuss, but the most important thing is how they evolved as a product, right? As a ERP solution, uh, how 
they uh, you know transform themselves uh, once they started that's important to understand because you may have to work with multiple versions of these systems okay suppose some customers uh, okay why we have to understand this history i'll tell you because now you might be working netweaver 740 or the latest system those of you who are working i'll tell you you might be working on the latest versions right there are some core industries who do not want to migrate okay sap could have introduced in 1972 one version of the system and they want to be with the, that or uh, that version of the system only they don't want to upgrade they don't want to migrate it's not like us who will change our phones in two years or no they don't want why so, so big, big, that's why you may have to support those systems also that's why you need to understand what were the sap's earlier versions and what is the current version what is the middle version also so i'll give you an example of an industries or customers some for example let's take banking okay do you think banking is ready to migrate if you go and tell them that hey upgrade your system no they'll say that okay no boss please i don't migrate okay banking the most important whenever you are migrate or up, uh, update your system the most important part is the data so for banking data is the heart right if you go and if you make some simple table entry for example with your name john john has 1 lakh account in his entry and if you make uh, one zero extra that's it one crore it becomes so data is the most important for the banking so banking person will tell that i am happy with my solution whatever sap has provided i am okay as long as it runs for another 100 years also i am fine fine on top of it i can improve my application logic or servers or performance etc i can work on it but data i do not want to touch it so there are customers like that okay who do not want to touch the data because they scared and it's the heart for them and if they lose the data that's it i mean their entire reputation their company and they will go bankrupt it's you know banking system if you lose the data that's it you're gone so that's why you have to support those older versions as well okay that's why i'm giving you the history of these products so it's not for just uh, information purpose so you need to understand what they had sap so in 1972 5x ibmers okay ibm guys so they have started uh, you know they have producted a, a one soft, simple software product okay for different customer in ibm so what ibm said is hey you close this project it is no longer needed okay because they had some other software or ma mainframes ibm was doing the mainframes I, we don't want this product you start uh, you take i mean this is no longer is needed close the project so these five guys thought that no we have developed such a good product or a good program or a good thing so we don't want to give it up we want to start it so what they did they talked to ibm hey ibm you know you want to close this product let's talk a deal fine you give this product to us and then we will make a patent and we will start working on it then ibm said anyway close product ibm has nothing to lose so what ibm did you see in the world uh, most of the products of the startups who came up and today they have grown are you know somewhere related to ibm because ibm was the only guy who was then 100 years in the market that time even now they are there okay but let's keep that way so they took the product and they started their own company in germany in waldorf okay so it's which is the headquarters for sap now they started in a small bunk uh, this uh, this product they took the patent and they have uh, legally they have taken out from the ibm and they started so in 1973 they started with r1 okay so r means anybody knows it's r what r stands for because you hear this r1 r2 r3 and then there's no r4 don't worry <laughs> so r1 r2 r3 r1 is r stands for real time okay as i said in the magic book chain example right john has expanded his business to the four cities but he is getting a real time data what are my sales what is my procurement what is my warehouse data everything he can log into the erp system and he is looking at it so that's why it's called real time so r1 one means one tire so tire t i e r okay and then two tire r2 real time two tire r3 real time three tires so what we have in the market now is the r3 okay so this i will explain what is the tire 1 tire 2 tire 3 architecture so uh, you know, simply you can see here so r1 means presentation application and the database resides on the same host or the same server okay that's the r1 and then in 1979 okay these guys thought that okay if your database uh, if your application is having the problem because it's a bottleneck so your GUI or everything, your application, uh, I mean the uh, portal or whatever is it, the end user thing, graphical interface, and then the application and then database running on the same host. So it is becoming a problem because too many resources being used on the same host. So what they thought is 
let's break here okay separate the database and application so here you see 1979 so they have come up with uh, presentation layer separate i mean the guis you are using now and the fiery interface or whatever interfaces you are using interacting with sap they have separated that section and application and database they put together okay so i mean application computing and then the database are on the same host and remaining part they have isolated 1979 so that's where they came up with r2 architecture and they have also came up with uh, abap at that particular time abap is a programming language uh, used to uh, develop this sap products okay so 1979 was the time they started with abap 1992 they thought that okay still the, uh, the industries are growing so my application and database on the same host are also causing a problem let me separate it so now you have three tier architecture which is currently may majority of them are using 1992 onwards so presentation layer is different application layer is different and then database isolated so all these three this is a three tier architecture okay so 1992 and then 2004 they came up with sap uh, business one uh, which is for the it's a it's a uh, erp only but it's for the small scale industries this again i will explain uh, sap's portfolio uh, later so the sap erp or the netweaver also they have introduced in 2000 2004 is the game changer for sap the when they introduced this sap netweaver okay and they also introduced abap plus java okay so until then they don't have this java so they have introduced java also which means they are expanded their uh, you know capability or the open source thing and many things can integrate or many uh, they have opened up basically to the market so two things abap plus java so that anybody can come and develop on their netweaver netweaver is their platform okay so they have created a platform uh, like uh, you have google cloud platform or you know where you can do uh, servers and then coding and anything you can do over there so that is what the platform is so they came up with a platform netweaver and they have introduced abap and java are the main uh, players over there so main coding coding things if you want to develop your application and uh, a year after 2005 so sap has introduced erp uh, ehps okay so they don't want to develop you know erp1 erp2 erp3 so they they saturated with the name and they were happy with sap erp so how do they release their versions so enhancement packages so the modifications or the functionalities they have released as enhancement packages so you might have heard sap erp ehp1 ehp2 ehp3 ehp5 so what was the what is the latest ehp it's ehp8 okay so when this slide was there it's ehp7 but ehp8 what we have now that's it sap has stopped uh, generating or uh, creating enhancement packages also after ehp8 that is the latest one erp so okay so the next version is sap s for hana after erp okay that we will talk today uh, at the end of the session we will talk about sap s for hana okay which they have introduced in 2015 so yeah 2015 sap uh, so yes 2009 uh, 2005 they have released this uh, erp and then ehp 7s and the latest ehp is the ehp 8 and in 2011 on the most trending or the buzzword in sap right sap hana so in 2009 they have introduced hana so hana is uh, again uh, is it a platform uh, if you have to if i have to put it in a clean words platform it's but database is its main component okay so what is a platform and what is a database so database is only a database thing you know to store the data and to retrieve the data column store row store it blah 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 to so store the data but platform platform has a different i mean the different functionality yes database can be a service in it but platform means you can develop applications you can code on top of it you can integrate with it you can uh, third party applications or so thing so platform has much more capable features than a simple product so that's why sap hana if i have to put it's a platform but mainly sap uses it as a database okay in 2011 they have introduced it's an in memory uh, when we have this hana session in detail i will walk you through the architecture and uh, uh, how hana evolved and how it is different from other database but just know that 2011 they came up with sap hana so in 2015 uh, no 2009 itself there is a business suit this is the most uh, successful product of sap thing so don't worry sap business suit means uh, 
something different word so what they did is uh, you know they clubbed uh, some five to six products uh, together and they called it as an sap business suit okay for example so far what we understood sap erp uh, EH, sap erp was developed uh, by sap and they have the latest one is ehp8 enhancement package 8 so what they thought is okay my erp is doing fine so what about the customer relationship management what about supplier relations what about the product life cycle management what about the supply chain management right so those are all uh, they have separate sorry those are all they have separated systems uh, crm srm plm and erp they combine all those five components or the five products in one thing they called it as sap business suit on which platform they developed this business suit netweaver okay when i say netweaver you always relate it to as a platform netweaver platform so i will talk about this also today in architecture netweaver so on top of the netweaver they have introduced business suit which combines five or six systems okay and in 2015 they came up with sap s for hana we will talk in detail when this s for hana comes okay what is s for hana and how it is different from the ER erp yes it says erp is next version but how it is different what they have done uh, corrections or what they did it that we will discuss it so now you got the glimpse of uh, what is sap right so how sap started in 1972 and then how they have evolved in this 40 years that's it so if if i if i tell you simply these are the there are a thousand there are uh, many products 40 50 product portfolio but this is the most important thing which you have to understand as a basis guy okay so they started with r1 they have an r2 they have a r3 architecture they have introduced so these are the three uh tier three architectures and then they have an erp okay and then up to ehp8 uh they have released it and they stopped it after that so they came up with sap business suit what sap business suit it is nothing but combination of the erp crm scm and other various products and later they came up with s for hana so this is the timeline or the product line which you have to understand so everything in sap you know revolves around these things okay everything 98 99 percent of the things in sap will revolve around it and as a basis consultant knowing this is more than sufficient for you to do your job in a best way i would say in a better and uh, very nice way this is the thing which you have to understand you don't need to understand what is that uh, you know fire mobile thing or the cloud platform and those things no so even though the namings and different things are different but at the end of the day everything comes to you and touches the system because no matter what you develop uh, right at the end of the day, that has to come and touch the ERP or the business suit or the S4 HANA system. You got it? So that's why it is important only uh, to under, uh, for you to understand this product portfolio, how SAP has evolved. Okay. So now the so before I proceed with the uh, what is SAP? So now we uh, what what all we discussed? So we discussed ERP. Okay. Uh, I mean with the magic book chain example. And then we have also gone through the history of SAP. I mean, what are the main product portfolio? How, how they evolved till today? So now, now I come to the questions. What is SAP today? Okay. So yes, you understood the history 1972, how the architecture has evolved. Now we'll see. So they have this 40, more than 40 years of experience. Okay. So they have around uh, more than 20, 30,000 of employees across the globe. And you see the customers. 293k customers which is 2,93,000 which is a huge customer base that's why i say when i say 95 percent of the world financial transactions today you know one or the other way they touch the sap system okay that's the presence they have in the erp domain so they have 130 countries uh, you know um, they have their employees in 130 countries almost all countries they have their uh, company and then their employees working there and they have these 190 countries Okay, in the customers basically. So, which means across the globe, they have everywhere uh, the customers, SAP customers. Okay. So, yeah, I was explaining, right? Um, when we say today, let's say, let's take today as an example. As I said, uh, there are uh, three kind of organizations, if we have to put it in a simple way. Small size organizations, I mean, who just started their startup, mid-sized organizations and large organizations, for example, like your TCS. Okay, so now SAP uh, has to cater their solutions to all sections, right? I mean, they also started as a small five people to, to this level. They have to cater. 
So, I mean, if you take today, the moment people say SAP implementation means, oh God, this is so costly. So, I mean, that's the impression. Um, it's a very big product, uh, too many resources, too much cost of costing and too much of efforts to be needed, right? It's like complete project. So imagine how many TCS employees are in basis projects. Okay, how many of you work in SAP projects within SAP, right? So many, thousands of employees are working on SAP. Okay, in TCS itself. Then take IBM, Accenture, and any other company who are support, supporting, right? So people have an impression that SAP is a very big product and it takes a lot of skill, uh, efforts and thing, uh, efforts and money. Okay, that is the large, I mean, uh, large industries. So what about the small scale industries? Because today small can be become a bigger industry later point in time. So that's why SAP has segregated its products in three simple things. So small means a startup who just want to implement SAP business one. It's a simple solution. Just implement on a small server and then it will solve your problem. So as soon as you grow your business for this small guy and he will become a mid-sized, then SAP will tell that. So this is an important market strategy as well. Business all in one. SAP will tell that, hey, okay, SAP business one is successful. Okay, now you have grown and you are upscaling. Okay, now take this mid-sized SAP business all in one. So this guy is already using an SAP product and it, and SAP will help him to move to the mid size. So then he also win-win. So the client will win and then the, as an SAP, they're also winning a customer, right? They have grown from small to big. That is what they did in this first 40 years. So SAP has grown along with the customers. Okay, that is their secret or the success mantra for them in this last 40 years. So they took them as a small company. They helped them to grow and give them their software and that guy, it is easy for him to expand. Okay. And then he will become a mid-sized organization. So then the mid-sized organization will become a large organization after a couple of years. Then SAP will tell that, oh, good, very good. Let's go with business suit. Let's put the, uh, implement it. So now again, he's already using an SAP product. SAP will handhold him. Okay. And SAP will suggest them that, okay, product wise, I can help you. But implementations, uh, you know, SAP support, uh, they don't have a bandwidth to support because it's mainly a product based company. So SAP has opened its doors to multiple partners, right? So you have TCS, you have, I mean, SAP did not hold it to himself, themselves that, you know, I only support it or I only do it. So they have expanded the doors. They opened the doors to, you know, TCS, IBM, Accenture, you name any company, they Infosys, Wipro, all of them support SAP projects, right? So SAP has opened their ecosystem for the partners. I mean, they made them as partners, TCS and all. So what, I, what is happening now? So now SAP has played a very good uh, uh, customer. You move them from the mid-size to uh, large size. And then for this large size support, you open the doors to the other vendors. They are supporting it. So now it's like everybody winning. Everybody is making happy. Everybody is happy. Customer is happy. He has grown to a bigger thing. SAP is happy. They have implemented their solution. Partners also happy. I mean, TCS, Wipro, IBM, everybody is happy because they got the support projects. You got it? So now you see, does any of them uh, will uh, lose? Uh, I mean, you see, if any one of them want to develop or a product or something, it's a loss for them only, right? They can't create an ecosystem like SAP did. Now, everybody wants SAP to be sustained. Right. So as a partner, suppose if you are supporting SAP projects, you think that, oh, SAP has to be survived. I mean, SAP has to be in a good condition. Then you provide support because you are making money out of it. And the customer he has grown to a bigger level. So that is how SAP has grown from five people to today, some 30,000 or 40,000 employees and 300K customers. Yeah, That is how they are surviving. It's not just SAP. Everyone in its ecosystem wants SAP to live or breathe. OK, so customer. So partners, everybody wants SAP to live. That is the secret for them. So they have opened their doors to everybody. Everybody is making money. Everybody is winning. It's a kind of win-win-win strategy. Okay. If you have to, if I have to put it in a marketing. Okay. Fine. Let's not too much get into the marketing thing. Now you understand. So small, mid-sized, and large. So whatever you as a basis consultant, you always work on this SAP business suit, the right side one, large. Okay. So all your TCS projects or any project. They, you will be put into this uh, business suit only, not in this business all in one or business one because they are small scaled and the customer can himself manage it. Okay. So now here you understand the SAPs, uh, how they're catering their solutions. So now you will always be in the right hand side business suit as a basis consultant. So remaining very, very less, you'll get support. I mean, okay. Now, 
after we understood this strategy and all these things, SAP, do you think it's only an ERP? SAP is not only an ERP. Okay. So since I've stressed it more on the ERP, yes, they started their career or the company with ERP, but it is not only an ERP solution. Okay. So SAP has analytics. So SAP analytics cloud. See, you have an ERP solution and you have so much of data. Where do you store the data? You need to have a BW, SAP BW system. And then you have to run some analytics on it. And again, why do you want to go to Microsoft or somebody to provide you the analytics tools? Okay, he has their analytics tools are there. In-memory computing, as I said, real-time data, HANA, in-memory computing. And then now they have this cloud computing as well, you know, SAP cloud platform. So, but these are all things you might not get too deep into it, but definitely we touch this ERP in-memory computing a little bit. I mean, we have a session for four hours where we talk about uh, how HANA works and stuff and enterprise mobility. So mobile, these days, everybody wants to do this stuff over mobile. Okay. So SAP is not only an ERP. So now it has around 40 plus uh, products in the market uh, portfolio. All of them are integrated towards SAP, ERP, but ERP is their core product. Okay. So as I said, yes, ERP is their core and they all these another 40 systems will uh, complement ERP. I mean, to run businesses better. Okay. Because with the increased demand, these, you know, mobiles, everyone wants to. So those are products also SAP has developed and they all will integrate with ERP and then that helps to run them better. Okay. So what all we discussed today? I mean, so far. So we discussed about... Uh, you know, overview of, uh, I mean, ERP clearly we understood with an example. And then we understood the history of architectures R1, R2, ERP, and then SAP business suit as per Anna. Okay. And then we understood what is SAP and what are the solutions or the, what are the uh, industries SAP cater their services. Okay. So these are the four important things we have understood so far. Next, we will go with the, uh, I mean, I said, right, it's not only ERP, they have got a uh, 40 plus other solutions. Uh, I'm not going to go through the all those solutions because it's relevant for you as a basis, guys. So I will try to put a platform. Uh, what are the important solutions and which you will be working or which are you already working? So you see here so many SAP Business One for small scale, S for HANA, SAP ERP, SAP Fear. I'm just reading out some names. Okay. SAP SCM, SAP SRM, SAP BW, SAP Enterprise Portal, SAP Business Suite, you, you have so much, you go crazy if you go through all of them. That's why I was telling. Uh, it's very confusing for you if you start reading by yourself uh, in an help.sap.com or somewhere. Uh, so that's where uh, we have to structure and we will focus uh, as a basis consultant what is important for you. Yes. So these are the few important areas which you have to look into it. So SAP ERP, as I said, it's the core. So SAP S for HANA. So it is nothing but an ERP system. I will explain you today at the end of the day, what is SAP S for HANA. But you treat these two as synonymous. I mean, if I, if I ask you as a basis guy, for you, all of these solutions are same. It doesn't matter what product SAP produces. That is the simplicity of basis. I mean, the best part of basis. So it doesn't matter what product it is, your role, your responsibility, your activities, everything is same irrespective of the product only the functional guys and then the ABAP uh, people will get confused about these products and different different coding uh, thing they may need it but as a basis guy for you it doesn't matter okay so SAP irrespective of the system SAP ERP your uh, administration is same SAP as for HANA administration is 90 percent so there will be some 10 percent you know when it comes to the theory some different transactions and all but as a basis guy for you if I have to put in one liner for you, everything is same. As I said, in ERP is like single version of truth, right? For basis guys, it's like simple. So first you remove that uh, entire thing. If you want to grow your career in basis, remove that thing is, oh, these many products and these things first get out of it. For you, everything is same. Okay. You have got an engine or a mechanical engineer. You got an automobile. Uh, it's a tractor engine or lorry engine or anything. The components are same, right? Lever you have, but it's a bigger size and then the uh, engine size is bigger that's it so everything uh, the screws and all a uh, little bit different but the whole mechanical uh, you know the concept is same okay the fuel combustion and then engine it generates torque and power and then the vehicle moves but for lari they have their specifications like uh, you know iot devices and blah 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 cars and all but as a basis guy just imagine this way 
for you, all of them are same, but it's just with some extra additional configurations or the integration scenarios. Okay. So, but we will talk, we'll not talk about all of them here. So if you understand one or two products of this as a basis thing, it's very simple. So we will talk mainly SAP ERP and then BW a little to some extent, but not in detail. But as, as I said, basis guy, everything is same. Okay, SAP ERP. Okay, as I said in 2011, uh, SAP 9, SAP has introduced SAP business suit. Okay, that's what they call this word. So remember this word, SAP business suit. Okay, they don't, they're no longer called an SAP ERP. So SAP ERP is a part of this business suit. Okay, and then, so now slowly I am taking you to the, uh, what is currently you have a technically SAP and then to the platform on which they have developed it. So SAP business suit, SAP business warehouse, BW, one of the product. So they all developed on the SAP NetWeaver platform. Okay, it's very important. What I said about the NetWeaver plat platform, I will talk later. But on top of this platform, they have developed a business suit. Okay, so now let's talk about SAP business suit. So what, what I said in SAP business suit, we have ERP, SRM, CRM, customer relationship management, PLM and SCM. Okay. So these are the five crucial components for the business uh, systems. I mean, all these are integrated. Okay. Your customer relationship management data is integrated to the ERP. Sorry. And then your SRM data is related to the ERP, SCM, supply chain management data is related. So whatever they're all will help or complement ERP basically at the end of the day. Okay. So what SAP did is, oh, I have so many things. Let's combine them and I release an SAP business suit so that it is easy for the customer to implement. Right. So hey, all your modules or all your functional core uh, supplier, customer, everything, I will integrate and I will give it as a package. You, If I have to put it SAP business suit. Okay. In that ERP and these are all part. Okay. So yes, SAP ERP is a solution system. Business suit is a combination or a bundled package. Okay. That's the differentiation. Now we will talk about SAP ERP mainly. So as I given in the uh, magic book example, right? So you see the main uh, uh, business components or the processes. What are they? Financial accounting. Okay. Controlling I have explained. That's why I told you. That example is very simple example where you understand these terms. Okay, warehouse management, books and all, sales and distribution. So real estate, for example, real estate is also important, right? You need to have a land to start your company. Okay, there also how much you are spending, how much land you need it, how much you have to expand, and cash management, how much cash I have, how many assets I have. So what is my treasury? What is so these are all the uh, function modules I would say. Okay, so function modules they were all part of the ERP. So some of the space, so these are all, uh, you know, financial and all, they're all common for all the industries. For example, uh, many majority of the industries, not, I can't put it majority of the industries, but there are certain things like oil, oil industry or the banking, they have their own specific requirements. Okay. For them, the most important part is the, uh, for banking sector cost and the data, I mean, financial data and oil and gas, you know, from upstream to the downstream, from the wells to the, how the oil is going. They, they need a separate module or separate structure of the ERP. Okay, for that SAP has started with the industry solutions for them specifically. So now we are going to close up this getting started with SAP. What we understood so far, what enterprise resource planning is, right? So with the magic book example, what it will do, it will do the improve quality and efficiency by doing these things, control processes, track and measure and automating processes. And the most important thing is single version of the truth, different cities or the across the globe, everybody, whoever logs into the ERP system, they have the same product description, same thing, same thing. So it's a single version of the truth. Okay. As a CEO, you will get the uh, live data. What is happening in my thing so that you can control your thing. So what are the main competitors for SAP? Oracle, Microsoft, but uh, mainly SAP in terms in when it comes to the ERP. Okay, then what we discussed, history of SAP, right? How they have evolved from 1972. So what were the architectures they have? R1, R2, R3, right? This is the most recent one and which you will work in day in and day out. I mean, in your SAP projects. And then they came up with the SAP NetWeaver platform. This is very important guys. NetWeaver platform um, means Majority of the systems still today are on the NetWeaver platform. 
that i will in detail i will explain you the net viewer architecture when go but understand this is the most important thing and as i said small to the bigger ones sap will offer sap business one or business all in one you don't need to remember these two it's uh, i mean you don't work in a day, day in and day out but just know that so the most uh, commonly used in the industries is today sap business suite okay and after that sap came up with hana in 2011 and then sap s for hana in 2015 so this sap s for hana is nothing but next version of the sap erp simple if i have to put it so sap erp they have stopped with ehp 8 i told you right the most recent uh, enhancement package is the ehp 8 okay so yeah an sap it's not only an erp uh, it has more than 40 years of experience and uh, you know these employees they have analytic solutions in memory computing cloud computing enterprise mobility you have a lot of things but you focus mainly on the erp solutions and then we talked about sap business suit what what it contains sap business suit erp srm crm plm scm and other uh, these five components and so it's just that so the complemented solutions of erp are bundled together and then given as an sap business suit and the another one so erp or uh, you know you get uh, transactional data right too much of transactions selling and uh, purchase orders and all so that data will be moved to the warehouse business warehouse okay where you can do analytics or work on those data right i mean to prepare repair reports or revenue losses and profits and that's why business warehouse comes into picture okay so all of these things are developed on netweaver platform okay so any questions guys before i go to the technical overview and architecture any questions or can you please acknowledge that no questions i will proceed further so yeah now you got a fair idea about uh, the architecture uh, the all these things now we will slowly get into the so it's worth spending this one and a half hour so that uh, you have a clear understanding of sap right now we will slowly deep dive into the technical things and then from today uh, from now onwards whatever i am going to talk or it's more relevant for your work and uh, it's like more or less core thing okay let's start now so as i said the most recent architecture is the r3 architecture okay so database at the bottom of this uh, architecture and in the middle you have application and then the presentation simple database is something which you stores the data and then um, it makes the records of the data what you enter into the system the purchase orders sales or procurement or whatever is it it says stores the data so nothing much to do so it is hosted on a different host and then application so application is uh, so database application is the middle section so where your sap systems so let's say example sap erp see in the middle so you have an erp system okay and sap erp system connects to a particular database okay instead of hosting on the same host they've separated i mean uh, they segregated logically these sections basically okay and then so system administrators which are you or um, you know whoever working in the basis will have access to the application and database okay so who are the administrator so this is important so what all things you have access you people you you will be working on application and database as well until unless you have a separate team who is taking care of the db but um, basis means um, we'll talk about basis roles and re re uh, responsibilities after some time it's very very important that uh, you understand database as well basis doesn't stop at this application layer administration i mean erp administration but you have to have the database even though you have a database team always try to upskill yourself in the database part okay because you can't separate a base, basis consultant without database knowledge is uh, uh, not good thing okay so i mean it's in a half baked one so always your focus should be application and database you have to be thorough okay whenever you are and then the presentation Again, system administrators have like SAP GUI, right? Or the mobile or the Fiery or the ones which you access to the system. So that is the front end, you would say, presentation layer. So here you have web app developers, end users, business users who will maintain that data. Everybody has access to the presentation layer, but application and database you and presentation also you have the access. That's why basis guys will deal with all these three layers. And as you grow your career, please focus on the all three areas don't restrict yourself to that okay i'm a basis guy and i will restrict to the application and i will do only a presentation no 
you have to have the end to end scenario i mean end to end understanding of how your sap system works that's the complexity of basis so it's a very complicated module uh, sap basis is the very complicated or the very uh, technically demanding uh, module within sap okay because it has no limits that's why you have to see in a simple thing i am giving three layers but it's very complicated thing so okay why they have introduced this three three tier architecture in middle so this one application layer so for flexibility security and performance okay why we need flexibility for example your your organization the end users has increased business has increased or the industry has set up a new factory right so the data has increased so if you have a one server so that will you either you have to increase the server size i mean it's not easy to increase the server ram and cpu instead of that you just put in another application server or another server another server so scale out that is called scale up and scale out scale up is increasing the existing server resources scale out means one by one you keep adding so that flexibility you have it and then security um so i mean if you put all of them these end users by mistake somebody assigns something and they can come here and they can stop the application right so application you restrict the access or the os access to only to the particular people i mean only to you or the administrators only authorized people can log into the server so that they don't tamper with the data as i said if you go to the table and if you make an entry change if you add one more zero in the end then it will become a huge amount right or you delete you can delete purchase order also so only the authorized people can log into the particular server or the application and then the performance as i said scale out the more number of application servers you add the more better will be the performance the load balancing will happen okay that's the uh, reason behind introducing this uh, three tier architecture and it's the most successful and most useful uh, architecture so far in the sap okay so now you have got the overview of the three tier architecture so this is uh, suppose uh, uh, some company company or the tcs uses implemented an sap solution okay mm -hmm. Or, or we'll name some company. Uh, let's put BP or uh, HP. On oh, no, HP means oil Reliance. Okay, Reliance has implemented this SAP, and TCS is supporting, which is you guys. Okay, you guys are supporting this SAP R three structure. Yeah. Now there is a problem. As an admin, you cannot able to open the. Uh, I mean, you cannot able to solve the issue, and you have raised a ticket to the product support. Okay, what do you mean by SAP product support? SAP. You have yeah. raised a ticket to the SAP. That hey. You know, as an admin, I think this is a bug in the product and there is a problem in the code or the, the functionality of the given thing. Okay. Now you raised a ticket to the SAP product support. Okay. SAP will tell you, okay, I can't understand from your, uh, this thing. I mean, from your uh, description or whatever is this, I would like to log into the system and understand it. You got it. I, they would like to, SAP will ask you to log into the, to the system. That is okay. when they place a request for opening the client or, you know, log into the system, R3 connection open. Okay. okay. Now you have to assess for SAP product support guy to check. Does he need only the uh, presentation layer? I mean, does it solve the purpose that depends on the issue? For example, it's a code bug. He just needs an web access, right? I mean, just log into the SAP GUI and you give him the, the required authorization. And if he still say that I'm not authorized, just run some transaction, SU50, but there's a transaction or he will let you know the, what authorizations are needed. Okay, we'll talk about how authorizations are assigned to that particular user. So he logs into this and he will check it. Oh, that is the when when I say connection opening means that is the meaning. So the product support you are opening a connection to the product support guy to log into this particular system. Did it answer my question? So opening connection not only on SAP level always SAP GUI level. Suppose if it is a problem in the server level, they will ask you to open the connection to server as well. Okay, but in very very rare scenarios. Okay, mm -hmm. but sometimes it is it could be a problem with the database. They also ask you to open to the database. That's why you, you as an admin you have to assess uh, you know with the experience and with the sense. Oh, this could be a reason. This could be an application issue. Let me open to the SAP application. And if he, if that guy will be expert. Okay, the product support SAP. The moment they look into it, oh hey guys, this is not an application issue. Put it to the server manager server. Then they will ask you to open server. So then you have to open the connection to server. Then database. Now we will go with the SAP system landscape. Okay. Again, most important thing for the basis guys. So as important as the three tier architecture, what I've explained. So you have, um, I think you might have heard it. I mean, you might have working in development, quality and production. Okay. Mm, this is the three system landscape we call. Okay. 
some customers will implement implement four system landscape some customers will implement five system landscape i will explain you what are these things so these are the majorly used thing uh, 70% of the customers use this three system landscape only remaining 20% will go for four system landscape remaining will go with the five system landscape but five system landscape is the very expensive one okay first let's understand this thing so you have three system so development any sap customer for example uh, as i have given uh, this magic book chain if he is wanted to implement the uh, sap erp so whenever i talk about this thing you always connect to the erp because the concepts as a basis the work is similar for everybody i mean any other component or any other product okay that's why i always give an example of erp only so he is implemented an erp system okay so but if he has to fix something or if he has to develop something right suppose if he has only one system he will go and make the changes and that time it has an impact for the end users and his business is in a halt situation right that he don't want to do so his business has to always up and running fans for example banking always your banking is up and running your industry has to run everything has to run always so you don't want to trouble your production system that's why sap has introduced three development quality or the test system production and for example i am doing the training or you have got the access to the test system right so even though you have access to your customer client customer systems right why we are not asking you to, to go and uh, do these exercises over there because they are the production systems if something you do that will cause a business impact right the, so the end user will suffer or there is a revenue loss if your sap system is not running so that is why we don't want you to do your testing and you don't want to do your trainings in in the production or the live systems we call you know live that is also an again one live is a term once it goes live okay production system. that's why sap has developed a three system propose always proposes to the customer minimum this landscape so development system so if you want to do a customizing if you want to do some um, tweaking of a table tweaking of certain thing so that customizing you develop in the development system don't touch the production so once you do the development you move it to the test system okay so in test system you test the functionality so this test system is almost a replica of the production system you know most of the cases so test system do have the functional data of the production okay because that's why i am not sure if you guys heard of it a system refresh some people will do every 3 months once refresh some people will do every 6 months some people will do yearly ones what is the system refresh you get the production data and you put it in the test system reason because whatever you are testing it has to be a production like system right suppose if you are testing it in a different system what is the use that functionality that may not work in the production that's why your production and quality of the test system always have to be majorly in sync in terms of the data at least functional data so your development will go to the test okay let me go to the next slide so your development will go to the test system so you see this truck through transports that we will talk tomorrow how this transport will be moved and then once you test it this functional data so you do a testing so let's say okay sap erp example as i said this test system will have the functional data of the production okay you test it and then you move it to the production so since you have tested it in product and test has the data similar to the production then your code most likely to work properly in the production you got it so this is the three system landscape so what do i mean by the five system landscape or the four system landscape okay some of the customers okay like for example uh, nestle or uh, um, bp british petroleum so they are big big customers you know they have oil oil and uh, bp is oil and then nestle is like chocolates and they have a huge huge retail so this um, manufacturing factories and everything so what the thing is oh god no matter whatever it is my production should not get impacted whatever the bug you the big fix you have taken to the production my production system should not get impacted i need extra layers of landscape okay so for them spending on the infrastructure is nothing i mean because as you know for one system you are keeping three landscape right development one system test system it's an extra cost for setting up this landscape but for those guys it doesn't matter because if their production system is impacted for one hour they have a million dollars of loss because they don't want to get into that situation so what they do is they will put one more system here so left hand side sandbox i think you might have heard it sandbox and then here production before production they will put pre production 
Okay, that is a file system landscape. So whatever you want to try, first you try in the sandbox. That's like a playground. So you do it, then you take me to the development, then you move me to the test, and then you move to the pre-production. Here, one more system. So where you test again, and then you move to the production. So it's a five system landscape, but which you rarely encounter. But a three system landscape is the uh, SAP minimum recommends to anybody. So 99% of the customers will have this three system landscape. Okay, I mean, five system landscape also has these three systems. I mean, three systems, but minimum SAP requirements. So good. So this is the three system landscape. So three tier client server architecture. So this is how it looks. So database, application, presentation, and then you have, uh, yeah, it's there. So why do you need this minimum application layer? Flexibility, security, and performance. Uh, and then you have presentation layer, SAP GUI. So now you understood the development quality production and why do you need a three system landscape? And apart from three systems, some customers implement five systems. That's it depends on their budget. Okay. So standard or customizing or the web, web thing, whatever you have developed will move to the test and then it goes to the production. Okay. So all these systems, you administrators have the access. That's why that is the whole purpose of this slide. Okay. So development, you have to work quality. You have to work production. You have to work. So for others like business users and end users, there might be a limitation, but for you guys, as I said, any system, your work is same. I mean, irrespective. So that is the simplicity of the basis, but it is also very complicated technically. So simplicity is you have access everywhere. I mean, you development, for example, developers, ABAP developers, they only have access to development. Okay. Because they can't touch the uh, test system and the quality guys will be there, functional testing guys. And then production, uh, no expected to be no issues. Even though there is an issue, basis guy has to import here. And then if there is an issue, again, he has to import to the development guys only. Hey guys, uh, this transport is causing a problem or this change is causing a problem. And then that guy has to fix in development only. So, which means he is not, first of all, developers are not supposed to change anything in the production. So that's why you have access to everything and you are the guy who has to intimate to the respective people. Okay. So you have access everywhere. Um, I mean, you will be responsible for administering all those things, but architecture and all, uh, you know, wherever is most relevant for the basis, right? So I will automatically stress it over there. Okay. For example, in business suit uh, where I've stressed it. So wherever it is of more relevant and under, I mean, uh, needs a special, uh, this thing, I will always, uh, stress it. Okay. Now, after discussing about the uh, what is SAP, what is ERP, history of SAP, and what are the SAP solutions, and what is their landscape, now it is important for us to understand the SAP architecture and some of the slides which I've already explained in this one. But I will slowly take you to the NetWeaver. Okay. Uh, after that, I will take, see, hope you are getting the flow, right? So what I have going to do now is SAP business suit. I have introduced you on top of it on which platform it has developed NetWeaver, right on NetWeaver. So see overview of SAP and you understand ERP SAP business suit. Now I will take you to the NetWeaver and from here, your core thing will start. So on SAP NetWeaver, everything is developed your business suit, product portfolio, ERP, everything is developed. So now we understand SAP NetWeaver's architecture. After understanding the SAP NetWeaver's architecture, we will understand the architecture of SAP system. Okay. What all, um, you know, ABAP based systems or Java based systems. And then we will close slowly. We log into the SAP system. Okay. That's the flow I'm following now. Now, so this we have explained founded in 1972. What is SAP? So key features SAP ERP is the main product for the, I mean, just recapping before I go to this thing. So SAP history I've explained. So what are the products they have developed and just in a more representative or the technical facts, some of them for your reference purposes, I mean, documentation purposes. So they have started in um, 1972 and then slowly they have evolved R1 to R2, R3 and so on. So things. So technical solutions, I just explained. So business suit is the key or the uh, in business suit ERP, CRM, SRM. And apart from that, there are 40 plus solutions they have. So as a basis guys for you, R1 to R3 architecture and then business suit applications are more than sufficient, but anything is a similar, uh, same way for you guys. Okay. So ERP packages, as explained, 
ERP 6.0 EHP 8 is the latest one, and these are the component people soft from Oracle and JD Edwards, and these parts also I have covered. Okay, so this is in a different way of uh, rep uh, representation. So business one for the small scale or the basic functions I explained you right, small, mid, and large scale. So by business by design, so software and debugging, uh, it's a um, small size only. This also, so business all in one for a mid size. And SAP business suit, this is the most important. All of you will work on this SAP business suit for a large scale enterprise. Okay. And then, so some of the industry solutions, as I said, uh, aerospace, there are specific industries, automotive, oil. So for them, uh, SAP has its, uh, e they tweak the ERP and provide some solutions. I mean, for a table, structures, and everything. So that's why they call it as an ind industry solutions. Okay. So this is a simple portfolio. So, Basic elements of SAP solution, as I said, business suit, uh, I mean, uh, SAP solution will be developed on the SAP NetWeaver, majority of them, okay? I'm not restricting to this, but don't take otherwise, uh, everything is developed on SAP NetWeaver, no. So there are uh, in-memory platform like HANA, there is SAP Cloud platform, but 90% uh, of the solutions, whatever they're in the market, are on the SAP NetWeaver, and this is where basis guys are working so far. So that's why it is important. Uh, any SAP solution, majority of them are on the SAP NetWeaver. This we will discuss in a detail. And then you have SAP Business Suit. As I said, it's a combination of ERP, CRM, and other or NetWeaver based solutions. Okay, whatever they developed on NetWeaver, they packaged it and they sold it. So I mean, sold it. So these um, my SAP and these are small scale industries. They have already um, business all in one and all. There we don't work regularly, but just for your information, this part. Okay, so. Business suit just explained in the other. So these are all components are combined in that CRM, SRM, SCM, and PLM. And then <clears throat> very good. Now we are slowly getting to the NetWeaver. So SAP NetWeaver, uh, good. So key features. SAP is support, as I said, SAP business suit applications, ERP, SRM, CRM, PLM, everything is developed on the SAP NetWeaver. Okay. So as I said, what is SAP NetWeaver? It's a platform. When I say platform, what all things it can do? Uh, you can develop SAP products, okay? And suppose um, you have developed an SAP system, you want to integrate with a non-SAP system, okay? Or sometimes you may get request to make an RFC connection, you know, a web connection or TCP IP connection or your mobile application, you developed something and you, you want to integrate with SAP. That is eligible, possible, if you have NetWeaver, that's why platform means it is much more than an SAP system. So you can integrate non-SAP solutions to this solution and you can develop the features using the ABAP or Java. So, and you can bundle components. Okay. So it has a lot more features. So these are the few key, key features. So you can develop applications, you can integrate non, and you can also develop the industry solutions. What I mentioned, aerospace, banking, oil and gas, which has a specific requirements. So those things you can develop. So that is possible with the platform. Okay. One second. So these are the key features of SAP NetWeaver. Okay. So see this slide, uh, I mean, in future when you are, so why I put these slides is uh, in future when you are applying for a certification or something. So, you know, in a nutshell, I can explain you, but it is important that the terminologies, you know, doing a job is different practically and writing exam is different. So in automobile, a car can be repaired by a guy who has not done an engineering and, but I mean, he, with a practice, he will do that. But if he wants to write an engineering automobile exam, then he has to prepare for this one. So if you want to go for certification, but you have to understand this, uh, you know, technical terms, I mean, use case, if you want to build, as I said, Net, so if you understand the term platform, then NetWeaver becomes much easier for you. I mean, it is very easy to understand. SAP NetWeaver is a platform. Suppose if you want to build composite applications, I mean, SAP and non-SAP applications. So NetWeaver can provide this feature, SAP composite environment, that environment name. I mean, in a certification, you may get a case. Let's say if you want to develop a non-composite, build different applications, what module or the what part of the SAP NetWeaver you will use? So, which is SAP composition environment. Data warehousing, as I said, um, if you want to store the data, what do you use? SAP BW, this, this part of the solution you use. So, integrating and self-servicing content with the NetWare portal. For example, end user, 
so he will launch an url and he will uh, see the data i mean he will place orders over there that is the netweaver portal so the, that is provided by the enterprise portal it's, uh, it's again a different product i mean see these are the things building integration scenarios okay your uh, erp to the external world scenarios how do you do po process integration now they call it as po so sap pi is the thing you use and mobility sap netweaver mobile so so this is the like theoretical part what corresponding capability of sap netweaver can provide this particular use case this is the part okay now you understand so a netweaver is a platform so it can provide these many capabilities or the, these many features okay so now hope you get some glimpse of netweaver okay so if i have to put it in a clean slide uh, this is how i do so sap netweaver it's a platform it has security and identity management so you know uh, security and identity management earlier as uh, microsoft has this ldap and others uh, security this is also an important identity who has to log into the system and uh, who is should access it so that falls also netweaver provides it a provision to provide uh, control the security okay and then life cycle management so i mean for example erp how do i upgrade when do i have to upgrade what is my latest releases out so that life cycle management is possible and application foundation so if you are developing some particular application where do you start how do you do that so that part is covered in this one and then integration processes people so composition as i explained this keep key features so these are all uh, in a pictorial way i have put okay good now you understood the netweaver now the most important part okay so sap netweaver application server okay this is where the you basis guys comes into picture right so you might have heard dialog instance application instance right or central instance have you heard of these terms okay it's an abap uh, abap system it's a java system so these terms you might be confused so now i will try to slowly i will get into that level okay good sap netweaver now we are slowly getting into the um, application server okay so you have a presentation layer sap gui browser this is the least bothered about it leave it so this component we are least bothered going forward i mean it's just an interface how you log into the system what part is important application level so netweaver as i said it can provide you can um, provide a abap system i mean erp on abap or uh, there is no erp on java some of them uh, java system enterprise portal it's a java based system in process integration pi right pi you have this abap plus java systems okay so the earlier they used to call the dual stack systems i mean abap plus java bw also abap plus java. but sap no longer recommends this dual stack systems okay so there's no point in learning it now five years back they discontinued it so don't worry about the dual some customers may have it but the if you understand java and abap independently that should be more than sufficient for you to troubleshoot the dual stack system problems you got it so so there are two levels of uh, sap systems developed in application sap abap system sap java system okay on java based systems database it doesn't matter whether it is a java system or a abap system they all connect to the database so for a database uh, just understand that uh, it has nothing i mean it will store the data from anybody okay so now sap netweaver as i said it's a platform right on the platform you have to develop something right how do you develop you need a coding language right so there are two develop two two coding languages abap so abap is an sap's uh, coding language that we all know right so it's their code uh, erp is developed on abap or scm ARM, anybody thing is developed in abap but when you say sap netweaver is a platform so that anybody non sap applications also should be integrated how do you do that so what is the other coding language majority of the applications use java so that's why on a pla platform only these runtime environments comes into picture guys that's you try to understand whenever somebody says it's a platform so there should be a runtime environment to run i mean code has to run python or whatever is it so in this case netweaver platform has two runtime environments abap and java when you say sap system abap system so it's an abap based coding so when you say sap java system it's a java based coding so these two things can um, enable the integrations to non abap non abap means majority of them are in java so that will uh, provide facilitate this integration scenarios so we are not talking about the other things as well netweaver has those capabilities but 95% of the things 
comes into these two categories abap and java runtime environment okay so now abap runtime so you know that just for your theory understanding thing abap is a programming language developed by sap that we all know so many business applications in the sap system they are written in the abap okay so abap has been optimized in such a way uh, high scalable business applications if you want to scale out or um and customers can also use their abap workbench they can develop their customize or develop their applications modify the standard applications as well okay there is a lot of facilities mm. so this about the basics of abap runtime environment now let's come to the java so java also is an another mostly used enterprise edition uh, java so currently java is taken by oracle okay so earlier uh, so okay first understand the java then i'll give you the background uh, java is a simple object oriented uh, platform independent i mean irrespective of the platform netweaver or cloud or anything whatever platform you can use the java over there it's a independent platform independent programming language okay so it enables you to write the browsers web pages and these are all development related things so you don't have to worry about it but know that java is this and on top of it also people will develop their applications browsers or whatever it is so netweaver facilitate both java and abap okay so future if you ask me the future of sap so slowly the java will phase out sap will uh, would like to kick out java you know why okay i'll give you just one minute take time i will tell you why because so that you remember this that in future okay i don't have to support these java systems or they get rid of sap get rid of them okay i'll give you a simple example why see earlier java is a open source okay i mean anybody can use like linux it's a open source anybody can go to google and so nobody owns it you develop your product you work on it that's it java was a open source then sap thought okay it's a open source anybody can use it fine let me my netweaver also people also develop there but the problem is java slowly acquired by the sap sorry oracle why oracle as i said in the initial oracle is a competitor to sap right so i mean they both are competing each other in a erp module they, i mean in terms of the database also sap came up with hana because to counter oracle's uh, db oracle db so they both are competing from last 10 15 years so what oracle did is okay i am not able to compete with sap directly uh, on the erp front okay let me do one thing so all these components like java all these uh, parties third party modules or small small things let me acquire so uh, oracle has started this back bd i mean they they have acquired all these oracle and um, java everything now what oracle did they started charging sap so if you want to use this java runtime environment you have to pay me you pay me the license and you take it and then they started charging exorbitant rate i mean too much of money too much of price those licenses that's where the problem so that's why sap started uh, okay i don't want your database oracle please i will migrate to my hana you see majority of the databases are migrated already in last 4 5 years now you see hana database or the cybase cybase is also acquired by the sap so it's an sap's database right so now you you get a glimpse now you understand so sap will phase out this java in future so what is the counter fury so that is also in your course curriculum one day we will talk about the fury fury is going to counter the java so that's the marketing strategies but understand this but still today majority of the components okay majority of them are with the sap i mean uh, systems are both are with abap and java supported by netweaver systems okay still there but slowly in future after 5 years uh, the, we will we don't see any java systems or sap will come up with a complete fairy gateway based systems like that okay so good now you understood that netweaver two kinds of systems abap and java systems will be available sap system whatever you hear so good um this slide uh, is not important for you right now so i mean so mainly client server architecture this is again useful for you when you go for an uh, certification so hardware oriented we means you are you you are a client and then you have a server so sorry they both are connected through lan or wire so then that is the hardware oriented i am a client and i will connect you to the server that's it that is a hardware but in sap the terminology of client and server is different so client is somebody who request for a service and server is somebody server is somebody who provision of a service that's it it's a software oriented so 
don't get confused when you hear the client and server and this terminal this client means the one which you request the service and the server is something which will provide the service it can be interchangeable so it is a more like a process based architecture so it's a process one so leave about this client and server separately so process one will request for the service so that time you will call it as a client and process two will provide the service that time you will call it server so okay so that is the software oriented view so it's a process based architecture just remember this term certification sometimes they will use this one so sap is architecture is mainly based on the process based so process one will request for the service process two will request for the uh, provide the service so three tier architecture i have already explained so presentation layer so just a recap so because i will i'm going to slowly to the instance level that's why i'm recapping again here presentation application and database explain presentation layer or the client layer information purpose if you are uh, want to read it theoretically later so and then um, database servers you have good so three tier architecture is done now what is an sap instance what is an sap instance so you you heard the term right sap system okay what is sap you understood as a company or as a product level okay leave about it the, keep it aside now we are slowly getting into the technical details what is an sap instance okay or if i have to put it what is sap system and what is sap instance what is the difference between these two okay and in sap instance what are the varieties of instances okay don't get confused i'll, I'll clarify all of them in a clean way okay so fine this is the most important guys as a basis guys please pay attention on this slide i'm going to explain very cleanly on this topic as i said presentation layer we don't bother so it's just sap gui the way you log into the system web browser you don't bother and this is the application level okay and bottom three tier architecture database level database level also database is separate leave it aside so here is the complexity or the important part application means we are talking about sap application okay let's take erp okay so you have computer a when whenever we say computer a computer b computer c what is what does it mean it's a server let's you know for the simplicity purpose i have put it as a computer so it's a server a server b or computer c simple understanding so you in an instance so sap system is comprises of all these components that's an sap system okay so sap system you connect through the sap gui and then to one of these instances and then sap system connects to the database it's a package i mean it's a combination of all these three interconnected sap system it's when i say erp system okay when i say instance okay so you might have heard a uh, dialog instance primary application server or uh, you know secondary application server now that is the terminology i will explain now, next so application level this comes into play what is central instance what is central services instance what is dialog instance okay central instance uh, is something which contains the your uh, message server and nq in a web case okay that's the central instance central services instance it is in the java case they call it as a java process central services instance what is the dialog instance let's say you have a ci um, central instance and then you want to scale out you want to install the another servers to do the uh, computing and logical thing so you can scale out so you can install another dialog instance another dialog instance 3 4 5 6 you can scale out so some some sap systems has 10 application instances so application instances or dialog instances they called uh, synonymous don't get confused so they have or application servers also so the dialog instance and these instances are nothing but application servers okay you can have up to 10 or 15 or whatever is it based on your load and thing so that's the difference between sap sap system is the connectivity of all these things sap system and then instance is um, central instance has uh, specific services like nq okay and then we have the scale out scenarios dialog instances and others okay that's the difference okay in the next uh, i will talk about the only this sap application servers architecture that time you will get much more clarity on what is going to happen in this particular application level okay what is this central side instances what services it has but now you are just understand that okay in my application level so this part is uh, just try to understand for now yeah sample system landscape this i have explained okay 
now we are going to um, we understood what is netweaver what is the landscape uh, i mean in netweaver uh, sap system sap instance and things what is the sap s for hana okay i told you i'll explain right what is sap s for hana okay so it is the next version of the erp there were a lot of uh, modifications done in, so erp can be installed on any database okay you might have so you can install it on a, a cybase database you can install on oracle you can install it on db2 okay various databases are there so erp can be installed in any database but sap what they did in 2011 i told you right they have introduced hana so sap s yes for hana what does mean by s and what is fourth and uh, what is this s for mean anybody knows anyone what does this s for s slash four means hana fine it is on hana that's all right i mean a hana database so what i said is um, business suit i have explained right business suit has what uh, erp srm plm or uh, uh, scm so it's a next generation business suit they are calling which means it's not a next version of the erp next generation business suit okay so s stand for simplified suit for hana they call exact terminology sap simplified suit for hana so that word is very very important when you are when somebody ask you in a nutshell what is sap s for hana that simplified term is the most important thing okay why because you will easily understand what is this s for hana so what they did is in erp there is a too much of coding uh, you know unnecessary coding and uh, earlier coding uh, too many lines or the rows the bigger the code and the expense way is your statement to fetch something so what they did is they simplified it that coding they have removed the number of lines okay so and then they have changed the uh, it is on the hana database right it is powered by the hana real time so hana is much more capable in terms of the ram resources everything so what they did is column based store right so the select can happen faster in a column a column store when we talk about the hana i will explain you what is this column but now just understand that using the capabilities of hana and the user experience of the theory what they did is they have simplified the code if 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 i have to put it in a very crude way so they have simplified the code in such a way that it is much faster excellent performance and uh, real time you can generate the reports and stuff that's what they did with this hana that is why it's very important when you say simplified suit for hana so earlier we had sap business suit which had erp and all what they did is they have simplified it by adjusting the code by removing the number of lines by making it much more simpler and easily accessible and uh, using the capabilities of hana okay so when i say sap hana so this is the thing so very simple so i mean you don't have to bother about anything so it's just an erp with uh, reduction of the code and uh, optimization has been done that's it if you as a basic administration if you want to understand it if you keep this in mind and read sap s for hana you will understand the whole thing whole scenario so in this sap s for hana what all we have on premise edition and cloud edition forget about cloud edition so that only sap provides um, on premise edition some of the customers have implemented it so cloud edition uh, no support vendors like tcs and others won't support this s for hana cloud until unless you are part of the sap team sap is cloud team okay and then sap hana platform as i said it's also a platform so it will run on the hana as a database mm. you can do application extensions like uh, integration with non sap application or stuff and as i said right see you see you pay attention i told java's history right what oracle did to java they have acquired and they started charging so what sap is doing with sap hana remove so, you see there is no java here theory so theory is an html based and it's a uh, open source so sap is using the theory that's where you hear a lot of terms of theory and you know theory interface and all these things so that it's uh, in a nutshell replacing or countering the java okay countering the oracle so they have stopped supporting those things so this is the sap's uh, so now you understood sap's architecture uh, business suit and then netweaver and what is sap system what is this thing and sap s for hana architecture so now we are going to talk about the uh, netweaver uh, architecture of the sap netweaver application server so as i explained clearly netweaver is a platform where you can develop web app and java and it also has the integration capabilities where you can integrate the non sap applications okay so netweaver uh, okay netweaver systems means so this business suite systems right 
all those systems can be um, installed on what all databases. So here you see, okay, this is what this one will uh, technically explain you. So user interfaces. So Java GUI, Web GUI, okay, and then Windows GUI. For example, SAP GUI, the one which you and you also have a Java GUI. For example, people who are using the Mac, right? For example, I'm using a Mac and I, I always have a Java GUI. And then you also have a web-based GUI. So these are the presentation things. So NetWeaver provides these facilities. Languages, ABAP, Java, you see the screen, uh, mouse pointer, Java. And relational databases. So okay, what are databases these NetWeaver systems support? So NetWeaver systems means ERP, SCM, CRM, these things. So they can be installed on Oracle, SQL Server, which is a Microsoft uh, SQL based uh, thing, uh, but Microsoft we are, uh, Microsoft is one of the SQL Server providers, but others also, uh, MongoDB and other DBs also, whoever is on SQL Server based concept, they can use. So and then DB2, which is IBM based uh, database. So you still find some systems with the DB2. Um, some of the customers are still using, for example, banking, as I said, they don't want to migrate. So they don't want to touch their data. That's why they still continue and they will leave it there for another 20, 30 years also. Okay, but still SAP has to support DB2. So the latest version of the DB2 is the DB6. Okay, and then MaxDB. MaxDB is the SAP's database. So Sybase has not listed here. Sybase is also one of the SAP's database. And the important thing, operating system. So that's why base is very complicated. So you have to work on in any of these database based on the customer of what database he has installed. And operating system, again, he, you know, different permutations and combinations. So Oracle and AEX, Oracle, HP, UX, you see, so you always get 30 to 40 flavors of combinations. I mean, as a basis guy, you have to work. So operating systems, AIX, um, it's an IBM, HP UX, HP based uh, Linux, but uh, anything with Unix uh, flavor, right? Those are all similar. I mean, Solaris, uh, OS 400, ZOS, uh, Windows is the only one. So um, SAP is stopped uh, Windows also. I mean, they will stop it uh, slowly. The most important thing is uh, you always, try to excel in the Linux or the Unix operating system. Both are same. Okay. If you know AIX or HP UX or Solaris or Linux, anything, SUSE. SUSE is the most famous, your favorite one, SAPs. So all upcoming, uh, as for HANA, all the systems, are, if, if you really want to learn uh, Linux, you focus on the SUSE Linux, SUSC Linux. That is most important. And the hardware platforms, okay, the servers. So Fujitsu, HP, IBM, Sun, Dell, and in addition to that, now we have the cloud providers, right? Infrastructure providers like Azure, Microsoft, Google. So they're also um, that we have uh, one two hour session at the end. Okay. We will talk about these uh, cloud platforms also. So these are the hardware providers. Okay. So the, so NetWeaver or the NetWeaver based systems have these many combinations or customers can uh, implement in with this, any of these following options, given options. So, yeah. This is the most important thing, guys, the terminology, what you use. So 7.1 NetWeaver uh, applications, NetWeaver 7.1 and higher. So there were some changes. So I'm thinking you still call CICA, right? Central instance, but central instance is renamed to primary application service. So, but again, these terms are important, but uh, traditionally when we are supporting the systems, you can use any name, what you want, central instance, you will still people call, but when you are writing a certification, you will get wrong mark, okay? So 7.1, so currently they call it as the central instance is a PPAS, primary application servers. So all the dialogue instances, so the scale out of the extra additional additional application servers, AAS. So this is very specific. You will get a question on this for sure in certification if you are writing, okay? So the Java dispatch, sorry, who's moving this? So Java dispatcher in the earlier Java systems, they are replaced by the ICM process. So the SDM, Software Deployment Manager, what was using earlier, it's been discontinued. So the Java Central Service comprises a gateway process. So these are the key important uh, areas changes. What happened with the 7.1 in 2015 with the latest architecture, okay? So you always know about the latest architecture only. Don't go with the old because the latest, if you know, the old one easily you can sync. Because if you know the old one, then uh, latest syncing is very difficult, okay? So go in a reverse, latest to the uh, back. Because the concepts are same, only thing is a naming convention they might have changed. So when we say in ABAP applications, or I'm going to see, I've explained the flow. I keep reminding you this. We understood SAP business suit, business suit, ERP, CRM, and other systems. They were developed on the NetWeaver. Okay. NetWeaver has an ABAP application server and Java application server. Now we are talking about the ABAP application server. Okay. 
So see, these are the processes you have in an web application server. Okay. So gateway, ICM, ABAP dispatcher. ABAP dispatcher is that you know work process. Dialog D for dialog, V for update, B for background, S for spool. Okay. So the scalability you can do additional application servers. A A S. Okay. As I said, correct term. Additional application servers. So you see one, two, three here. So three scalability. You can increase them. So central services instance again certification. These questions are very important. Central services. Message even in supporting also. So what does it has message server and enqueue server. So if you stop this central services, that's it. Your system is completely down. Okay. So when you are working on, but if you stop one of these applications, see you have three application servers here. If you stop one application servers, still the system is up and there is no end user impact. So ABAP other two application servers can serve the purpose. But if you start the ABAP central services instance, you are done. I mean your system goes down. So why this NQ server is so important, guys? Anybody? Why this NQ is separated? See, you have dialog, dialog thing, but why you have only one NQ server in this system? Why? Why this is um, put it in the central services system? One instance is specifically called as a central services, and why we have put it NQ over there? So good. So fine, I'll explain you. So NQ is something which will take care of the locking mechanism. Lock, you log into the SAP system and then you are making some changes. So while you are making the change, you don't want somebody to go and update something else over there, right? So you place a lock mechanism. The system will place a lock, the process make a lock mechanism over there. So NQ is mainly takes care of that locking mechanism so that only one person can make change at a one particular point. That's the NQ server, very, very important thing. So if you mess up with that locking thing, then system will lose the track of what is happening in the system. That's why they kept this NQ server separately. And that instance where this NQ is residing, they called it as a central services instance. Okay. So this is very important. It is a um, high availability cases also. You might have heard cluster scenarios. So where you have an ERS server, NQ, rep NQ replication server. Okay. So why do you need only for NQ replication server? Because remember the term single point of failure. Why do you need one for what systems you need? See here. Sorry, somebody is talking. So application servers, they are not single point of failures. Here you see. So even though if your one application server goes down, you have two more application servers, as I said. But if your central instance goes down, your entire system is down. So if somebody asks you to put a cluster or a high availability, what do you do? You do you mainly pick this central service instance because your message server is one server in the system and NQ is also one. So you need an uh, High availability for that single point of failures. Okay, now you you got this concept right. So NQ is single process in the system, and then message server. Message server, what it will do? So when you do log into the SAP GUI, it will do the load balancing. So which of my application servers are free? Which of my application servers has uh, some processes free? Okay, and waiting for the uh, worker. Okay, for that this will do the central instance will do the load balance. Okay, so once the message server decides. Okay, where my request has to go and it has passed to the ABAP AS. Let's say take this one, or you take this one. For example, the first one here in this one. So three layer, right? First to service. So my message server passes the request to the dispatcher. Okay, hey, ABAP, uh, you, you, first one, uh, you are free, take this. Then it will assign the dialogue and uh, update and background and the spool, whatever based on the request. If it is just a user transaction dialogue and if it is a database update, update process and background, background process and spool means printing. Okay, so this is the first point. So SAP GUI, the moment you log in, the request goes to the message server. Message server will uh, look for which application is free and then it will pass your request over there and then your dispatcher will take care of uh, based on the activity. You understand now? Okay, now you have some uh, descriptions here. Message server, uh, what it will do. See communication between the distributions. This is the technical definition, but simplified things I've understood. Message server will do the load balancing. Dialogue work process will do the requests. Um, uh, I mean, based on the user transactions or simple updates or checks or things. So it will do the dialogue. And then NQ, as I said, it's a locking mechanism. And then gateway service um, between SAP systems. I mean, one system to system, A to system B communication, this gateway. So ICM mainly come, uh, takes care of the uh, in Java. So web-based requests comes to the system, right? 
so the icm internet communication manager so it checks those things and then it will assign uh, for that particular task java process okay so these are the definitions of this process but just try to understand uh, this uh, basic architecture so as i explained components of the sap netweaver uh, abap dispatcher i mean once you re receives the request from the message server dispatcher will pass it to the uh, based on the work to the dialog spool or update or nq okay these are the main components of the netweaver application server so this is the java architecture okay so you have uh, in java as i said uh, there is no dialog update spool and things it's a simple server 1 server 2 server 0 like that so i mean you see yes yes uh, like this so it's a uh, simple i would say but uh, you may not have too many java systems uh, i don't know based on your uh, product or the customer but just know that so java primary application server java central services as i said here also same concept so central services instance have the java message server and java nq server so wherever there is a message server and nq server you just uh, call it as an nq, NQ uh, sorry central services instance so all other instances are the primary application or the secondary application. So ICM, as I said, right? What will ICM do? All the web-based requests, whatever comes to the system, ICM will receive those requests and it will assign the task to the Java server nodes. Okay. So ICM is more or less equivalent to the what? Dispatcher. If you want to compare with ABAP. ABAP dispatcher will assign to the dialog update and but ICM here will assign to the Java server node. Okay. So Java based systems. Um, yeah, this is fine. So this is the same thing. Java environment, Java dispatcher. So Java server process just uh, explained here. So you have an ICM that this is the old uh, description, but here is the, this is the latest. So you have a host Java primary application server ICM and then server nodes. It's a very simple Java architecture is these are the information purposes. So I mean, uh, if you want to go through as I whatever I have explained so far uh, to refresh it. ABAP runtime system, it provides uh, ABAP application servers for an internal and external communications. So message server, what it will do? Communication between the distributed displays in the ABAP stack, load balancing, if I have to put it. So as soon as you log into the SAP GUI, request goes to the message server. Message server will communicate, it's a theoretical explanation here. So same thing happens. Communication between distributed dispatchers means you have application server one, two, three, four, right? Four applications. So each one has their own dispatcher and it will communicate to those dispatchers. So which of you are free so that I can pass my request to you. That's what. So gateway communicate between the different SAP systems. So system A to system B, system B to system C like that. Okay. So find this. So this is again a theoretical explanation. So what have I explained so far? What is the central instance and how do you distinguish between central instance to this? Simple message server and NQ. Wherever there is a message server and NQ, it's a it's a central services instance. Even in the Java also, wherever there is a Java message server and Java NQ, it's a central service and rest all are like uh, additional application server. The correct term is additional application servers. So, so it's a Java basics. So Sun Microsystems in 1995, they have developed it. I mean, in case if you are uh, interested in the Java. So basic Java applications and applets. So it's not important for you. So the same thing. So three tier architecture here also. Presentation layer, application layer and the database layer. So so java application layer uh, you whatever i've explained java architecture you have an uh, ci a central instance and then additional application servers and then D db is fine i mean java and abap anybody can go to the these are all the theoretical guys so this is not so important i have explained already so central server communication synchronous java cluster so central services instance have the what it, what what it has so a message server so message server as i said again communication so here in of uh, dispatcher it will communicate to the java cluster so this part i will explain here so exactly so this slide will explain what does all the theory is so you have a request web so java systems all the request comes from the web only guys there is no sap gui over there web request so portal is the one example so web request so it comes to the java dispatcher so i mean for simplicity purpose java dispatcher now what it is java dispatcher i mean to compare with ABAP. so here it is now icm so in world system, they used to call it as Java dispatcher ICM. So ICM will pass it to the uh, Java cluster node server zero, server one, server two, like that. So in Java server nodes will be there. So passes to the request. So central services instance is simply, I said, wherever there is an NQ and message server, that's a central service, both in ABAP and Java. Okay. 
so same uh, same thing whatever i was explain you uh, theoretically in that architecture in a more uh, graphical or pictorial way so yeah in case if you are interested in the um, dual stack systems which no longer available okay this is how the dual stack system looks okay so the sap gui and then the java here okay so traffic comes in two flows two ways sap gui for the abap system see here you see an abap system and then java system and then web based traffic comes to the icm first icm will pass to the java but in sap gui it's a straight forward but dual stack system we no longer have it uh, i mean very rarely because sap already requested the customer to split them so whenever you look into these systems you look into as a two independent systems one is abap runtime environment abap system or java system so you don't have any dual stack systems okay so so okay now what all combinations of the systems which we have so sap web application server abap system abap based i explained and then two java system you can have and abap plus java uh, you used we used to have it but now we removed it so these are all like just for your uh, in case you are working with any old customer or the old one who are using this is helpful or else you just understand one and two that is more than sufficient and you can easily relate to the other systems so abap and java so here in gui okay you have these options okay so theme settings so i always prefer this sap signature theme i mean uh, even the old versions or everybody can uh, use this one or you can go with the default quad theme or anything i mean i'm just showing you if uh, i mean if there is an option to change fonts and the brands color settings and all these things so most important one is the theme settings so if the based on the theme settings that's how your sap screen will appear okay so let's say apply so i have applied it okay and the another thing is adding the system properties so this is already added okay so major uh, do you know how do you connect to the sap system so here i have explained you the three tier architecture so i am we are talking about the uh, lab one guys um but in this one um, we will are going to talk about a uh, presentation layer how we are logging in so you, now you just understood how do you change the theme font and everything in from the sap gui 770 is the latest version this uh, sap logon so as a basis guy i why i am stressing on this particular gui part is even though it looks very simple so some of the customers or the end users sometimes they complain you that hey no i am not able to log into the system i am not able to log into the system you logged into the system and you check that sap system is up and running uh, all good but the problem was they will be working on a older version of this one so 720 710 uh, the sap guis are discontinued okay so they may work they may not work so they say that until yesterday it was working today it's not working so as a basis guy you always have to tell them that which instead of you wasting time in analyzing so much first ask them which gui version so this problem happens um, no for the people who are working on the wts servers and uh, re remotely they are accessing right for them they are using old uh, native uh, this gui versions so i have seen cases where uh, the problem was with the uh, gui so you always check them so see any sap version the recommended version is the n minus 1 i don't know if you have heard the term n minus 1 so which means so 770 is the latest one always go with the 760 that's the best okay and you use the latest that's fine it's up to you but always the best is the n minus 1 as a safe side you recommend for anybody to n minus 1 version for example if you are applying a kernel always suppose the n minus 1 version because latest version might not have been implemented by many customers and sap also may not have tested properly but the best part is go with n minus 1 so that many could have been migrated and you know in google or help.sap.com you will find the solutions for the issues okay so it's important you are in the right uh, this one suppose if you want to connect to a, an sap system so when i say system id here sap system so i have explained you the difference between sap system and an instance so instance or the application servers they both are synonyms i mean they both are uh, you can call anything but let's put this way so system id is the e68 in this particular system so application server you can give the server host or the ip both should be fine you are connecting to one of the sap systems one particular application server so here he has selected as a connection type custom application server so when you take the custom application server so it will take you to this particular ip application server 
if you take the message server group server or selection server i think he has not configured this smlg in this one group server you need to give the logon group that is the message server group so then it will do the load balancing so this is what i was talking the request will go to the message server message server will allocate the free application server okay but in this case we are directly connecting to the custom application server so if you need, if you have a load balancing always use the group server uh, selection and then give the let select it see so here you have to give the message server details this is what i'm saying so you see when you select the group server when you put the message server it will take you to the message server and then message server will take care of the load balancing which applications but the custom application server you can give directly okay so now let's go to the network so sometimes you have to activate the snc okay secure network communication so once they install the certificate they will give you the uh, thing what you have to maintain here so p slash something so that data you have to activate and maintain that here then only uh, the access will go single sign on i mean to say i mean you don't have to give the user id or password password when you are logging in so single sign on purposes you always come here and activate secure sign network and uh, they will provide you the uh, string what you have to maintain here okay code page ignore language default and encoding is ansi for all the unique so unicode systems so default ansi for unicode systems and you have so many this thing so you, i will explain you about what is this unicode and what is this ansi so 99% of the sap systems have the uh, unicode systems and this ansi encoding and sap got rid of the non unicode systems and um, they were migrated all the non unicode to unicode also okay so, but still some customers as i said banking kind of guys they don't want to migrate so they were still on the old versions of the non unicode system that's why here there is an option but here you don't have to do anything over here simple clear now let's connect to the system simple so it is asking for the client so it's an uh, ehp8 system you see here ides ecc 6.0 or ehp8 so so today we talked about all these architectures and stuff right guys from tomorrow onwards i want you to focus more on the um, hands on that is more important so it doesn't matter how much theory you know and uh, uh, you know you can go through google also theory you will get anywhere but the thing is starting in the right direction and then doing the hands on because the more you work on the system practical knowledge i mean to say the more you work on it the better you will be able to troubleshoot the issues okay so focus on the hands on and moreover uh, during the session also whenever i am spending time one hour one and a half hour for hands on for tomorrow onwards okay theory i will give you the glimpse and then understanding of the topic but hands on is the most important thing because system utilize the system what is given to you for the next 14 15 days so in the hands during the hands on i also give you some live tribal shooting scenarios for example if some user logs out or some user get killed or sm37 bag got failed how do you troubleshoot it when there were dumps how do you check it so i will improvise the hands on also and based on your level of understanding and i will increase the difficulty as well so can any one of you explain what is sap basis no server administration is a different thing so here you see my screen server administrator is a different guy who will take care of the and then network administrator then you have a database administrator then you have a os administrator okay so if i have to put it in a simple thing basis guy is a doctor okay or a general surgeon general uh, physician okay so but basis guys can become experts subject matter expertise okay smes they call okay in that particular area or the particular domain they can become but basis guy is like a general physician so first you go to the hospital whom do you meet first you have a problem whom do you meet general physician then he will assess your condition and he will suggest you to the right uh, specialist right like uh, so in this case i mean sometimes it will be frustrating for you also all the problems will come to you i mean this is something you have to live in day in and day out okay if you are growing in a basis guy i mean i am trying to put it in a very simple simple things guys so if you are want to grow as a basis consultant you should not live with the troubles a doctor cannot sleep with the patient's problems okay he can't get sleep if he keeps thinking about patient condition i mean he is the aim is to improve it but he can't worry or he can't think of it and then it will cause so basis guys life is like this so i have spent 10 years of experience in basis i am an sme now still you can't live or you can't sleep on a problem 
okay that you have to understand very cleanly i mean as a person i'm telling you so all the problems in an sap will come and land in your queue basis guy okay so every time all the problems looks to you that oh oh my god this problem that problem this is thing so sometimes from the front end sometimes from the application layer sometimes from the db but at any point in time all the problems lands into you so you have to assess the situation you have to assess the problem do the basic troubleshooting and if you think that it is a database and if you have a l3 database pass it to the l3 database after doing thing if you don't have db then you have to upskill yourself in db so if you think that it's an os issue then you pass it to the os guy then if it is a hardware issue pass it to the server if it is a network issue pass it to the network right sometimes network restrictions what examples firewall if the, your firewall doesn't allow a rfc connection or the connection to the sap gui what do you do nothing so you have to request your network guy to open the connection or the ports right so at any point in time the end users doesn't know anybody they will pass the ticket to your queue so you have to identify that problem and you have to pass it to so if you keep worrying about that problem and you don't get sleep in the evening believe me so if you think that you you had a big issue today oh my god i am not sleeping no you have to give it up office is office you leave it and go so because basis is like this every day the moment you log into the shift you find one or two tickets in your queue which you don't have any clue i mean sometimes it will be repeated repetitive issues won't happen so if the issue is repetitive then they will fix it right i mean they will fix it they will create a problem and then they will address it put the change in the system and they won't be so always you keep getting the new new issues at a basis guy so that's in a customer project at least so internal projects are fine know that so basis consultant is sap architect system architect so i mean he is the best guy to design a system for a customer based on his requirement you know what application um Uh, what servers linux or which operating system to choose what database to be picked based on the customer's requirement what is the database size and all these things he can become an excellent system architect transport administrator as i said developers will develop the transport and i go and put it in the test system okay test system you you have to put it and then you put it in the production system so the moment you import the transport system is done who is trouble, who has to troubleshoot basis so you have to bring up the system first to avoid the end user and then you tell the developer hey guy your transport has got so and so problem or i have to restore the system you know backup management so backups you have to take care of it so it's like sap dba so and then security specialist so you have to restrict the authorizations to the specific people and batch means job monitoring so these are all interface analyst this is most important this is the most painful task so these non sap interfaces or the non sap systems want to communicate to your system rfc connection or tcp ip connection so these connections you have to take care of these integrations and then system administration simple so these are your day to day a job as a basis consultant but once you grow i mean 5 years 6 years of your thing then you have the regular activities like upgrade of the systems ehp 6 to ehp 7 sap erp to the sap s for hana conversion okay and then osdb migration some guy wants to change the operating system windows to linux right and somebody wants to oracle to hana so that migration so those are the big big activities so that will come as once you grow as a consultant and become a senior level but as a day to day life this will be your life i mean problems are always with you you know a doctor will never be free it's like this general physician you will be sitting in a hospital like or monitoring the queue you will be dumped with the issues you know functional issues this issue that issue but you should get the understanding or the glimpse of what was the problems okay so this, uh, this is the simple simple this thing so what is the system architect will do what is the transport admin will do batch admin what you you will do create manage and job things so the most important sizing of sap system designing of the sap landscape system architect i mean in your future when you are grow you will grow as an you know if you like this uh, basis thing you go as uh, grow as an sap architect okay that's the point so you know layers so first you work as an admin and then you will be like a consultant who will execute the things and then you have sme subject matter expert so in this also you can pick the specializations so installation specialization migration specialization or the some things so you, you will be called as an sap basis sme for that particular area you know erp sme or java sme ewap sme you can pick that specific topics so which means you deep dive into those topics but as an admin consultant you have to have a basic understanding of all these things okay so a system administrator what you do maintain currently might be your majority of them are working maintain system health monitor the performance and tune the system performance setting some parameters that we will talk when we have when we have this session all right let's test your knowledge here's a question for you what is the primary function of the sap basis component option a 
managing user interfaces. Option B, handling application logic. Option C, administering the SAP system landscape. Option D, developing new applications. Take a moment to think, and when you're ready, choose the correct option. Remember, each choice holds a key to unlocking the answer. Good luck. Type the correct answer in the comment section. Hey there, ready to dive into the world of SAP Basis? Our course is here to guide you through it step by step. In this course, you'll learn all about SAP Basis. It's like a tool shed for managing stuff, from making sure we have enough resources to get them where they need to go. Our course covers everything you need to know, from the basics to advanced tips and tricks. It's created by experts who really know their stuff. Your instructors are seasoned pros who've been in the game for ages. They're here to help you learn and answer any questions you have. And guess what? Our students absolutely love the course. Folks just like you have found it incredibly helpful. The best part? It's budget friendly. This amazing opportunity to learn won't break the bank. Ready to become SAP Basis Pro? Sign up on our page now. For more info, head over to Zarentech's website. Stay tuned for more updates. Are you all set? So don't try to log into the system now. So just focus on the concept. Uh, this is also a very uh, important topic, transport thing. So which you may do as a basis consultant uh, day in and day out. So based on your customer projects, uh, for, let's say if you are in an SAP, uh, I mean, within SAP, SAP is your client. So there, uh, this auto transport process might have been automated completely. But if you are working in a client projects, uh, you know, uh, BP or any other client projects, there definitely you have to work in the, on this uh, transports. Yeah, importing of the transports and changes, you have to take it to the production. Okay, so it's a very, very important topic. So at times uh, you may start in this process. So understanding the basics is very important. Okay. And also uh, importing and taking these changes to the production is not so difficult. Okay. Most of the times it's been tested and it, if it gives an error, so you can always reach out to the developers. That is fine. That part is clear. But what is important is the basics of uh, how do you configure this in a particular system? Let's say if I give you the development system, okay, I'm setting the context guys. Don't think that I'm giving too much theory. Setting the context in the practical world. Suppose if I ask you as a customer or if there is a new implementation, right? They are setting up their development test and production landscape. Okay. Hey, can you please configure my STMS? Right. So what do you do? I mean, what are the questions you may have to ask or the clarify with the customer or yourself? How do you design that TMS configuration for that particular landscape? Okay. So what are the things you have to consider uh, to set up such a thing? Okay. All those questions will be clarified in this session. I mean, when we, when we walk through this thing. Okay. So it's very important, um, this thing. And I will give you, uh, I mean, this theory and understanding this, you get it anywhere. But the real time uh, where you have to check when there is a problem. Okay. What you have to, uh, I mean, the sense or the common sense where you, you know, by looking at the error, what exactly on what location you may have to check that common sense you will build after completing this particular uh, module okay especially in terms of the tms configuration okay so there are some term i'm going with the presenter uh, view today so the reason is uh, there are some important terminologies okay in this particular definitions kind of thing which will help you uh, it is important for you to know exact definition of those words for these things so that you will uh, talk or, uh, you know, uh, when you are, uh, whenever you are explaining in your client meetings or somewhere, use those terms in a proper way. Okay. So let's start with the uh, transport system. Okay. The first thing, whenever you are doing this transport, right? So you see this slide. As I said, majority of the customers will have this dev, QAS and product. QAS is nothing but quality assurance. And some people, uh, I don't know if you have heard RTE, RTE system. Some will call as a just test system. Some will call as an RTE. RTE means regression testing. So it is the customer's uh, definition. 
so based on i mean if it is more of like a too much testing they do rte some will use qas okay so the, the naming convention for the qas system will vary based on the customer okay it's up to them how they define but the whole purpose is for the testing only so this middle one okay so the first one is the development and product so this is the landscape path many of the customers will follow three system landscape this is so if i tell you five system landscape on top of this dev there is a sandbox okay here sandbox will be there and sandbox development qas or rte or the fourth one pre production before going to the prod they will have one more thing pre production so today if time permits i will show you one five system landscape the stms configuration in one of the projects which i am working so i mean that will give you a better picture okay so since we are just taking a three system landscape so transport directory so what is this transport directory okay so what all things it contains for example if you are working on any uh, project or in your customer thing right in your customer project now you have these systems so after this session today you go and see them okay in their uh, in their in your uh, regular domain thing right in your regular work so log into the system because you're not touching anything don't worry about it i mean you're not you will i don't think you will have access also to do that so what you do is you go and check this directory trans directory so then you uh, you will get a feel of what i have explained today and this transport concept will be completely clear for you you know 100% you will and you will understand how your client or your project has configured this particular thing so if you take the trans directory so you will have a trans directory which is common for all these three systems dev qas and production okay so all of them have the same trans directory you log into the dev system and see a uh, uh, usr sap trans and then qas usr sap trans production usr sap trans you check the directory so all of the three they have common directory and in most of the cases it is a common mount okay <clears throat> so nfs or the export of the block device or whatever is it that directory will be common for all these three systems okay so that you can you can make a note of these things guys what to be checked i mean so one thing in the sandbox system what i am going to provide you can check there but anyway it's a single system one but it is also important for you to understand the projects where you are working uh, what is the configuration they have done over there okay just check it out so when i said this trans directory is common right so as a basis consultant if somebody asks you to configure this tms configuration in a particular landscape so your first thing should be what network consideration right what what is the network consideration so do the all three systems are in the same network so then only you will be able to mount the directory i mean the common mount or nfs so that part has to be clear for you so you have to place a request for this uh, network team or uh, uh, server management team for to configure a common trans directory but the requirement has to go from you okay clear so and how do you define the sizing of this trans directory hmm? how do you define what size do i have to do that thing will be depends on you have to check with the customer he how frequently the, the transports you generate the transport is it monthly is it quarterly or some customers will do weekly basis also okay how many transports and what will be the uh, expected size this analysis you have to do with the functional consultants functional or the abappers so if you generally take a three system landscape 50 to 100 gb is more than sufficient again if this trans also full then it also leads to a system hung situation or it won't lead to any further imports to happen so you don't want to get into that situation right so discuss with them they say that hey every week i do 10 transports and each of them of size of 10 mb or 20 mb then you calculate accordingly and most of the customers so the best suggestion which you, as a basis consultant you can be give is ask them to use the nfs okay i mean network file system so which mean that can be extended whenever you need okay easily suppose 50 gb and you already exceeded 40 gb and then you add the 10 gb extra for that okay so that way you have to first check with the trans 
and then you put them in the uh, mount it on all the three systems dev uh, qas and prod system and ensure that you have the right amount of uh, space defined for that and you also keep increasing it as and when it is required that is your uh, regular task okay so how do you know that uh, where is my trans directory path okay so i'm just telling you that usr sap trans in most of the cases you use it but some customers may use differently so there is a profile parameter which we will check it today which is called dir underscore trans so if you go to the default profile i mean uh, profile directory that we will see so just check for the parameter dir underscore trans that will have the tr default path which is this usr trans and windows ignore it so very very uh, less number of systems these days on windows and it's waste of time you focusing on this windows so whenever you have uh, working on in windows just you concepts are same it's just that the way you operate is different i mean instead of this uh, linux this thing but the concepts are same so there it is like a sap mnt trans but irrespective of your operating system and stuff always check for the dir underscore trans so that you can also check in your landscapes just go to the rz11 or rz12 so just check for this parameter in this display mode dir underscore trans what has been defined then you will understand what is the trans directory has been defined over there okay so now what does this trans directory contains so now we will focus more on this uh, uh, black uh, this one uh, highlighted ones so remaining things also important but i will give a brief thing about them so what is this bin directory what is this buffer what is this data what is this cofiles so at least you need to understand uh, data and cofiles part very clearly and then bin it's a simple uh, bin is nothing but in any way in server management or anywhere bin is kind of more like configuration related or uh, buffer sorry sorry param the configuration or the executables or the runtime related things or the envs related stuff will be in the bin directory so just remember like this um, each tp like we have a default profile and then the instance profiles right i mean uh, for aas1 or aas2 additional application servers each application server has its own um, instance profile okay like that transport also has a profile okay so that pfl that we will see in the system tp uh, that naming convention is tp underscore domain name dot pfl okay so this profile will exist on the particular thing so in this profile what you can see like any other instance profile you see the parameters okay here also you see certain things like um timeouts or import related parameters what is my transport route what is my this thing so that configuration pfl will contain those details so we can open one pfl file and we will see today okay so and then buffer so what is this buffer so here you see this buffer directory so buffer is for each system so it contains the suppose there are transports which lies in the queue which are ready to be imported okay which you have not imported but you have just added them in the queue and then which are ready to be imported so those those transports will be available in the buffer so the name itself says buffer which is like the transports which contains the ready to be imported so data files okay so data so this is the important thing mm. sometimes okay let me explain the uh, definition and then we will get into when when it is important to data and cofiles thing data part of the exported transport requests okay for example you have done some change in the development system okay so those changes will be where they have been tracked obviously the changes will go and sit in the database of the development system right so when you export that as a transport okay so those database changes will be calculated or created in a particular data file okay so you can go and check in your landscape also in the data directory you find lot of files with r it starts with r okay that's the naming convention for all the data files it's a standard naming convention so at the end of this uh, ppt we have one slide where i am going to show you this r and uh, data files and cofiles how they look so r stands for the data file it's very important r files all of them 
So the data file contains the actual change or the functionality which you have introduced in that particular or the customizing which you have done in the development system. Okay. And then co-files. So what is this co-files? So this contains the transport request information. You know, what kind of transport type it is? You know, what are the object classes? What are the import required import steps? What are, what it has to do? What are the exit codes it has to generate once the input? It's more like an uh, information or uh, what we call uh, like a structure kind of thing. Okay, this is my transport and these are the object classes in the, it's a definition of that particular thing, uh, a catalog or whatever is it. You call, you call it as a catalog kind of thing, definition of those things. Okay, so that it's just a definition and these profiles starts with the word letter K, capital K. Okay, you can check that. So co-files are very small size. I mean, it's in KBs, but the data files, sometimes they are of size 5 MB two. Uh, I have seen the biggest transport is 1 GB size. That's a huge transport. But in general, your transport request definitely not that much of size. Okay, so it is strongly recommended uh, to have uh, the customizing or these things in chunks or a sequence of transports. So sometimes you may get a request to do uh, follow the exact sequence, 10 transports or 15 transports like that. So that time it is very important you follow the sequence or else you uh, it will lead to a lot of inconsistencies and it starts throwing the dumps in the system. Okay. Okay. Now, for example, if a customer, um, okay, now the next question comes to you. Okay. As a basis guy, uh, Transport directory setup, you understood what all the two things to be done. Number one, uh, uh, first thing you have to consider is the three systems should have access to this transport network uh, requirements and then mount this transport directory in all three. Okay. Number two, okay. How do you, you do the STMS configuration and then it will read it. Sometimes you may get a request, right? So the transport are not developed in this particular development system. Okay, so they have developed in a but some other projects or some other development system within the company. Okay, how do you get those transports to this particular landscape? Okay, so that times what do they do? So that time they will say that hey, I have a system, I have developed in this particular development system. I want all these development to go to this particular landscape, whatever we see here. How do you do that? So as a basis consultant, they ask you to do that. So what do you do? I mean, what do you ask for? First of all, anybody knows how do you get the development? So in this landscape, it's fine. If you develop in a development system, you track them in a transport request and then move it to QAS and then move it to the production. So now the question is the developers do not want to develop here. They already developed already. So they don't want to repeat the same work again. Okay. So somewhere, uh, some other development system, they already developed. And they ask you as a basis consultant, hey, I want all these changes to go to this particular landscape. Okay. So first of thing is you have to bring them to this particular development system, right? So how do you bring them? So bring them to this development and then you import to QAS and production. So anybody knows that is, that is where it is important to understand. So the first thing is you ask them, hey, how many transports are there? Okay. So is it uh, 10, 20, 30, 40? So sometimes uh, they, it is in a huge uh, thing, right? I mean, if, if it is a uh, huge development, if you take SAP as an example, SAP's development is a huge, I mean, within SAP. So because it's a development organization, it's a production company. So they develop, their core is development. For them, there is no production systems, okay? For end users or the customers outside, production is the most critical one. For within SAP, development is the most critical one because they do development. So, yes, that is one, one thing. Okay, uh, If it is a two transports or three transports, what you can do is you can simply get those, uh, ask them for a data file and co-file. You can copy this to the development systems uh, uh, data and co-files directory. So, this is where you have to place the R files in data directory and co-files in the co-files directory or else it gives an error. That's where you have to copy properly to the right directory. Okay, that is one thing. Suppose if it is a huge, I mean, <clears throat> so some 10,000, 20,000 transports. So you think that it is not possible to do that. 
so that approach is different i mean it's like a client copy thing so you ask them that hey you do one thing you put all of them in one particular client in your development system okay from that client in this particular dev system you create one more client here okay so create one more client and do a remote client copy then you get all the customizing whatever they have done here so and then you verify uh, ask them to verify in this development system your coding and everything once this is ready then you can export them as a workbenches or the cross client customizing transports and then you import to the qas and production that is a secondary approach let's keep it aside so when we have this uh, client copy and other stuff so i will get to that thing that is another approach i mean when you have thousands of transports like sap where the development is their core and uh, too many things so that's when you can copy the you can do a remote client copy and then you can do that tweaking here in the development system but in general in the production thing you just have to copy the data file and co-file and put them in the right directory okay so then another thing a log uh the grade one also i'll give a brief thing so this log directory is something uh name itself says so whenever you see some issues with the import or some errors in the configuration you always go to this log directory and look for the files so you get some clue what is the problem so sometimes so it, the rfc connection might not be working and sometimes authorization is missing for this data and co files sometimes it says uh, it says co files missing so it can lead to the you know this all has to be with the sid adm password uh, sometimes it misses the authorization right authorization for when you copy the files okay that kind of errors it will throw in the log directory temp is nothing um, temporary data and uh, log files i mean during the import whatever the logs or the temporary files it generates it keeps in the temp so generally we don't touch this uh, temp directory and as a basis constraint you don't have to check this one eps okay eps is the important directory so anyone knows this directory so this this is important when you are doing the support package upgrades okay so for example ehp1 to ehp2 or ehp or you are upgrading from uh, uh, sp update of this basis component or sap appl or these components one patch to the another patches so you always have to keep those patches in eps directory it's a download directory okay so sap support packages you always keep it over here that is in an advanced level when you are doing these patches okay so sap names just for name sake information belong to the as per sap eps so this is also comes when during the uh, patching okay what are the download packages you have downloaded and those details will be captured in this sap names so the most important directories are the data and co files so which is in a, during the runtime or the importing and bin is important if you want to look into the configuration of how your profiles defined and stuff you can check that now again uh, transport sequence so i mean so there are two things Uh, logically anybody can explain with the whatever we discussed hey you know development you do it and then if this is the logical so development to qas and then qas to the production okay that is fine so but yes you have a transport directory common for all these three systems dev one qas and production so what exactly physically how the transport sequence follows okay when a developer a create uh, customizes or customizations once he changes he tracked under a transport how does it goes to the qas okay that is important so so this is the sequence physical objects three system landscape transport in the following three steps okay so all the objects in a transport that are to be released or exported by being of database okay for example this is a development system okay so they have to be exported and then they have to copy it to the database right whatever the changes you do they will be uh, tracked uh, i mean in any any system once you do the changes then that has to be saved in the database okay so whenever you release the transport in a dev system release okay or uh, when 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 exactly the transport uh, creates the data file and co-files so it's not when you uh, capture the changes in a transport okay so you develop something in the development system you have tracked them under the transport request those changes are written to the database for sure whenever you say that i am good this transport is perfect and then when you release it then it starts creating data file and co-file where does it create in the transport directory okay data file and co-file will be created in the transport directory in the data directory and co-files directory 
okay that happens only when you release the transport okay sometimes they customer you know one of the issues so the developers will say that hey please go and import this transport in the test system okay but you don't see the the moment you try to import it you don't find the transport at all the reason is it doesn't have the data file and profile in the transport receptacle what could be the reason that guy has not released the transport simple so then you have to tell him that boss first you release the transport okay you release the transport it's his, his ownership and if he is confident and there also some approval processes i mean um, who, uh, there are authorizations defined who can approve the transport development lead both mostly so the development project has a developer architect or a chief developer so who will approve the transport verifying the changes whatever they has done because if anybody releases the transport then that causes problem right so that guy has to review whether that particular developer has followed these um, development guidelines or the uh, sap's recommendations and they have tools also to do that okay so those things anyway not part of you but you just have a glimpse of what exactly they do those guys developers so this this so they approve it and then that uh, data and profiles created to the transport directory so now if you want to import to the qas yes this is a shared directory you can add that transport in the qas system i mean in stms and add it to the queue and then you just click on the import and then it gets imported so what happens when you import it so so transport yeah i'll ask you the next question let me let me come to this what happens in when you import you understand in a physically okay import means where does it go and write the change it has to write it in the database right so i am stressing on the part database guys there is one important thing uh, you have to understand after this so it go and writes in the database the change whatever it has happened so that is what happens exactly physically when you import the transport so and then fine so your testing is done so what the testers will do they will test it in the test system okay perfect everything is good then once the uh, testing team approves the transport they will ask you on a predefined timelines to import it in the production system okay transport is the one of the most powerful thing you know you, it can spoil your entire system okay so once you import a transport there is no, no way going back okay the, the override is nothing but i don't know who has answered it override is nothing but they will send the correction okay so they will send the because when you import the change is going to be written to the database okay once it is written to the database you have to manually go there and uh, delete that entry or something then it will lead to uh, complete inconsistency there is no way you can revert it okay so the most important part is transport is not reversible once it is written to the database so they can correct the code i mean they have to do like and manually they have to correct it and they can send the fix in the next transport okay so whatever uh, it has messed up so it uh, they can send a next transport and then they correct it that's it but there is no way that once you import it and you take it back okay and as a basis consultant you may face uh, severe cases in at least in quality so uh, suppose they give you some 20 transports to be imported into the test system okay after import then there is a severe scenario that lot of inconsistencies when i say inconsistencies how do you know that there are inconsistencies so once you import the transport so what is the transport these guys have done some changes right to the correct uh, code okay custom code or the modifications or they have changed the table structure or whatever is it what is going so they change the uh, sap is code so what is what is going to happen when i say inconsistencies in the system system starts throwing dumps i mean st22 okay i'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of the transaction code we will check in the troubleshooting analysis but have this context when i say yeah. system is completely tossed up so st22 it keeps throwing errors like anything tak 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 dumps those are the above dumps so then it says yeah. dbsql error it says syntax error it says so many things okay so which are all related to the corrections you know we can check it in the system later point in time but when your system is completely led to inconsistency that is what i mean so which means your system is not functioning as expected because you have changed the structure of the code or you have changed the abap code and these transports are not proper okay so i've seen one scenario so when i have imported around 150 transport the system led to a completely inconsistent i mean it is unusable it started throwing dumps no matter whatever you execute and the jobs failing sm21 errors so many things so then obviously you 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 are the doctor i said right they will ask you to do something what do you do in such case 
So yes, you they, you have imported a 100 transport to your system. System has led to the completely uh, inconsistent state. What do you do after that? How do you fix it? Yes, basis guy has to fix it here. Okay, and only basis guy can do because developers cannot develop uh, those many corrections, 100, 200 corrections, and send it to them. So which means they realize that okay, test system has completely gone. So now we have to do something to bring it back. So the most basic thing, backup restore. Okay, so that is why. Most important thing, whenever you are importing something, you always have to check for the latest backup. Okay. So these are all the practical scenarios, guys. So they look too much theoretical, but you try to understand these scenarios. They're very, very important. Theory, I can explain you so much, but these cases, how do you approach with common sense is the most important thing. So whenever somebody asks you to import some transport, right? So the first thing as a, cons uh, as a basis consultant, what you have to do is you know that once you import this, this change is going to hit the database and you know that it will spoil the database. So, I mean, it could be that they have tested everything, but as a basis guy, you have to see whether do I have my latest backup in the system, right? So do I have my latest logs available to, to do a point in time recovery in case if the never, never underestimated transport, one single transport can spoil your entire system. Okay. So one single transport, suppose that guy by mistake has put, instead of defining a field name or the column name, if you put a star, right? You don't know that uh, command what he has interpreted. By mistake, if he has put a star, some table and then start uh, star thing. You can't read that 10 pages of code also in that file, in the transport file, you don't understand. So by mistake somewhere, if that guy put a star over there by type or something, it will delete the entire uh, particular tables uh, column, right? That's it. System leads to inconsistent. So I mean, then you you have only one option. Basis guy, please restore the test system, right? Test system back to the previous latest backup, and then you ensure that you do a point in time recovery. So there is an option. So okay, so and so time I have imported this transport exactly to that point time. You can restore it. That we will discuss. How do you do this backup restore and all? But you know this, okay? So transport never. That's why I'm stressing so much on these practical cases. So in most of the cases, systems are screwed because of the transports only. Okay, wrong transports or sometimes by mistake, uh, send a, uh, I will talk to you, transport routes and then the transport layers. By mistake, they divert the traffic from one direction to the another direction and then the accident happens. So that system will go for a toss. Then they have to do a restore and recovery. Okay, so just try to understand. So here, this is the transport sequence. So physical dev qas and then production is the logical sequence what exactly happens is when every time when you export in development system what happens it will copy the changes from your development database to the data file and profile and it creates them in the transport directory when you import in qas it will pick the data file and profile from the qas uh, transport directory because it is common and then it imports when i said import actually what it is doing it is writing it to the database so same thing happens in the production Okay, this is important to understand guys. So what exactly happened when you uh, import it or export it? Okay, good. So that's the sequence for many, because transports you don't do regularly, right? So DBG02, so there are very various reasons. Okay, so DBG02 um, backups, you check the backups, right? Daily monitoring, okay? Whether there is a latest backup is there or not every day. But again, that is a frequency also defined by the customer based on the thing. If it is a development system, they say, you know, alternative days also fine for backup or weekly ones also fine because it's cost saving because backup again, the unit is space and thing. If it is a quality system, uh, weekly twice or daily, some people will define daily also. For production, daily for sure, there should be a daily backup, successful backup for production. Okay. So this is one of the reason because you don't import the transport in a day in and day out, but you will import uh, uh, weekly once or twice to the quality. So this backup can be in multiple scenarios. For example, somebody went to the database and deleted something as a basis guy who has a DB access. That time also, there is only one option. If you delete a table, you have to restore the system, right? For example, um, if there is a hardware failure, okay? So then database doesn't know the status of it and it has led to an inconsistent state, okay? That time also, you may have to restore and recover, okay? Uh, or, and this changes also. For example, in development also, they recommend to have your daily backup because uh, 
suppose if that guy developer is working today on a development and he knows that okay something is bent bad then he has to revert it to the previous day backup so that is why uh, backups are mainly for the uh, restoring the system back to the normal state whatever is the possible scenario what i'm trying to say is but for the transport when you are doing it is important for you to check if there is a backup so sometimes what happens is backups won't run because of uh, network issues or because of the backup configuration or so on so reasons there are you know you, we do see right sometimes we don't see backups are not running for two days or three days so but when you are doing the transport ensure that there is a backup for sure i mean backups forget about whether they are configuring it or for what purpose for multiple purposes backups are defined to restore and recover the systems but when you are doing a transport please ensure that there is a backup so if you are don't have a backup you better wait okay you tell the developers that hey guys i don't have a backup and there is a problem and i am working with so and so backup team and i have raised a ticket it is the same case during the upgrades also okay and another use case is why do you need a backup successful backup during upgrades right when you are doing an sp patching so when you are doing a support package or uh, node implementation node implementation also it is very important yeah node implementation can be reverted you, there is an option to deimplement but transport there is no option but whenever you are doing such activities it is always recommended to have a latest backup okay as a basis guy that is your core uh, this thing what is your task is to bring back this system to the state where i mean anybody can spoil the system functional guy or the developer or tester or whoever it is but as a basis guy you always have to this is one of the roles and responsibility your roles and responsibility as an admin or as a consultant or as an architect when you grow right or an sme so what is your role troubleshooting is fine one aspect and safeguarding the system is your most important task as well safeguarding the system means in this kind of unexpected things so you always have to ensure no matter what these guys do uh, i mean uh, what these guys do in the system you always design the landscape in such a way that you can bring back to this particular moment for example if that guy say that my system has gone into a toss after so and so time so please you have to restore or recover it so as a basis guy you have to uh, you should have already defined an architecture that there is a possibility that you could restore to that particular point in time okay that will be like a backup and restore configurations we will talk in an advanced thing okay how do you configure that what are the scenarios how do you define such an architecture but it is your roles and responsibility okay clear so any questions before i move to the next slide good so next um, transport system so there there are some a few terminologies which you uh, will come across when you are working on this uh, tms or the transport configuration so number one is the transport domain and then you hear about the transport group and then transport domain controller so the system which we, which i have provided also when you when we log into the um, system it will tell you that it is a domain controller and what exactly is it okay so good so a transport domain so here if you see in this screen let me explain you this screenshot this screen okay so i have this transport domain 1 okay and in this i have a transport directory you see the term transport group and then there is a thing called tds tdc sorry which is transport domain controller so these are the three important things which you have to understand okay so tdc let's say dev or test or production and then you have transport domain 2 again here you have a one transport directory and then tdc and then you have a transport group 2 and then transport directory 2 okay so the transport domain is nothing but it contains all the systems sap systems that you plan to manage centrally okay from this particular transport domain uh, you can manage those systems for example you have dev test and quality you can manage from the domain and if you have an other region systems three more systems of the same landscape but they are in a different uh, trans directory or a different thing okay they may have a different trans directory those also can be uh, controlled from the transport domain okay see you take the transport domain 2 example here this explain i have the here transport group 1 transport group 2 or the transport dir1 transport so transport group is nothing but the ones which are sharing the same transport directory simple if i tell you so the all the systems whoever are sharing the same transport directory or belongs to one transport group 
So here you see um, the transport direct DIR one, and then you have transport group one, transport directly to transport. So <clears throat> why I am giving this domain to example is, for example, take an example of um, Asian Paints or whatever company, one customer. So he has systems across the regions. Okay, few systems are in APJ, which is our region. I mean Asia Pacific Japan. Few systems are in uh, Europe. Few systems are in America. Okay, but they all belongs to the same landscape. So they all have the each one has the transport direct different transport directors. Why? I'll tell you the reason. So APJ they have a data center in Singapore. Okay. Um, AMS or America, they have a data center in America. Europe, they have data center in Germany. Okay. So, and it is not recommended or it is not uh, ideal to uh, create a direct, uh, I mean, uh, network. So, what I told when you are configuring a trans, the first requirement is network, right? You should have a common trans directory. Let's say you have uh, three, three systems in each region dev test and production, dev test production in Germany, dev test production in um, wherever America. All of all six are belongs to all nine systems are belongs to the same landscape, but catering to the different region uh, customer, different region factories or customers. Okay, so now the question is, you one configuration you can do is you create one transport directory here here. So the first one, the transport directory, and then you define all of them nine systems you connect to this transport directory. Okay, but what would be the prerequisite? You need to have a common trans directory network allowed. So this transfer NFS or whatever is it to allow in between this. See one data center in Singapore and one in Europe and one in is so your latency will be good. I mean your latency very bad latency. You know latency in the sense, uh, um, you know response times will be higher to copy or to do that thing. And moreover, it is not recommendable. It's a security breach. Okay, from one data center to the another data center, it is not uh, recommended to open connections. I mean share the files or this thing. That is bad. And moreover, if your trans directory, uh, that NFS file has gone, then your entire nine systems are going for a toss, right? So to avoid that, so that is when this uh, transport group configuration comes into picture or the transport directory, is different, different transport directories comes into picture. So what they will do is simply, okay, I have three systems in my APJ. You define a trans directory over here, DIR1. So, okay, APJ, uh, trans APJ, you define one. And then Europe, trans Europe, you define. Run same as all six are fine. So each development system, you ensure that there is a path uh, for these transports to move over there. Uh, you know, via application or RFC connection, whatever it is, you can define such things. So you get them here and then you sync all these uh, three development systems and then you do the transports from those respective trans directories. Okay, that is the best thing. So that is why you have this transport group or the transport directory, this thing to cater such. Uh, uh, big landscapes where you have regional wise data centers and where you have regional wise uh, landscapes which are catering to their respective regions okay so that is where you have to understand this thing but it is very rare i mean only i've seen such things in an sla uh, which is a huge thing uh, they have uh, this regional wise thing and then um, i've seen it in uh, unilever so such kind of complicated transport things okay but in general this three system landscape and then the trans directory is the mostly you see it in your landscapes. Okay. Any questions here before I move to the next slide? So, initialization of the trans TMS. Okay. So, how do I mean what will be the uh, okay? So, you see this uh, triangle, you create a transport domain with the transport domain controller, define systems of the transport domain. So, these are the three things when you start with the TMS. Okay, STMS, the moment if suppose initially, um, for example, you built a development system and first time you executed the transport uh, STMS configuration, it asks. So what it will do first? So it will create the transport domain. Okay, uh, what is the domain which I have to do? And then it creates the domain controller. It will ask you, okay, is this the system is a domain controller? You will define it as a domain controller. So what are the systems? You know, what is my development system? What is your test system? What is your production system? That you have to define here. And then it will define the config, transport routes. Okay. What is my delivery route? What is my consolidation route? I will tell you what is the consolidation route and delivery route. 
and then QA procedure configuration, which means who has to approve. Okay, I told you right. So not all people will have authorization to approve. So only the uh, validated function. So quality assurance approval means it's the developer releasing the transport. Development architects has the authorization. They are the guys who are experts and they will validate for their entire team's development and release it. But in QA also, you have a functional lead who will validate the, the testing lead, who will validate all the changes implemented in the system and then he will approve it for the production. Okay. So these are the three main important things when you are configuring the STMS configuration. Okay. So good. Now the important question, where do you configure this domain controller or uh, this uh, transport group or transport domain? What are the requirements? So domain controller is the one. So the do transport domain controller I've told, right? What is the transport domain control? So it is the one where all the TMS related controlling happens. Okay. So if you want to delete the test system and add a new system, you can do. If you want to change the transport route, you can do. You can want to change anything. You want to change some parameter, you can do. So transport domain controller is the most critical one. So that is where your entire TMS configuration okay is defined over there okay so which system you use as a transport domain controller is it a development system or quality system or production system anyone which system can be used as a domain controller dev or test or production see when i said transport domain controller has the all the tms related control right so adding deletion of the systems and import everything so then it has to be the high available okay and high security precautions and high levels of maintenance these are the two important things it should have okay so then if you take it uh, production could be the best for the domain controller okay so but production nobody uses production systems always have the high availability and high security precautions and a high level of maintenance everything will be there production but no one uses the production as the domain controller because uh, you know it's very risky okay you don't want to do such uh, uh, r and d and then deletion additions and everything from the production you know auditing also there will be a problem because production you always have to go with the approvals and then the change implementations and it, there is too much of complexity to do anything in the production so to avoid that and moreover nobody wants you to touch us or sap directory frequently until unless you are doing a patching and when uh, there is a change request approved and everybody is agrees okay so you don't want to do this kind of things from the production so even though your production is a high available and high security and a very good system a suitable candidate for this one but in general in any landscape development system is the domain control you can check it so you log into your uh, development systems in your uh, landscapes wherever you are working just execute the transaction code stms see here you say it says you are logged into an domain controller at the bottom. Can you see? So this is the transport management system. So this is what I'm talking. So this is the EH8 system. And what is the transport domain? It's domain underscore EH8. So it is the naming convention will be like this. So this you can check it in your respective landscape, wherever you know. So, and if you want to know what all systems it has in this thing, just click on systems. So user profile services my objects or you can check the import overview work list transport organization system overview yeah here you can click for example in this it is a single system landscape i mean there is no other system so if you have a test and production it will show here eh8 and other system and then it will also display the role of that particular system okay so or display transport domain so these things uh, display things you can do in your testing also so this is the domain and short description of this domain and then management let's see and then workflow engine okay so this is the qa uh, workflow engine is like a local domain only it's an automatic user assignment when i was explaining this slide right qa approval procedure so configure transport routes so transport domain domain controller you have different transport domain what you have seen qa procedure configuration means this is what i was referring to so who, who can approve this transport approved by system administration to be approved by department or the, to be approved by the request owner. 
so these are the three people have to approve uh, if you want to take it to the next system okay they always have to approve so this this you can modify or the functional guys or developers will update this approval procedure okay so and then go back so you can do a quick uh, connection display configuration you can do that yeah so you can see the status system is active that green light whenever you see the before also i mean if we just go back yeah so if it says status active this one is the active symbol and then this green whenever you have this which means the system uh, configuration looks good which means the rfc connections and the mount directory the trans directory everything is accessible okay so or you just click on the display configuration Oh, let me select it okay so you see last changed by so for example somebody has changed uh, some program uh, something in this configuration you can see who has changed it sfe start so which means first time when this system was built on 27th august uh, the whoever has built it yes so i was telling you this profile right tp domain uh, profile so like you have instance profile and the default profile so each transport configuration has this profile you can check it in the usr sap slash bin bin directory if you go there you will find or you can see the directories also here so so this is the domain group and the transport group i was telling right this is the group group underscore ehp8 okay so and then rfc addresses and user is the tms idm it's a standard user for all the tms related uh, it will do the uh, it is the user which they use so trans directory dir underscore trans so you don't have to go to the instance directory to see this parameter so you can see here usr sap trans is the this one okay so tp version is nothing but the uh, tp uh, is the program which will do this transport thing so it is the t66 uh, 266 version okay so just you today's exercise also i mean labs also i have given this uh, uh, what we call uh, similar exercise where you go and check the uh, thing i mean these kind of basic things so that you will understand how in your landscapes or in this thing uh, or you just click on transport groups yeah so you have domain underscore ehp and within that you have a group eh as i said there could be multiple groups for each region apj uh, america and europe so that time you have apj underscore eh8 ams underscore eh8 or you are underscore eh8 three transport groups that definitions you can see over there and then go back good so yeah you sometimes if you add or delete the system you can update configuration but don't do this anyway so you can simply do the connection test if you want you can do that see at the bottom it says connection to the system eh8 is okay which means this is able to communicate to this system for example you have a test system and then production system there also you can just simply check it and do a connection test if that connection is not working then there is a problem i mean you have to do uh, something so what rfc connection so it basically so you may ask how does it communicate to the other dever test system right how does it communicates so the simple thing is rfc connections whenever you initialize the uh, tms configuration for the first time it creates an rfc connection to the dev test system and then the production system and that you can see in the sm59 so there that that will take care the dms configuration will take care of it. you see my screen right so these are the uh, tms adm eh8 uh, using the domain eh so this kind of uh, tms uh, uh, rfc connections will be defined to those particular uh, target systems test systems or production system so this also could be a reason sometimes these rfcs doesn't work and there is a problem then you have to click here so it says yeah so log on is 51 milliseconds and this is perfectly working fine okay so okay in real time do you modify this tms adm this rfc connections suppose if it is not working what do you do So there will be other ways to troubleshoot it. Okay. Oh. I'll tell you why. That's why I asked this question. Like any other RFC connections, right? These above connections. 
this test triple zero t nine these connections you can modify always okay i mean those are fine but these connections are automatically created when you do in a tms configuration you got it they are the auto generated uh, stms auto generated uh, uh, rfc connection so the best would be yeah you can try modifying it if it works fine but the best would be you always delete the existing transport domain con transverse configuration and redo the configuration you got it so it will uh, you again uh, so you delete the transport configuration that you can do but you don't do it in any other systems so stms in mostly mostly these things will never uh, fail i mean these rfcs most of the cases that issue you may not get it so most of the times you get issues like uh, data file and co-files do not have authorization or they are not with sid idm and they are corrupted sometimes because when you copy from other landscape to here right they are corrupted so those things happens but we generally do not um, uh, do this uh, i mean touch these rfc connections so never ever try to do something over there that's why i'm saying so other rfc connections fine you can change something and then you can revert it but these rfc connections are auto generated that's why you have to be a little cautious whenever you are touching this tms related stuff okay so anything in this tms is critical guys so this transport routes if you change it that's it gone i mean one instead of one system it the transports will go to the other landscape and hit the other landscape okay so that is the risk we have when we are working with the transports i mean this part tms but the display part you can check it in your landscapes also and try to understand what exactly how it is configured in your respective landscape so sometimes you may get this kind of errors that is when you have to check the rfc communication but i don't think you uh, if this error is, will be very misleading that's why i ask this question whenever this rfc you get such an error what do you do so exactly you check your smicm and stuff Uh, whether the other target systems uh, test system and the production system are they accessible okay so if they are accessible um, then you have to come and check this rfc if the connection test is fine or not or if there is any restriction at the port level or something or um, you can see um, do a telnet quickly to the port of the target system or a ping to the target systems okay if there is any network breakage that you have to do and but this is a very generic error so i mean never ever think that okay because of this rfc connection this is failing sometimes if you don't have the authorization also it will give you the same error okay that is why you have to check multiple things when such a thing when it happens whether it has right authorization this data files and co-files structure has been defined properly there is a program uh, rdd impdp or uh, rstp ins test okay that we will do mm, that we can do uh, testing thing so that will verify the uh, configuration i mean uh, whether your tms configuration is I'll, i'll tell you after this that program rstp test the, the that program okay i will i'll let you know that program so there is one program tomorrow i'll let you know so that program will tell you that uh, the R tms configuration is completely fine yeah tomorrow while doing the recap i will execute that and i will show you that so i mean you can't go to the each section and uh, do this right whether my tms configuration is perfectly or not okay so that is a time consuming so if you run that program so it will tell you that exactly where exactly the problem okay if you, if you, if it is authorization missing it will tell you that authorization is missed and if it has some um, uh, tm uh, rfc connections are not working it will tell you rfc connection not working and if the systems are not defined properly it will tell you the systems not defined i'll i'll show you tomorrow okay that uh, report it's very important very good report as a basis guy you always by heart it somehow i forgot this one or in this system it doesn't exist so i'll try to import that report to this system okay in general whenever somebody is building the system that report will be imported as a post check and during uh, after you do a system copy or system build right there are post checks those reports will come automatically some of the reports okay so now we'll have what all things okay good creating the routes transport routes Mm. so as i said it's like a traffic signals this transport routes so you have dev quality and production so you know there is a development route and then sometimes it's a consolidation route and then delivery routes okay let's understand about development routes okay the development is most important 
as i told you one example right uh, sap kind of company who, whose main uh, uh, landscapes are the development landscape i mean they have this consolidation and test but for them the most critical is the development because they do a lot of changes and product development so in one system they develop and they want to take it to the other development systems okay then they will develop the uh, this particular uh, development uh, road okay so in that particular road all the development systems are de developed so one single development system they do the development and they will pass those changes to the all the development system via a transport route of development route okay and then testing also from all these development systems so you don't have to have 100 uh, test systems define two three test systems and then you define a route to that okay these are my it is like traffic signals my test system and then production also you have a production system which of them have to be so that route has to be defined carefully when the stms is configured then only from so and so system source and target through that route will go to the exact systems what you have defined okay by mistake if you change the route that's it the systems will go and uh, deploy in any another system and that will be problematic okay so that is very important and these routes um, you can modify but never ever do that in any any landscape so it's very very critical okay that will spoil the I mean, wrong transports will go and they will import in a wrong system. Okay, then again you have to restore and revert it. I mean, revert the system. So, can you assume in SAP? Um, okay, let me do one thing. So, this STMS or the import of the transport can we automate or is it uh, okay? You have defined the routes. You have development to other developments defined delivery route and then you have a quality route and then production delivery route. So, can you automate the import of these transports? or you have to do always manually yeah because these concepts are very important yes try to understand so you may work on automated also i have you see sap right sap has a uh, thousands of development systems okay so thousands of development system assume daily in those development system how many transport they create daily so they will generate a minimum 10000 to 50000 transport in a particular day so there will be around 30000 developers working on those development system 30000 developers assume one guy creates one transport also so which means 30000 transports for a day okay can you do these things manually you got it what i'm trying to ask so this transport routes are the very very important and nobody should mess up with them so it is like if you see uh, i mean if you are working on an sap project i mean the tcs i think tcs is vendor for many sap projects so you might have sap system development systems access so you go to a development system and do an stms you go crazy okay there will be so many routes defined you know that yellow line green line red line blue line you name any line so that uh, stms screen itself is like you go crazy so those routes are like uh, veins like blood supply right what we have from the heart so there will be a central development system where the developers develop and these all transports will have to go to the multiple development landscapes okay so 30 to 40000 transports in a day it is not a small amount so if you have to do manually then you have to recruit uh, at least some 5000 basis guys so it is not possible to do manually so they do automatically okay that is where this transport route concept is very critical okay you define the systems what is my source what is my target what is the path this transport have to go that's it you establish it and then you define a, they write a program in the system that you keep going so that's it as soon as they release tak they will come to the so you can schedule also in stms okay as soon as you can schedule and they will schedule the times and they don't schedule everything at one time because uh, again it causes latency and the network problems okay you your system might have a less number of cpu ram and then will go for it also so they will do every one hour two hours three hours the transports will be scheduled so they keep going keep on going keep on going okay but if you take a, so that's why you have to understand both the things if you take a customer landscape okay where customers like nestle bp or asian paints or whatever is it they you don't have these many number of changes for these many transport where the most important thing is in those cases controlling of these transports 
by any chance or by mistake also automatically the transport should not go and hit their production that is what their, their control is most important that is when they ask basis guys to import they don't automate even though there is a scope for automation they don't do it so they want control in every phase okay when a developer gives a transport they want to control in test system validate it and then release it then basis guy will go and import it so they want to have that feel because anyway there will be a, a, some 50 to 100 transport in a quarter so they don't want to take that risk of automation where there is no control and nobody monitors okay hope this is clear for you guys now right so yes you can automate the automate the transports and you can schedule them to import but in within sap i mean as a development organization they have this automated but when you are working in customer projects uh, where they always go with this uh, manual thing okay so now you got the glimpse of how important these transport routes okay where their use cases so creating routes so simply when you click on this you have consolidation and the delivery route so it's just that from which system you are taking and what is the transport layer and the consolidation system to which it has to go and the delivery system also source system delivery system is nothing but a production system okay so you can take this consolidation system as a test system here okay you can assume that so delivery route is just another import route the target is the delivery system for the delivery route it is just a naming convention this i mean source to the production through this route i mean like uh, through this road it will go that is what it is trying to say this explanation okay so transport process so release and export first thing so as i said in a development system as soon as you have uh, uh, Okay, so guys, uh, take a five minutes break quickly. Okay, so then we will uh, reassemble and then I will recap this uh, entire this transport thing. Okay, and also we will uh, try to do the assessment today here itself. Okay, and then I will walk you through the labs. Is that clear, guys? And then we will see and be ready with your laptops. Five to ten minutes break. Okay, be ready with your laptops and the credentials which I ping you, please try to log in. Okay, good. So I just show you one, uh, you know, landscape. I mean, uh, the systems which we, system which we have as uh, you know training purpose is a sandbox uh, IDA system. I mean, it's not possible to create multiple. I mean, it's not possible to create a production kind of environment. That's why you don't see too much of this HTMS thing. So I'll give you. I mean, so that for your understanding purpose, one system uh, where uh, multiple things. Okay, I logged into this particular RDQ PI system. You see domain PIS and it's a domain controller. Follow me, guys. Okay. So if I want to see the systems, right? Systems overview. See so many systems. All of them are green. Okay. Which means all of them are active. So you see system SID is this. And then you see the type TMS system type. You click here, non ABAP system. It's a Java system. That's why I took one PI so that you see development and non sorry, ABAP and non ABAP also. You get a clear picture. So, and then you put a place here, it's a controller. So, which means domain controller. So, and then you see backup domain controller. Mm -hmm. So, in such kind of uh, critical systems, right, where you have an option to uh, create a backup domain controller also, but not many of them do it. So, I mean, in case RDQ or the development system is down, so then the RRQ will act as a domain controller, backup domain controller. It's just that while you are doing a DMS configuration, you just have to tick which system you want to configure as a backup domain controller, you can give another system. So what this guy did is he here, development is the primary domain controller, and test system is the backup domain controller, RRQ. Okay, that's how they define. You got it? So, and then this one, it's a virtual system. What do you mean by the virtual systems? Which means these systems are not at live. So they will come in future. Okay, so they have created the configuration and be ready with the everything. So once these systems are ready, they will go and update the instance number and those details in these systems. Let me not touch it. It's a production landscape. So they will update it and then these virtuals will become the actual systems. Okay. So production systems, they are ready to build. So for now, they have created the uh, virtual. Okay. Just understand that aspect. That should be fine for now. So these are the groups. So here, see, you, he has multiple groups. Group A1Q, Group ABQ, Group RDQ. That's what I saw. That is fine. Each group has its uh, own um, trans directory. Okay. 
so now the another thing is what you have to you is might be interesting for you is the transport routes all right let's test your knowledge here's a question for you which of the following is not a key component of the sap basis system option a database option b operating system option c application server option d web browser take a moment to think and when you're ready choose the correct option remember each choice holds a key to unlocking the answer good luck type the correct answer in the comment section so if you guys understand this one it is very easy guys so development but don't try change anything anywhere just you can see it always so this is the development and via this transport route so they will come to this particular uh, system okay and then 001 client okay from this client to uh, test system this is a test okay uh, they call it as rte uh, some people will call it as an rte i told you right uh, regression testing or qas so rrq is the development rdq is the sandbox it's a five system landscape guys so it's very interesting see this so now if you understand this then you will understand three system easily so it's a sandbox okay rdq so and then you have this uh, no, no no development only development I'm sorry sorry development so it's a development from development to the uh, RTE system. RRQ is the uh, RTE system. Okay. So delivery route. This is a delivery route and it comes to the which client? 001 client. They will come. And from RRQ, they will go to the pre production. You see here, PP means pre production. Pre production UR, pre production AMS. So they have multiple regions. So all go to the 001 client and hit there. Pre production. It's five system landscape. Sandbox is removed from it. But four systems you can see dev, RTE, and then pre production. You see this one, this yellow ones, pre production. And from this pre production, it goes to the production through this 001 client. And these are all virtual targets because they have not yet built these systems. Okay, once they're built and they will replace this one. So this is how your transport routes and then the transport layers looks. Okay. And then the other uh, report I was talking, right? Where you can check the, uh, if you go to the SC38, So how do you assess that my R first thing you have to do whenever there is an TMS related issue, run this report, RSTP test. So this report I executed correctly only in that system, this report doesn't exist over there, but in most of the things it will ex execute. So you see here, it will check TP interface. Everything is tick, 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 tick. So it will tell you where exactly the problem is. This is very important. By heart it or you note it down somewhere. RSTP test is the program, SC38. So it will tell you the transport directory is this, logging everything looks good and then it will also check the transport profile so the path of this is this profile is this version is this everything is green okay and then rfc destination so R see this thing if you want to check it manually you, you assume that at least it takes two hours and you may not may or may not check properly okay always run this report whenever there is an stms or tms related issues okay please very very important report for troubleshooting destination all good tp path good executables path good ping ping everything good tp calls all good so tp test tp connect whatever you are saying that i am I'm, I'm going to check this http smicm all these things so this destinations and connections works fine right so which means everything is fine you don't have to check anything manually so this report is very good and it always has to be green guys okay so good now i have shown you this let me disconnect it from it. so transport process so it is the first thing in dev system you have to developers have to release and then they export whenever they export it the data file and co files release whenever they release the data file and co files creates in the transport directory and those data files and co files will be available for all three systems uh, via their trans directory okay and then import into the quality assurance which you can do manually basis guide and then quality assurance or uh, the functional leads or the quality people will uh, validate the change whether it is proper or not then they will define into the production okay so one important thing guys so i'm not sure if you guys are aware can you make these changes to the production as and when you wish what will be the process so in your projects what process you follow whenever you want to import a transport to the production Sometimes these developers and these test people, right? They will push you. Hey, please go and improve. My lead has approved. My manager has approved. Please go. Import it into production. You know, that pressure will be there. 
but as a basis consultant you know the consequences right any wrong tr goes to the system you have to restore and recover it's a very bad thing so in most of the customer projects guys most of the customer projects there is a change management process okay it is important for you to know this also change management process which means uh, irrespective of whoever approves manager or not those approvals are invalid okay i don't know in your project this change management process is there it will be there so this change management process means so these developers or the testers developers mainly they will explain about these changes you know so and so changes and these are the implications and we have tested in the test system okay and then they will give the justification to the change management team they will approve it there is an approval team okay cr change request so most of the transports whenever you are uh, importing to the systems right there should be a change request okay have you guys heard of this incident service request and change request at least so for a uh, patch upgrades or uh, patch things and all you need a change request right for an uh, installation or something so this transport comes into the change category so never ever do the import of the transport with just an incident or service request okay please validate the process with your uh, whoever has defined these processes right in your projects so it's be better to understand and import rather than in a hurry just import and cause a problem for this okay because these are very very important most of the times these transports goes to the system via change management process okay ensure that you always have an approved change i mean uh, by the respect authorized people then you validate it and then you import it so that after that you are just an executor and you will tell that hey i have gone through this uh, change management process and then i have uh, uh, imported it as per this so and so approvals so you are always safe if you don't follow that and then you just import it and then later people will ask whether have you followed the process or not so that is very important so whenever you are importing into the production you always follow the change management process okay especially for the transports you have to be a little bit careful import and export history yeah in your landscapes you can simply check it it's straight forward so follow the screen stms overview and imports go to history and export history i mean what were the transports uh, um, imported or exported this data you can check it in the system just for your uh, understanding purpose these screens have been created and exploring uh, export in sc01 uh if you just give the transport number then it will give you the details of the transport so it's in a similar way so who is the uh, who, who is the person who has imported it and what what are the details of that change okay and then export it operating system okay this is important i told you right data file always start with the r co file always starts with the k so either you by heart it or whatever is it you know this thing so the moment you see it uh, you have to identify okay it's a co file so co k just remember like that i do that co k so it start with k data file is remaining one is r so that you don't get confused so in data directory these files will be there in co file directory these files will be there okay and then yeah it's an stms tool okay it's simple so rdt imp dp you don't use it uh, i mean it's very rare but uh, no need to do anything over there so only the sme or experts will try to troubleshoot it after that if there is some issue with that okay just know that there is a program rdt dmp dp whenever there is a program uh, import errors or something then we execute this particular report okay so yeah this is to just to let you know that there is automation so there is an option in stms i mean you should not do that we always do it manually even though majority of the people do manually but there is a time and date of the import so we can do that periodically when and what time we can import it this thing okay so these are all for your uh, exercise purpose i mean how do you import it suppose if somebody ask you to import it you just follow this uh, sections okay so import request and select the request so i'll explain here i mean but because we don't have this uh, transport request to import into the system but you note this down this slide number or somewhere in future if somebody asks you to import it you follow this sequence so here you go there and then import so you transport number you give here okay and then target system it's a test system suppose if it is a test system so in this case it is ft3 and as i said target client 001 or uh, this one so start date immediate just see this guy options guys 
just try to understand these things so it's very simple stms import and immediate means uh, if you click on execute it will immediately execute and then i said start date right planning you can do at start time what time you want to start and uh, planned start and no start after and sometimes you want to exclude uh, during the peak hours okay for example uh, apj system so morning 6 am to afternoon to uh, 2:30 am they will be very busy so which means you mention this time and uh, uh, apart from that time you import it anyway so that you can do so after an event hmm, this is also important so sometimes this developers will create an events okay so which means after so and so code corrections have come to the system you proceed with importing so and so things or after completing so and so job in the system you proceed with importing of the system transport that you can do that okay so uh, i mean maybe in certification these questions may come so what are the options where you transports can be imported immediately you can import at start time planned start time and then after an event so after an event many people do not know so just know this as well but uh, very rarely we use it but plan start uh, with sap landscape they use it but uh, immediate is the when you are doing it manually okay so screenshots of the import process yes so here um, when 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 we do this right so it will give you these statuses okay so right hand side this legend i am talking so green status means request awaiting to be imported which means you have to click on the import i mean these are the status as you you find suppose uh, okay so let me put a left hand screen this one is there any zoom option so you see here green green means this is ready to be imported tick mark means so this left this screen i am talking guys so tick mark means it is successfully imported successfully imported successfully imported this transport so what is this truck button whenever there is a truck button which means the transport is running okay whenever something is running don't bother it so you always wait for it to complete okay as we had told you these will go and write in the database and it is very problematic okay so and then what we have hmm so there are other statuses here request must be still approved request was rejected so this kind of symbols so and there is a red button here third button request will not be imported so if you see that thing which means that it cannot be imported then you have to inform to the support i mean inform to the developer so queue controlled mass transports so this uh, this is what something sap follows i mean when they have 10000 uh, 3000 transports 30000 transports to be gone and then single transports and one by one we do workflow controlled is set by default is set by the our stms these are the strategies what people will follow this one tp program rstp test okay or in the discussion i will do rstp test in your landscapes you can execute this rstp test this is the program sc38 sc38 c38 go there and then execute that particular program so the, oh sorry okay so i have showed you right in the existing landscape so it will check many things so your transport directory and your r3 trans is working fine or not so your uh, rfc connections working fine or not and then web communication so you don't have to and your profiles are defined correctly or not and operating system level you do you, if you have the right permissions or not so this is a tp program so what we are doing is rs tp tp is the program transport control program and then we are testing that is the report okay so that will take care of your entire rf uh, tms configurations check so it's very important so you will definitely have questions on uh, uh, abap uh, sorry netweaver certification if you go for it they will ask you what is the program you you, you used to check for the trans uh, entire tms configuration rstp test okay or tp program you have to transport control program is the program you which you use okay mm. and it checks for buffer also mm. then uh, release and export calls tp a web command good why change and transport system i mean uh, let's try to make the sessions from uh, 
today and tomorrow onwards more interactive guys so try to be isolate yourself and then um, have your phones or whatever is it unmute and ask and there's no point there's no good question or bad question so you please free to ask any question so in terms of the basis it could be technical or non technical then i'll try to solve it because it's very important in this 40 hours you know after this you should feel confident about approaching sap okay or you read or go through it uh, in the right direction so that you you frame your career in basis domain and then you will become an sme or architect okay so that you don't want to uh, go in the version of this sap projects and then you will get lost okay so so far what we discussed before i move to the non uh, uh, non avap transports anybody so all of you are comfortable with these uh, terms at least i mean where to check what to check and stuff so you can build on top of it overview and then now you got a glimpse of it then you read anything you will understand you go to google or help.sap.com or anywhere then you will connect it and the, uh, you go to your systems in your own landscapes in your projects open development system it's not risky also i mean you are not logging in production go to your development system and see what is your tms configuration how it is defined can you see those directories what i have said in os level if you have os level access okay open the tp profile just do some one hour of uh, exercise you know so that next time when there is an issue with uh, uh, tms then you will be the pakka you will solve it i am damn sure of it okay but for today after this you go through these things and then tomorrow you come up with uh, some questions on it okay so the so far what we have discussed okay are all adapt related okay transports so these transports everything is developed in the avap avap system and then they were captured in a transport and that transport is uh, we are taking it to the uh, production i told you netweaver platform right so it has a capability for non avap as well right so and you have java systems also java runtime okay how do you manage uh, i mean we don't have any such systems now because we do see very rarely this kind of uh, configuration but theoretically i will cover you so that if you find a system then you get some background of it okay so there is a cts change and transport management system okay so sap has enhanced the existing transport system for the non abap objects okay so non abap objects can be attached to a transport orders so in portal use case deployment takes place using a step um, to be different no good so what happens is these non abap uh, transports in a particular order they will arrange it and then they will give us the files to deploy okay there is a specific deployment option in nwa so you have to log into the nwa and then we uh, we have an option to import those uh, transport those xi objects or jtv developments okay or sometimes they will give the uh, deployment files okay so either you use this cts plus or we will also do a telnet you know the customizations or that is deployment files okay i don't know if you heard of telnet so with that also we can do that so this change and transport system is cts is uh, enhanced version of the transport thing which can enable or which has the capability to import abap or sorry non abap j2e development or the xi object transports so this is the tricky part so here you need a java stack and an abap stack if you want and then here also most of the concepts are similar you have a domain controller you have uh, if i find any java system where this uh, cts is configured so if i show you that then you will understand it all right let's test your knowledge here's a question for you which of the following is a key task of an sap basis administrator option a developing new abap programs option b designing user interfaces option c managing system backups and restores option d implementing business logic take a moment to think and when you're ready choose the correct option remember each choice holds a key to unlocking the answer good luck type the correct answer in the comment section hey there ready to dive into the world of sap basis our course is here to guide you through it step by step In this course you'll learn all about SAP basis. It's like a tool shed for managing stuff 
from making sure we have enough resources to get them where they need to go. Our course covers everything you need to know, from the basics to advanced tips and tricks. It's created by experts who really know their stuff. Your instructors are seasoned pros who've been in the game for ages. They're here to help you learn and answer any questions you have. And guess what? Our students absolutely love the course. Folks just like you have found it incredibly helpful. The best part? It's budget friendly. This amazing opportunity to learn won't break the bank. Ready to become SAP Basis Pro? Sign up on our page now. For more info, head over to Zarin Tech's website. Stay tuned for more updates. This is also an important topic. Uh, users, user groups, authorizations, roles, profiles, you know, uh, many things. So uh, this, it's a very uh, important topic. You, even though you may feel it, it's like a security topic, but still it's very relevant for the basis guys. Okay. So nowadays, if you see SAP, uh, they are not no longer separating security and basis uh, separately. So earlier, we used to have a security team, separate team who takes care of these users, authorizations and stuff, and basis separate. Okay. But uh, if you see last three or four years uh, onwards, there is no separation of uh, basis and uh, security. And it's, they both club together and they expect everybody to comfortable with this kind of authorization concept. And moreover, it's very important for you. Uh, some of the uh, users, you know, like uh, uh, for the background jobs or the admin users and something, you need to understand what it is actually. So that's why this is also very uh, theoretically and practically in both ways. This is very important. Uh, you know, we do some hands on today. Uh, creation of these users. I know you may feel very comfortable and you may feel easy. But still, uh, I would uh, encourage or request you to do, do that exercise because it is very important to have you a clear understanding of these concepts. Okay. And the con definitions which I've put it over here are also from the SAP book. The purpose is, I mean, at least if you go through this uh, entire content of 40 hours which I've prepared, so you may be, uh, it is easy for you to prepare for the certification. Yeah. At least I can assure you 50%. Okay. Remaining things, as I said, it's a 3,700 uh, page each book contains. Okay. So each book has the 700 pages. It takes a lot of time for you to read. But in this 40 hours, I will try to cover the uh, screens where you get the questions and where I, the important topics. Okay. These screens exact replica and the content is also same, exact same from the SAP books. Okay. That is why you just try to read this content or whenever I'm trying to explain, I will put these uh, explanations or the definitions in a clean way so that you don't have a different because you have seen the questions how tricky they are. Okay. And it's not also, it's also not about the questions. It's also about the correct using the current correct terminology when you are presenting to somebody or when you are talking to your client as a basis admin, you should have a clear understanding of the uh, concept and the definition of it. Okay. So let's start with the user administration and fundamentals. So when we say user administration, okay. So let's, let's check the diagram first. Okay. So what all users you can think of? Yeah. Can, can, can you please tell me? What all users you can you came across so far? Have you so some of you have already logged into the SAP system, right? So what SAP users you are using in your day-to-day -day work? So okay, these are the um, application users or the front-end users. Oh, sorry, front-end users. So what? So it's a three-tier architecture, right? I said. Okay. So I mean, what users you are talking about is the SAP GUI or where you do on the front-end. So what about the application server users? Have you ever logged into the server? So in the login, uh, so which user you mostly use on the server to do any admin activities on the uh, server? That is one user. Obviously, that's the most powerful user. So where you do the entire, so root is there. It's very powerful. You can create an SID IDM user. So all the application administration happens with the SID IDM. Okay. So good. So on the server level and the database, have you heard of the database users? Any any okay. database user you logged in? Or SID. Exactly. Okay. One user. 
boris id and have you heard of the schema user so and then you have this system user so that is again for the system admin okay good so so you have some understanding of these uh, users so let me elaborate so sap gui which is front end users okay so who are all these guys front end users so the guys like developers testers and you as admins and then end users okay so there are many users we call them let's put it as sap users okay so let's take that as a front end users all of them and then you have the operating system users so operating system is uh, only you as a basis consultant have the access okay so no one else will have that server access so that is where i i told in the initial days that all three layers in a three tier architecture a basis guy have the complete picture so that is why there is no limit for you to learn i mean you can learn anything and you can become an sme in any of these areas okay from the application side or the this one so in the server side yes sid adm is the most powerful user and along with that there are some other users okay for example administrator user in java case okay where you do the uh, uh, patching and stuff and then the other uh, user is like uh, daa agent daa user i mean or the sole man related okay so if you want to do the uh, fetching of the server uh, daa adm they call okay but currently they call uh, daa adm earlier we used to call them as smd adm okay so that has been uh, gone now we call daa adm so which will collect the data from your server through host control and it will pass it to the solution manager system which solution manager is nothing but if you don't know it's a monitoring system i mean mainly you use the solution manager to do the diagnosis of the problems or the root cause analysis and to fetch the data how the system is performing how it is performance so to provide such a data to the um, uh who is uh, the solution manager there is a different uh, agent which we installs with the da adm so once after this we will see in the system how many system users uh we have configured or you can just go to the uh, server and give a more slash etc uh password passwd you can see the users what are listed over here application server users but for you it is important to understand only the uh, sid adm okay and it's uh, how capable it is okay and then database server so in the database layer you have uh, so many db users but as a basis admin for you the most important one is the system user i don't know if you ever logged into so hana studio and then uh, this um, mainly in hana so system user is the one of the powerful user so with which you can stop the system db db i mean to say you can stop the db you can take a backup of the system you can look at the logs you can change parameters for example uh, hana parameters from um, memory increment or decrement or uh, tuning those uh, ini files you know where you have to change the backup directory structure etc so those parameters change backups and then stopping and starting so you can do with this system user in database server so along with the system user there are so many other users as well for example schema schema user is the most powerful user in database so don't try to log in with that i mean if you have a system access use system user but avoid schema so schema is the uh, more powerful than system okay so you can completely wipe out the entire database using the schema okay schema user is something which will write the uh, data or the um, to the tables okay so you may say that i have 100 users okay i mean uh, front end okay and then those requests comes to the application server and application server basically processes those sorry process those requests so do, does it mean that all these 100 users whoever logs into the sap gui will go and uh, Uh, right in the database no so all these processes i mean all these users request will be handled by the work process dialog background update and so on so on. so only one at one user will write it to the database that is schema okay that's why i say don't uh, so i mean these all 100 200 users who are doing the application logic will not go and uh, sit in uh, right on the database so all their request will be collected 
by this work process work process from work process that data one particular user you know schema or in different databases different users are there i will talk when we have this database concepts in day 12 or day 13 i will give you a clear picture of what is that user and how it is going to pick the data from these work process and then write it to the database that i'll explain all that. but here what you need to understand is not all the front end users 100 or 200 will go and access the database okay so from application that work process will cater the service to these users that's it so as an end user he will the work process will take care of his work and one user collects all this information and writes it to the database okay uh, concept of these users okay now let's try to exactly meaning of this user okay the term user usually means user id what is the user id uh, user id means the id which i have provided you tcs user 1 tcs user 2 tcs user 3 like that so up to you if we have 12 users so usually means that particular user id so people log on to the operating system or a database or sap system using a user or password combination obviously you need to have a user and password combination okay so as i said operating systems uh, which is operating system users i mean sid adm and uh, then da adm and these users have a different authorization concept okay databases also has a different authorization concept for example schema system and then backup users also there and there are uh, different in a hana if you see there are 30 to 40 schema users i mean whoever is working on that particular uh, domain they create one particular schema and they, they will put all the tables under the, this thing and there is an xsa admin so in database xsa admin means the guys so the developers can directly access the database so without coming from the sap gui so in hana as i said it's a platform and sometimes the developers hana developers may need access to the hana database directly without going through the application because they develop uh, some functionalities on the hana a platform for example re reporting or models preparation and so on so things okay so at that time they directly access to the database using the uh, that particular user whatever is again so what you need to understand here is so the front end users which goes through sap gui and the operating system users uh, which uh, sid adm and the database users so they all have a different authorization concepts okay so the front end users has this um, you know tcs user one if you go roles and authorizations are different and then the sid adm has a different authorization concept at os level that is okay that concept and how do you put uh, permissions and what authorizations you have to give there that is more relevant to the operating system like seven seven triple seven permissions or seven five five i will show you okay those those authorization concepts even for the db also it is different so db also what is this read access write access or update access i mean if i have to put it in a simple thing so in database what all things people can do you know three mainly three things right either you read with a select query okay some people uh, some users suppose you are fetching the data from the hana database and then you are preparing some reports in a third party application so that time i don't have, i don't want to give you the complete update and uh, write access right so that time you just give them the read access so he will do some select commands on the hana and then he will fetch the data and his application populates the reports third party applications so that way that authorization concept is a little different and then write so some guys uh, will keep pushing the data from their mobile or uh, you know some application where people more uh, like media so where they will snap or they will track something and immediately they want to put it in the database so that it will be available for everybody okay such cases only write access is more relevant for them so like that so very uh, so all these three layers have a different authorization com concept okay so as i said if uh, the the third one if a user or password combination is created in a sap system so this does not mean that you can possibly log into the operating system right with that user and password combination i told you all the thousands of end users or the users who are in the front end gui are not logged into the application server or server level or database level because that has a different user and different combination of users and passwords it is possible that identical uh, user i mean so same user like tms adm i sid adm user i can provide in the front end also i can provide in the application server that is possible it's a minor comment that's what definition purpose so 
we got it all three layers have different authorization concepts or the different uh, way of handling the user request so as i said the user requests are processed by the work process that is what uh, here mentioned user requests are sap work process these work process all use a common user so that's what i mentioned right not all these users go and hit the database common user to access the database now the next important question okay now for this topic so let's remove the uh, uh, for now uh, application server and database so we we are not covering the the uh, uh, bottom two layers okay so in this today's class we are only talking about the the front end or the sap gui through which you log in so this application server related ones when we have this os concepts operating system concept that time i will explain you in detail what all the users how the directory structures and what permissions you have to set and how the authorizations you can uh, segregate there and same when we are talking about sybase database or the hana database i will explain you in detail the user authorization or user management concepts over there so for now today's class so you just understand the basic concept of this uh, user administration and then we will focus only on the front first part front end okay now you may ask the question so in a, any system you have a uh, clients right i mean triple uh, zero client and then you have a 001 production client and client numbers varies from client, customer to customer 001 002 003 or 100 200 or 800 client which you are logging in right so different different clients you have in a system okay so again what is client and how these clients are segregated i mean how which client to use and what are those roles and responsibilities of that particular client so i will explain you i think in day 5 or day 6 we have a session a dedicated session on the client okay for example now to try to understand that we have only 800 client in our test demo system which we have given you so that is the production client just imagine like that it's a production client i mean where you work triple zero is the admin client so just know that so only the admin related works you can do from the triple zero for example license installations and then yesterday tms configuration which we did right so those things you always do from the triple zero okay you don't do it from the front. so client dependent means so the users what you create i mean tcs user 1 tcs user 2 tcs user 3 you can try so i create you, you try to log into the triple zero you see if it works or not has anybody tried see i am logging into the client so i created all your users tcs user 1 or tcs user 2 in the 800 client suppose let's suppose i change it to triple zero and then i use my user est user 1 i mean this is the one so if i try to log in it doesn't work client name or password wrong so what i'm trying to say here is so all the uh, these users what you create in the front end are client dependent okay so if you create them in triple zero they work in triple zero only if you create them in 100 they work in 100 only okay so that is very much very very important uh, thing uh, i mean for your practical purpose and this one so the entire front end user concepts okay they are all client dependent okay so in one uh, in one client you created the users and you created the authorization concept roles profile etc and you cannot expect them to work in the other client okay i mean uh, the 800 client in triple zero or something okay so but you may ask a question so hey i have a three clients okay you have a three three clients in a system for example in this system we only have 800 let's suppose you have one more client 900 client so i you have done an excellent uh, work i mean the clients roles every roles or users everything you created in this particular client and you want to take them to the other client 900 so do you have to redo the whole thing i mean in 900 or how do you take this thing how do you take the configuration or the roles which you have created in the uh, 800 client to the other client you can do a client copy to the new client uh, that also we will explain over there but just to get a glimpse so i mean i am trying to say these users and these concepts are client dependent and only in that particular kind you will be able to uh, log into that and if you want to take it to the other clients or copy you do a client copy or you have an another possibility you know that is also important you can record these roles in a transports and you can import it to the other system or you can make this uh, sometimes you can have an option to make them uh, uh, cross client customizing okay which means for all clients those roles are something uh, those roles or profiles will be available for all the clients 
but users you have to create in each client it depends on your use case or you do a client copy with a, there is an option where you copy only user master data okay i mean users and then this part clear now with this slide what you understand uh, front end application and database users are there and our focus is more on the front end users okay so this front end users are the client dependent okay that is the most important thing you have to do all the user request what comes to the system i mean you log in with pcs user right so that will be processed by the dialogue uh, i mean work work process based on your request if it is a background request it background process will take care update update will take care and then spool printing spool will take care like that i have created you a particular user okay tcs user 1 so how do you put uh, the protection methods how do you put a protection whether uh, um, whether that particular person okay the tcs user will be able to do the action or not okay so let's take this example you have user master record so user master record nothing but if you go to the su01 i will show you after this one i will explain you so if you go to the su01 and you give the user name then you will find multiple tabs that is the user master record i will show you or mm -hmm. let me let me explain you this user master record first and then we will get back to the uh, the previous slide users and authorizations so then you will be you can easily correlate to the what i'm going to explain so let's do a display of this user okay so this is the user master record so this is last changed by the navin for this user my user on 6th of so and so so here you see uh, documentation and then address logon data so and then snc defaults parameters what parameters so i will explain you in details what all these things roles profiles groups personalization and license data so this is the user master record okay for this particular user you get the entire details of this particular user who is he what is going to do in your system okay so now minimizing option why is it appearing all okay good so this is what i was explaining so you see user master record on good so these are the sections i have shown you right in su01 address logon data snc defaults parameters groups personalization license data profiles roles and so on so things now let's see the each and every one's definition what are these things so address so address it's a you know the name itself will tell that what what does it contains address data so logon data so password and validity so i mentioned some of these notes also i mean if you want to get a clear understanding of more details of how this um, logon data and the rules and regulations what passwords to be used and how you can configuration that you will be in the logon data and validity of the user from how long to how long that details will be available and then snc this is important thing guys secure network communications so this is used to uh, do an uh, snc this is what i am referring to this section okay so see snc is not active on this application servers unsecured is logon is permitted for specific users so if you enable this one so there is a parameter called snc slash enable you just check it in the system uh, or you see it uh, let's say that snc okay see this parameter snc enable so this parameter i'm talking so this parameter is zero which means this has not been set in this system that is what the su01 is telling okay so as a basis consultant this is important for you uh, snc configurations you will get it day in and day out okay so snc is not active on this uh, server because snc parameter is disabled and so this snc name okay so secure network communication if they define you the snc uh, particular uh, there is there will be one string they will give you okay when you are configuring the snc you will understand they, there is a string you have to generate so that string you have to place it over here and snc parameter has to be enabled and this snc configuration needs a restart why because you are changing the parameter snc enable parameter from 0 to 1 you have to set 
So first you have to set that parameter and then you have to copy some crypto files. So there is a procedure uh, I have given in the note. So where it explains what exactly you have to do if there is an SMC needs to be configured. So most of the customers will configure this because it's a sandbox, it's a test system. So you don't have this configured, but most of the customers will configure it and they will provide you the SMC string, what has to be configured over there. So that only those particular people will be able to access through single sign-on. So I think you might have heard single sign-on, anybody using in your project, single sign-on, SSO. I mean, without user and password, you log into the system, SAP system. Have you tried? What I'm telling you is, uh, for example, uh, we are logging into the system using my TCS user one, TCS user two, right? So you don't have to give the password again and again. So the moment um, you are uh, you are with the company laptop, so obviously your company will give you the laptop, not to the client client laptop, or from the client WTS or client network. They all has to be in the one network. Client network, there is a single sign on configuration just to avoid this uh, password uh, giving password, and or else there is a problem. You know you can say your user to anybody, right? For example, the user I gave you TCS user one. You can give it to your friends or you can give it to somebody else or somebody can hack that user id and password somebody can so for example i gave you only sap123 i mean if you set such a loose password somebody can try it and then log into the system okay so i mean i'm elaborating the use cases also in snc because it's very important for you i mean remaining things are very straightforward explanations so anybody can log into the system right so with that user id and password or you can share or I mean, they can guess the password and log in. So that's a high risk for the customer. So once you log into the system, then you can do anything. I mean, of course, there is an authorization concepts and okay, I can, I'll tell you how that will be also restricted. But yeah, he can do certain things at least, whatever he has the authorization. So to avoid that, what the companies will do or the clients or the customers will do is in their systems, they will enable this SNC. So which means single sign-on they configure. So there is a certificate that certificate is installed in the uh, your laptop i mean their laptop and that laptop is issued by the company so which means that sap system access is possible only from that particular sap laptop or from a remote desktop for example you use for some customers you log into the remote desktop right windows so from there only the servers are accessible if you come out they will not be accessible so in that particular remote desktop or in that particular laptop they will uh, configure the, uh, they will configure that okay this is my certificate and check for this certificate in that particular laptop and in system also that certificate will be available and they will, both will do a handshake oh this guy using this string okay this guy matches to my this thing fine let me allow him fine so you don't have to give any user id password just click on the system in sap gui it will take you to the system and then the, it will give you the authorization as per the roles and profiles whatever given so okay, now you understood snc so SNC is a secure network communication. So if you want to configure SSO or for example, if you want to establish a communication bit from system A to system B, okay, instead of using the user ID and password, you can also use this to communicate using the secure connection. So some older versions, this SNC tab doesn't appear. Okay, don't worry about it. So for more information using the security network products, you you know you can always check this particular note, 666687. So up to date, this will give you the latest security information on this one. So defaults, uh, there is a section called defaults, right? So defaults is nothing but uh, some of the default sections. Suppose uh, you as an user, TCS user one, if you give a print, right? Uh, print you always want to I mean you are printing an invoice so you may think that why would I need that print always go in a A4, A4 size right but so if you are a customer use you are doing a petrol bunk and then you are giving a receipt right so that receipt has a standard format I mean uh, you know some uh, two centimeters by two centimeters or some standard format so those defaults you can define here okay so when that particular user gives a print and then it always goes and in the language also for example so that's why this flexibility in SAP system. That's why they are very much successful guys. So it, see, it's such a simple, for example, in India, I'm in an under, I mean, Bangalore. So it's simple and the receipt, you can just, uh, for this user, you select Bangalore user. Okay. You always give the print with that Bangalore user. You set the defaults like, okay, this is the printer and this is the long language. I mean, Canada language or whatever is it, but here it's a country wise. So, and then 
simple so whenever from that user bangalore if you print it it will print in kannada language only so that is it it's like that so that flexibility is there so that is the defaults okay so and then the parameters there is a section called parameters you see in the middle here so user specific fields for this sap system so there are certain things um, i mean you can set that particular user uh, you know maximum uh, you need to have uh, minimum in these many digits or uh, um you now this user should be able to do it i will i will fetch you some use case when we are doing the exercise i will do one thing so there you can for this particular user you can set those values okay you can give the extra kind of authentication kind of thing using this uh, setting uh, i mean a functionality it's not an authentication so you can give some uh, more uh, lenience for this particular guys uh, by giving this parameters values so roles you know this roles so it is just that what authorization this particular person has it and then with which you can log and then profiles profiles is nothing but a combination of uh, these roles i mean uh, they will create it as a profile uh, sap all sap all is the most powerful profile uh, all sap system authorizations you have so that you also have it and then groups is like um, yeah groups i will explain after this slide there is a slide where we talk about this uh, groups thing okay and then personalization so personalization is nothing but um, when you log into the system right i mean at the moment you see uh, so this particular thing so easy access menu see as a basis admin or a basis consultant you are comfortable with the transaction ports because it's your day to day life like st22 sm66 sm54 so these transactions you will remember it i mean whether you like it or not because you do it in day in and day out so you remember it but this has to be monitored or the administrator i mean work uh, who will work on this system so at the end of the day the factories or the end users right the human resource people or the employees end users basically the petrol bank whoever is giving the receipt or the in from um, account sections so these people are using this thing so for them if you ask them you know remember this transaction code they go crazy okay for them it just go and they click on this and then they do this so this is called the personalization or you can put it as a favorites so you know so if you do that personalization developers will do that personalization so for this accounting guys so for example for a uh, material related thing manufacturing related personalization if you give it to the accounting guy he will go crazy so that's why developers according to the uh, manufacturing or the industry they are working so they will do the personalization of the uh, user screens i mean giving a more web uh, web web related stuff over here or something okay so that kind of personalization only the developers can be able to do that okay so in some transactions see personal settings are required which have effect on the appearance so it is more of like an appearance if i have to put it in a word okay so that is the personalization like you know uh, in our desktop right once you log into the laptop you can change your screen right i mean log on screen and you can arrange the folders in the way you like it and some products will give you the thing um, i mean how to change the color of those folders also okay so this is a kind of personalization so this is decided by the as i said the developer okay decides whether when the personalization functions are available or not so there is no special customizing switches or anything which you have to do so that de developers will provide you facilitate you whether you can change the personalization or not for example logging into the sap gui you have a lot of themes right i explained you so quads theme or the sap signature theme or web gui theme is different like that so we know they will put you very limited options in sap but it will be suitable for the particular uh, user so that personalization if it is available in the system you can always assign to that user so that he can see the appearance his appearance will appear so for example if there are contractors where you have to define their uh, license related stuff because uh, i mean you may think that in my organization how do i need to know but you know you just think of the organization so sap as i said they are a very very big industries right you need to control so who are the licensed people and whether the user who has created is licensed or not that license data will be displayed in the license data so you see here so contractual user type so what kind of a contractual user type and that thing you can define over here this is the user master record so the name itself says for this user 
so est user one this is the complete data so what this guy is who he is and what authorizations he has and what personalizations he has and how he licensed he is this entire thing is called the user master record okay now let me go back to the slide fine so you have created a user okay now let me put it. you have created a user so how do in what layers i mean how many levels you can check the uh, authorization i mean uh, restrict the authorization you see here so this is a user master record for one user user master record just now i explained nothing but the user id and what all the data available in the system and then you have a user master record thing so two levels of protection or the uh, you can establish number one first of all whether the transaction has to be called or not okay so if you execute the uh, let's say sm66 so you know all of you this transaction code right so i call this sm66 so it will show you the all the work process in all the instances in the system okay so you see many of them are waiting fine so now one layer of production whether i, I can call the transaction so first day somebody complained i am not able i am not able to execute these transactions it is giving an error for me right that is the first level so you can block the entire access to that transaction number 2 so second level is okay you can log into the you can access the transaction but you will not be able to do anything okay so changing or the updating or uh, suppose if you want to delete this particular row so that thing is not possible that is the second layer of pro protection so may a transaction called yes so if it if it is called authorization for actions and data during the transaction that is the second level of protection so here in this diagram explains so let's do this thing okay let me put it in big screen so when okay as i said first of all allowing the transaction and the second option whether he can execute the particular uh, i mean whether he can read the data or if he can work anything on that is the another important thing okay so now once he logs in so first thing authorization checks so this has to be done so please try to understand guys so this this is easy topic but it is uh, important to have a clear picture um, so a user comes to the system so two levels of this thing transaction permitted or number one it checks as i said if it is not permitted it will directly throw you an error i will tell you if it gives such an error how do you troubleshoot i mean what roles what authorizations you have to assign okay you don't have to assign sap all to everybody so there is a transaction called su53 immediately in that memory it is stored that i will explain you later so you will know that which authorization is missing for the transaction then immediately what you can do is you can assign that transaction to you okay or we can create a user and we can try that so authorization is assigned and then to do the uh, read the data or to change anything whether the right authorization is assigned or not that is important so these are the two checks authorization checks it will do so then um examples of uh, objects which are requiring so these are the just authorization checks which will do when when a user try to do so customer master record or the user master record so these are very very important things i mean you should you don't want to give this access to anybody okay so which needs more protection example so for example if you have an sap all access you can do anything i mean you can delete my user i can delete you user and you can delete my user so that you don't you want to restrict only to the basis guys or the admins that authorization i mean modifying the user master record which i mean the user ids and then the customer master record also customer data customer data i mean with what all factories i have and uh, how many regions it has there so such data you don't want to give access to anybody and then lock entries also so lock entries if you delete then it will lead, lead to an inconsistency and then the company code company data in the system so these are the very very important aspects i mean uh, where you need lot of protection and uh, maybe in the sap internal systems and sap systems you may not find such an critical level of authentication but in customers this authorizations are very very important okay i mean you you cannot simply give an sap all uh, access to anybody okay so it is very very risky okay so before i move to this dialog uh, sorry now we'll go to the user types okay so to add here how important is 
to give the right authorizations and the segregation of these users so you may think very silly or simple hey just a user you know just create it and give it but this is very very powerful i'll tell you one example that i was working in one of the client uh, bp british petroleum it's a very big client okay so what happened one guy by mistake has assigned sap all to one user okay that user did not do anything just assigned okay he just assigned i mean he did not touch the data he did not do it by mistake it happened i mean he is a basis guy happened so but after a day somebody got to know i mean i will tell you how they got to know they have a mechanisms how they get to know when there is an sap all is allocated to any user then uh, they will get to know okay i mean there will be a mechanism in the customer projects i mean immediately as soon as sap all is assigned it triggers a mail or up to your ceo of the company okay so it escalates to the managers 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 you send a mail hey so and so user has been allocated sap all access okay so it's very very critical i'll tell you so the he has assigned one uh, sap all access that's it the whole project or the almost 50 to 60 people got fired because of that action you may think it's a simple a simple sap all access and then immediately he removed it you may think it's such an easy way one minute task oh he assigned by mistake and then he removed it that's it but and and he didn't do anything in the system so but why why such a serious action can anybody explain why it is a very very serious offense assigning a wrong a wrong role or a powerful authorization to a particular user whether you do it or not right every sap system has a legal auditing contract okay every production system that's why i said there is a change management process you have to be very very careful when you are saying so why i am telling you this example is you are the basis guys you have a very powerful access so with the powerful access and uh, you will have a powerful uh, this thing powerful responsibility okay so don't ever ever you know by silly or by you know it's just a simple thing don't ever ever do nothing is silly in basis simple try to understand that i'll tell you why why that is a serious offense so it's a production system number one in production system there is a socks auditing auditing means so every day or every alternate days there is a report runs okay what are the authorization and that will go to the government not to you not to me so the company british petroleum you see your tt tcs also tata uh, steel whoever is implementing the sap products right sap implementation erp system for the productive they have to go through the auditing and they have to represent to the legal courts okay stating that our systems are compliant and we are not doing anything illegal why satyam satyam computers went uh, bankrupt okay why is satyam computer ceo got arrested okay you heard right financial fraud how do they do the financial fraud they log into the system and they change the data simple i said one zero you add one more zero so your revenue is 1 lakh per day and you just add one more you your revenue increases to 10 lakh so in the share market your revenue is growing so then people invest then you are frauding the people right so that's why every production system has to go through an auditing i mean socks auditing there are companies to do that auditing i'm tell you kpmg ey pwc there are companies who will do the auditing in these sap systems okay there are protocols they will follow and they have to present to the government that my sap system or how do you trust a banking hdfc and infosys you know they can any time delete the data and tell that hey, your data is not there you have not deposited how they are compliant so this is the thing so this is we are talking about the matter of money so fine you did not do anything but i see you legal you have put an sap all i don't know what you did but your system is non compliant which means something is happening in your system you have assigned sap all because that user has a very powerful i mean he can do anything in the system you may tweak the data here and there but i can't do the whole check up of your system but you have violated the government norm or the government policy and the bp will get penalized for that some uh, million euros okay because there is a it's a simple one minute task where each guy just assigned and then deleted that role but it was caught in the auditing by a third party i mean those third party is also recruited by in some countries government or in some countries before the government knows the company only recruits dedicated guys okay because if it goes to the government then it's like a reputational impact 
you just imagine hey in bp somebody modified the data that's it their share market will collapse i mean these are the very very silly things so that i'm giving you the very important practical the importance of this authorization so by mistake or by any chance never ever give the giving less authorization is always better than the uh, you know getting delayed or whatever it is than giving a more authorization so understand the important so then bp gets penalized by the so kpmg has caught it bp that hey there is a change you know you have assigned an sap all here is it data so every user data modification will be tracked don't ever think that it will not be tracked sap itself in the system itself there is a table okay there are tables where your activity will be tracked i mean what changes you have made what have you touched and everything so it is simple for these auditing teams just to check the table okay they'll see oh so and so tcs user has assigned sap all and removed the sap all fine no matter whatever it is this is not as per the terms and agreements of this company fine that that's it they will find so for that uh, assessment so if you change something then the fine will be more if you change uh, nothing do then there will be a fine so some million euros it's not 1 lakh or 2 lakhs they'll charge a hefty amount because your system is not compliant as per the government rules and regulations or the financial rules and regulations right every stock market every company has the rules and regulations so everybody has to obey so the satyam computers and they all did what same thing so they logged in with some user and then they changed the data and they have shown the wrong data you know financial you I mean if i have to put it in a very nutshell so almost 5 to 6 years they have shown the wrong revenues wrong taxes so then at one particular point in time somebody has identified i mean they have seen this and then they caught it and they are managed internally they saw auditing teams and all i mean without those things will be revealed outside okay so understand it so even though you are assigning just but it has a very severe and serious implications uh, in production systems so whenever you are doing something in the production system be very 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 cautious okay not only this so when you are importing that every activity what we are going to talk next 15 days right everything is critical okay never ever uh, you know and stop don't do any multiple activities when you are working on a production system so these are the best uh, some recommendations i give you with my experience i've seen a lot of cases i'm telling you where i've worked on sleepless nights for 10 days 15 days for fixing one issue okay in the customer location so they ask you to stay there okay and they will provide you food bed everything they will throw on our face in the meeting room okay in the client location so we in 2014 i was there in london for this kind so i mean you know there was an issue that's it uh, their legal team and they were after them and then we were in a meeting room and you will be supplied with everything and you address it that's it you fix it and then go home 14 days it took for us and everything over there only we were in the office 14 days we didn't even come out of the building so until we figured out uh, who has caused it and what was done and what is done in the system and all the legal reports and everything is submitted then we will really relieve it is like lockdown of the building so we almost 30 to 40 people were, who are working on that project were relieved only after 14 days after doing so much so scrutiny so this is very important um, understand these real life problems so you may starting your career in basis but don't get scared over a period of time i mean with these examples and stuff over a period of time you will uh, get to know where you have to put a break and where you have to be controlled and and understand that you are the very powerful guy okay so basis guy is the most powerful in the entire sap landscape so you know that manager said or this security guy said that user said this user said never ever do anything so developers functional anybody they have their limitation they have that thing but as an admin it's you who can put a full stop over there you know stop it get the right approval i don't approve i don't import it without your so and so approval so following the process is also your most responsible task okay whenever somebody ask you to assign a user id or password i mean some authentication extra authentication forget about it whether he is a friend or close friend or buddy or doesn't matter okay so there should not be any kind of affectionate or friendly thing you can help him troubleshoot you can help him do whatever you want but don't assign him the un- unauthorized authorization okay even though you think that he didn't do anything he just want to see it as a said example right you just assigned and you removed it but there was a serious implication because your system violated the uh, norms defined by the uh, government or the financial organizations okay so that is very very important guys so keep this in mind so that's why i'm stressing these uh, authorization objects it's not only knowing how to do and how to do thing you will be able to do it for sure 
but understand the criticality of these. So now you understand the importance of these authorizations. And then the, we discussed about the users in three layer architecture. I mean, but we are only focusing on the uh, front end or the SAP GUI related uh, users. Okay. So the next important question is, so like I asked you, what are the users you guys are already aware of it? User types. So we have uh, <clears throat> around uh, five types, but four are the most frequently, more, not most frequently, four types we use a little bit frequently. But of, the, of that, two are very, very frequently we use. Okay. So yeah, the screen and theory is fine, but I will try to simplify it in a way. At least you guys are comfortable with the terminologies and uh, these users, what they do and stuff. But believe me, only when you work and when you create something with that particular user, then only you feel the real importance and you don't have to buy heart whatever I'm explaining. I mean, don't have to remember, but you will by intuition or by thing, you will uh, remember that. Okay. So the first and okay, user types. So let me go here only this diagram. First thing, dialogue. And then we have system, communication data, reference, and then service. So mostly we use dialogue system, system only, these two, mostly. We don't, uh, in very rare cases we use, I will give you examples, uh, you know, where you use the service user and where you use the communication user, where you use communication reference, in my last 10 years of experience, I never used it, believe me. So I may not able to give you an example, but the remaining four, definitely I will give you examples and they're perfect use cases where exactly you use them. Okay. So now I'll ask you a simple question. I mean, if you have worked on it. So with the dialogue user, the users which I provided you, what type of users they are? See, if we have this user, so TMS ADM doesn't exist in 800 client. The reason is, it's a client dependent user. This exists only in the triple zero client. Okay, clear. So now let's see a TCS USER1. Yeah, so you see here, here you can see the user type. So what type of user it is, a dialogue or a service or a system or communication user. So dialogue user, dialogue user is mainly uh, to do the day to day tasks. Okay, so normal dialogue user is used by one person. For example, TCS user, whatever I have provided you, you only one person has to use, but you can share the password. But the thing is, uh, you you generally, you should not share that. Okay, during a dialogue logon, the system checks for the expired or the initial passwords. Okay, so see, first thing what it checks when you are logging with TCS user one. So what it will do is, uh, oh, what is my validity date? So it will check this particular thing. Okay, validity from and to. You see here, this one is, this user is valid to 10th. So what it will do is, I will extend for all of you, don't worry. So display, so logon data. So it will check the first thing is validity. So as soon as it doesn't meet the validity condition, immediately it will throw an error, hey, the, the user has expired. Okay, so now the second one, Second check it will do is, suppose the first time when I created this user, you set an initial password like SAP123, I gave you password, right? And then it asks you to prompt for changing the password. So that it will ask the second, second check. So see, the dialogue user behavior is this. So just remember this. So I mean, you get again, the, the, this level I am explaining, these terminologies in a clean way that <laughs> they will ask you in certification. So what does dialogue user do? So because these are all more like intuitive questions. What does dialogue user uh, when you try to log in first things? Number one, it checks for the expired or the uh, initial password, whether it is expiration or an initial password. And the user has the opportunity to change his or her own password that you did. So multiple dialogue logons are checked and logged. Okay. For example, uh, TCS user one. Okay. If you share to somebody, three or four people logs into the same user. So as I said, there are tables who will track that. So there is a table USR 41 MLD. So which will track the how many times that user has logged in and what is it doing? So I mean, so if you go to the SC 16, so for every most of the critical things, guys, believe me, 
SAP will track the logs. I mean, we'll we'll put a change. Uh, so let's say they execute. So you see here. So B name is nothing but the username and mandate is these are the uh, database terms. M A N D T wherever you see M A N D T which is a client. So in 800 client you see A C M demo. So peak uh, two times and concurrently they logged in two times. I mean immediately. So this is the kind of thing they will have the data. How much uh, last date, last time, peak date, peak time, first time, first day, everything is tracked. I'm telling you. So especially when anything with relevant to the authorization and role changes and everything will be tracked. Don't say that nobody is monitoring. It is just matter of time. You know, people like me just logs in and then open this report uh, table. That's it. They will get to know the history of what exactly the consultant has done. Okay. So that is why, and especially for all the basis, never ever underestimate that nobody is tracking from the basis. So it might not be a case for developers. So developers, uh, they may not track and they can't track also because those developments and stuff. But for a basis, they know this guy is a very super user and they know that you have the access and this will be tracked by default. SAP will track it. Forget about the customer and others. SAP will track it in the system. Okay. Just for root cause analysis and then problem analysis. So be careful. That's Jason, just an example I'm showing. Yes, USR 41 MLD table will track how many dialogue users and how many times they log in. Okay, so then the next important user, system user. So system user is of type dialogue-free communication. Okay, so for example, background processing. Okay, the work process which you uh, you know suppose a job collecting the statistics of the database or the collecting the uh, data of the certain um, table. Okay, those jobs are the background jobs. They don't run in the uh, uh, what we call a uh, dialogue processing. So for example, uh, if you put it in a dialogue, so which means your screen keep on rotating that hourglass, right? Uh, rotating, 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 and you have to wait for hours to complete that thing. So that job will run for one hour to, I mean, one day, two days like that. So then you would schedule it as a background job. So in such cases, you always use the system user. Okay. So system user, can you log in with system user to the system? System user, can you log in? As anybody with the TMS ADM, will you be able to log in? Or with the... Uh, uh, batch underscore RFC or batch underscore some user, will you be able to log into the SAP system? You will not be able to log into the system with the background user. So here you see not SAP GUI capable. Okay. So only two users, forget about reference, only two users you can log into the system. One is a dialogue user, which you all are having. And the another user is a service user. So to make your life very simple or the understanding very simple, dialogue and service are the same both. Okay. So this service user. So, but what is the difference? Why you need a service user? Okay. So, I mean, when the dialogue and service is same, why do you need a, both? You can log in with SAP GUI. Why do you need service? Exactly. So the reason is service users, uh, there are use cases for service. For example, a developer or a app developer, you know, he always wants to access to the SAP system. Okay. But he is not communicating with the uh, SAP GUI. You know, he has defined some kind of API, you know, application plugin. So, but he wants to log in every one hour and he wants to fetch some data and see it. And then he will code, update his code and something like that. But that guy, uh, you know, he can't give the dialogue user password again and again. You got it. So it's very frustrating for him. And sometimes he forget his password also or his code, he will change it sometimes. So for that purpose, so number thing, the most important thing is irrespective of how many times he hit the system. So he's, the, his user should not get logged. So, but dialogue, there is a restriction, right? So three to four times, if you log into the system, then it, the user get locked and then you have to contact the admin, you know, to reset the password. So that guy don't want to do that. So service user is mainly used for the integration scenarios where a, a dialogue kind of user is used. So this service user will never expire. Okay, number one. And then it will never uh, has the, this one, what we call uh, uh, password. I mean, password uh, locking thing. So it won't get locked. You hit them as many times as possible. So it won't get locked. So this is the explanation here. A, a user of service is a dialogue user. Okay. That is available to a larger and anonymous group of users. So, I mean, for example, there are 30, 40 developers 
who wants to integrate or the create the applications talks to the one sap system and you giving 30 users to them imagine it, dialogue users okay giving them 30 uh, like tcs user 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 you know it's a very painful thing okay so or i could have given all you 10 people right one user tcs simple tcs and then create it as a service user and given you okay why i didn't give you because i want to know who is doing what in the system you understand so that's why i given you dialogue users with tcs 1 and 2 instead of a service user but know that there are thousands of people who are developing or integrating with one but only one application and giving them a thousand users is very irritating okay and in an admin imagine to reset their password those guys will lock their users and it's too much of admin work so such cases you create a service user of type and you give them all one user that's it hey guys okay what is your organization and you are working on your product this is the okay fine use this user and in your applications whenever you are communicating to my system use this user and password so that is the difference between dialogue and service you got it right so only the user administrator can change the password of this service user okay so as i said the system does not check for the expired or the initial passwords during the logon okay this that is the beauty of service user so service user so it won't check whether it is expired or not no the service user user id and password that's it and it won't ask you to change the password also because you are the admin and you set a password of strong password you know 13 digits 40 digits and give them that's it or else again they change the password and they won't share to anybody so that is the uh, service user so service user is a dialogue user and you use it when you want to give it to a group of people one user okay or the project one user and then one password with no control for them only you as an sap basis guy has the control over this one okay service user will you be able to log into the sap gui yes i said so yes you see the screen middle screen sap gui capable dialogue and service users you can log into the sap gui but the difference is service user will not ask you to change the password and it will not check for the expiration okay and this password only is ch changed by the you uh, developer okay so that's why left side you see password change dialogue yes it will ask you to change password change service user no any questions guys on dialogue and service before i move to the next set of users they are both are different category okay these two are one category so is it clear the difference between dialogue and service it is important so you are following me right i mean you are understanding so i'm trying to make things simpler but i'm not getting whether you are understanding or not so you getting clear difference between these two please do let me know system i've already explained it's a dialogue free communication i mean you don't want to log into it so within the system or from system a to b so most of the uh, rfcs have you heard of the rfc connections sm59 okay so if you go to the sm59 So these users, what they use here, right? They're all like technical login, technical settings, login and security. Yeah, IW user. So you, let's go and check it out. So they can use the other user. So dialogue free communication means, so like SU0, okay. IW user, let's check this one. Hmm. This doesn't exist. I think this is a, um, system triple zero client related one so i will check you anyway it, it will tell you that if you go to the user it will tell you it's a system user so my question is sm59 let's check this one so this is the connection from this eh8 system to some aao system okay so in the logon and security gw admin so they are using this particular user okay so this is a uh, system user okay you connect to that particular system using the uh, uh, this particular user so can anybody tell me what happens if i give a type of user dialogue user here so i mean i want to explain you the dialogue free communication what exactly does that mean so you know putting the theory is fine for me you know i can close and i can move ahead so see you know definition dialogue free communication with a system for background processing okay this term you see it's a beautiful line but i can simply skip this and proceed but i want you to get a feel of what does it exactly mean dialogue free communication okay practically suppose if you define this gw admin as a dialogue user in su01 right 
whenever our system eh8 tries to communicate to this gateway system or this abap system okay what is going to happen so what happens when you will first try to log in with the dialog user it will ask you for user id and password right so yesterday when you logged into the password what it will say it said please input me the password now also it will tell you input me the password right so what happens is it will establish the connection but it will ask you to type in the password so you don't have this uh, password status you got it so that is the problem you got it what i'm trying to say and somebody can lock it and uh, expiration is the another reason so dialog free communication means dialog means it will prompt you to ask a password it should not ask for the password so it will take the password saved and then you proceed and always ensure that my connection works that is what i mean by the dialog free communication you understand that is why the system user comes into picture when you define the system user here then it will not ask for any user or password it will not check for the expiration simply it will go and it will always the connection will be working until unless someone go and change the password of this gw admin okay if you change the password you come to the rfc connection and you update the password simple so that is what i mean by the dialog free communication okay when you are establishing a communication with other systems so it should not ask for the uh, you know of changing passwords or expiry passwords or this stuff okay that is the important so that is what i mean it can also be used rfcs use various applications rfc they its main use case is the rfc connection remote function call this will i will explain in the rfc session exactly what are these connections and stuff but just know that such kind of connections when you are making from system a to system b connection that times you use this background which are dialog free communication and then tms adm also so tms adm also it's a dialog free communication so it will by default it configures when you initiate the and uh, stms okay so it is not possible to use this type of user for a dialog logon as i said <clears throat> not gui possible in the screen okay so system user you will not be able to log into the sap uh, system with sap gui okay so and then we have the communication user so again communication user is also same like system uh, user okay so i mean it is not possible to log into the system the usual setting for the validity for your apply users this job okay so the only thing is uh, the difference you can put a validity type here validity so system user it won't check for the uh, validity period okay uh, so system user doesn't have an exp expiry date okay so i mean it will not ask for this check so that's what users of this type are accepted system user is accepted from the validity period or the password chain passwords but suppose um you want to uh, there is a system b you want to establish particular uh, connection for only two days okay and you may forget it after that time so that guy may abuse it so you if you want to avoid such a scenario what you do you define simply communication data and establish it two days it works and then it stops that's it so it's very simple now you let's make a quick uh, recap i mean this this table uh, i mean you know from this table we'll try to understand okay good so mainly we have the four types of user dialog service so they both are same so service user the only thing is it won't ask you to change the password and it won't check it won't have an validity time okay it will be infinitely available simple and they both can be used to log into the system service user when do you use the service user when you have to give access to the group of people i mean when there is a project uh, the developers whom you want to give it to the this people and then communication and system dialog free communication so you don't want to give it to the uh, whenever you are connecting you don't want to punch in the password again and again uh, for example background jobs rfc connections so dialog free communications you can use this too so the only difference between communication and this uh, system is communications thing you can set a validity and it will ask you to change the password also okay good so any further questions guys so most important ones are dialog and system guys that's it apart from this service you anyway i think service you understood it so when to use it is it clear this concept okay so system user the is used for the rfc connections when you are connecting from system a to system b okay so why you cannot use a dialog user is whenever you are if you use a dialog user 
in, a, in instead of a system user so the behavior of the dialog user is simple right so it will ask you to punch in the password pinch in the i mean type the password okay and it will also three times if it the connection doesn't happen or it may fail i mean if the password has some change so system a to system b when you try to connect with the dialog user the, it will prompt you to change okay punch in my password that is not uh, i mean that is very irritating for you i mean you don't know when that system connection is used right the background connection so that's why you put a system user user there so that it won't ask you to change the password or if you don't ask you to put in the password first of all in the first place i mean update the password ask for the password prompt okay because it's just a communication and you never know that which which application uses that rfc connection and whenever it uses it will using the system user it will try to uh, establish the connection okay so what are the examples where you use for system rfc connections and then background jobs i mean when you are running the jobs and then tms adm is one of the examples okay so system user do not expire okay it won't have an expiry date as long as that system user exists in the system it works okay so you yeah, i mean it won't ask you to change the password also yeah, as an admin if you set the password then it will be there okay clear system the only difference between communication and system is communication user has an expiry date that's it so for example and that use case is um you mean you are working on a project uh, system a to system b connection only for two days so you don't want uh, i mean uh, the contract is up to two days only you set a validity date okay this you and um, then you leave the user so it will act as a system user but with a validity date most importantly that is the uh, most important communication users use case so yes so now we understand what is the um, authorization concept and then we understand what are the types of users we have in the, this thing and then we will talk about the security policy so this security policy uh, you will understand more uh, when you do an uh, use case okay uh, i mean when you do the uh, assessment um, uh, the lab exercise which i have given you so we will do it after this uh, session so security policy um, is nothing but for example i'll give you an example so you are logging in with the dialog user right in a nutshell you know i, I don't want to stress it too much so when you are logging into the user so i gave you a password sap123 but that password is very easy one okay six digits only so i want to restrict the password okay sometimes when you are logging into the google also it will ask hey minimum you have to give eight characters and in that two digits has to be there and in that one alphabetical has to be there you understand so such kind of password restrictions can be created and then assign to a role simple if i have to put so that is the about the security policy okay but for the reference purpose i will read all these things but <coughs> if you understand it that is the security policy simple a, every day you use in any, any account even you are logging even facebook google anything it will there are certain security rules they will put for the password that is what it is the security policy okay so that you can do from the transaction code sec pol sec pol security policy so i'll just execute it so anyway i have designed one uh, uh, this one for you guys so security policy okay how to create and stuff and assign to your user so that you will try uh, after this session okay so you got it security policy it's a simple one so there's nothing to uh, it's just that you, you should know how to do it that i have explained in the labs okay how to do it from the uh, system you do it then you will get a clear picture of what it is just restricting or setting up certain kind of guidelines for the passwords and then the users okay so and then let's go to the next slide okay so then the another important thing is the user groups okay so what are these user groups so su okay now how many transactions i have executed so far from today morning only two one is the su01 which is the user master update i mean uh, the user uh, address data password setting expiry date and so on so user master record that's the technical term for the user and the second one i used is the scc pol okay security policy just before that is used to create the security policies i mean what password the user can have and how do you restrict that one and which you can apply to the many users okay that is a security policy 
then the third one the important thing is the user groups and i am going to introduce you to the another uh, uh, transaction code here which is su10 okay so user groups in the sense for example you have an organization so i have a finance guys sd guys a material management guy purchase procurement guys so many fico guys and sd guys so many people are there so i mean each because according to their uh, group i mean according to their functionality the authorizations and the roles are different right suppose if you want to add a new role to the financial guys so and going with one user you know user by user it's going to be very tedious okay so what you do you create a group and you add 100 users in it okay simple 100 financial guys are there so mass maintenance is possible with the user groups okay so that's the only easiest way of understanding this thing so, but if you go to the su10 you will understand better or for example uh, tcs user 1 2 3 all three of 10 of you i have i want to assign one role or an extra authorization so i will give all the users in this user data so that's it change and then apply so mass maintenance is possible for us so if you click on this authorization data so he see here user group so you can pick the user group here i mean whom all you want see here ariba user demo user of demo systems let's see this one okay so and so for all these things if you want to lock all of them we can all lock so if you their validity if you want to increase you can increase from so it's a like mass maintenance okay so mass maintenance of these people is possible with the with groups it's just simple you are grouping them together so that's about the groups okay in this side as there is only one guy <laughs> so let's take some other user group okay authorization data and then user group let's take uh, let's take super okay so then execute anybody here <clears throat> yeah here many people so you see here so user group uh, i mean they are all belong to the super group i mean you can define fi group or uh, md group mm group like that you can tcs group you can create all the tcs users so if you want to give them the you can select all of them from the group itself so then assign or do or mass mass maintenance is possible it's also very important when you are working in big big projects where you want to change for 100 users 200 users you no know, doing one by one it's going to be very tedious so just come here give their user group and then assign the role that's it so you see here so how do you assign the role um, let's go back so again authorization data so user group suppose you want to give uh, authorization to the Which of these guys? Which one we selected? Super. Where are you, super? Yeah, something. So here, suppose if you want to assign a new role, you assign something. Okay, language. You want to change anything? Change it and then execute it. Then all the things will be applicable for them. Okay. Good. So any questions, guys, on this user groups? Is it clear? Ah, the second important thing. Where do you create these user groups? I mean, the super and all. Where do you create? so there is another fourth transaction i am going to introduce you yes you gr see you don't have to remember these things guys uh, <clears throat> so you can create a new group so if i want to create a tcs so here you do a tcs specify a user group okay so let me create tcs okay so i want to add the users i see either clipboard also i can copy or i can take from all of you from here so so tcs user 1 tcs user 2 okay i am adding all of you tcs user 3 so let's do this thing yeah 3 users fine now save so later we can you can add it somebody you can you I mean this, this is just for demonstration purpose users for fine that's a group is created so now what i am going to do so or if or in sug or if you want to display you can do that so if you want to see how many users are display user group tcs you know give you can see how many users are there now um, 
if you want to change, you can change it. Now, if we go here, as you 10. Okay. Before that, let's see. We will change something for all these users. So TCS user one. What we are going to change is. Yeah, let me change the validity from 3009 to 2021. See, you see this, uh, this is with the 2021, right? I will change it to the October, okay? For all the users. So you can, so now let's go to the SU10, all of them. So I want to change to the, all those groups, whoever has belongs to the TCS groups. So let me put TCS here. And for all of them, so I mean, changing it to one by one, it's very difficult for me. So what I will do is I will validate validity so let's say September 1st to validity. So just for the understanding purpose, I will give the October 2nd. Okay. So now let me execute. Okay, so for this user group, um, somehow those users are not added, TCS user group. So, I mean, <clears throat> I, I think I just have to go and add them one more time again, the TCS user one and user two. Here you see, so TCS user one is Paka added to this TCS group, so it has been changed. So if you want to see, so SU01 again, TCS user one, just to display it. Okay, I'll create it. Okay, we will check it during the lapse. Okay, I'll create this one. So somehow this system is not accepting. Mm -hmm. But that's how you do this. Okay, I will, I will, yeah, yeah. I'll create it and I will show you. Somehow it's not saved it. Let's not waste time. So that is the user group concept. So because it's in a sandbox system, sometimes there might be some restrictions. Okay, I'll do that. I will, I will give you the demo, don't worry. So this FI, CO, SD, MM, and PP, they are the different modules. Uh, I mean, each module, you can create a group and you can do the mass administration using this particular uh, SU10 trick code. I will show you later how to do that. So let's start with this. Good. So now what you understand, so total four transactions I've in, introduced. What is user master record? And then uh, what level of authorization you can provide them? I mean, permit the protection. Either you can log in or you cannot log into the system or execution level we can put. And the third thing is, I have explained about the users. So what are the users? Um, system user and dialogue users, communication, and then the service user. Okay. So now the important part is, what is the roles? Okay. How do you maintain user roles and assignments? Okay. So here we are going to talk mainly on the, I think you might have heard authorization object, authorization profile, authorization check and role. Okay. And then uh, user master comparison. So the, these are, these are the most important, you know, creating user is one part of the story. So then assigning the right authorization is the another part. And most of the cases you will get issues in the second part. I mean, the users do not have a right authorization. So the other day, somebody is telling that I don't have authorization, right? So what do you do? If a customer come, I mean, if a customer or the end user complains that I don't have authorization, so on, so execute, how do you troubleshoot it? Okay, that we will see. So how we are going to check this one. What is authorization object? What is authorization profile? And what is authorization check? Okay, so, so, so to understand, I mean, what is this authorization concept? And you need to understand what is the role and what are these profiles? And uh, what are these basically? Okay. So you look at this diagram. We are going to explain one S underscore user group authorization. Okay. So now you try to understand it in a theoretical basis. Okay. When I log into the system, then you will understand in a uh, easier or the better way. First thing. So, you know, we have again. So groups, fine. Keep it aside. User groups for the mass maintenance. So, you know, you can grow mass maintenance. That is one part. So the second thing is for those mass maintenance, for example, I have a group of 100 basis guys. Okay. So for all of them, you cannot give SAP all. First of all, SAP all is completely restricted. Okay. It's a training system. You all got the SAP all. 
um, you know, nobody gets SAP all in anywhere until unless, if, as I told you, how critical it is. Okay, no one has an SAP all access. Okay, so just know that basis, guys. So what all authorizations basis guys should have? Or I am creating a group for the basis guys. So this is the object class. Okay, I define it as a basis administration, and then in that there is an authorization object. Okay, so user master maintenance or the user groups, and then the activity. What activity those guys can do? Okay, and then user group in the master record. So what group they belong to, kind of thing. So there are any object class, any, if you open any authorization objects, we are going to open it soon. I mean, we'll open it uh, as a part of it. Any authorization object will have three main fields. So, hey, this guy belongs to which object class is a basis guy, functional guy, or MM guy, or whatever is it. So it, it is in the, in terms of, it's not user group. Don't get confused. It's, we are talking about authorizations. Okay. Oh, this guy belongs to the basis class. Okay. What all things I have to, what activities he can do that will be listed here. Okay. Like monitoring or using the tools or a database, DB2, DB02, DB key. So those activities will, be, and then the authorization here, you know, what in this particular activity, for example, you are a basis guy, uh, DB02, you, you know, let's say the activity name is the monitoring. So monitoring, what do you, what activity is the monitoring? Monitoring means all the transactions at st03 st22 st01 whatever is the transaction you need only display access right so the authorization is nothing but what access in that particular activity this particular guy in this authorization object needs only display fine so for that monitoring activity you assign only display and then you have an activity where you have to update the or create users create so then you assign that okay su01 su10 so and so transactions i will create you, we have to create access and then change it. certain table or certain SC16, some entries he has to change. It. So then you will provide for those transactions change activity. So like that. So these are the three concepts or the three critical things, any authorization object. Okay. Which object class that guy belongs to? Okay. It's a basis guy. What all activities that basis guy do? Monitoring and then updating and then checking certain things. Okay. So those are the activities in those activities. What are the transaction codes this guy needs? That is where they mention this authorization and provide this simple, clear, clear. You know, I simplified it in a way that uh, it is very easy for you to understand. That is the authorization object, nothing. So that is the authorization object or the concept of authorization, what we are going to assign. Okay. And then authorization check. So, how, so again, it's a very important interview question or uh, certification also, it's very important. What happens when a user logs into the SAP system? Okay. So SAP system, what all users can log into the SAP system? Only dialog and service user. Fine. So dialog and service user logs into the system. Then screen. So the first thing is authority check. So or the user context. Oh, as I said, okay, it, it doesn't matter. So it will log into dialog user. It will first check the what? So it's validity of the user. Okay. Oh, this user is valid or not? Or is the password has been already changed? Fine. If it is already changed, then type in the password. It will come. That's it. That is already done as soon as you get into the system. Then authorization check. Oh, this guy. Oh, it's a basis guy. Okay. What all things he needs? So does he has authorization to execute this transaction? Okay. He has an authorization to execute that ST22 transaction. Then yes. Then process it. Or else if you don't... Uh, get this one. I mean, if you don't have an authorization, if, if your transaction is not defined over there for authorization object, then it will say no. And then it will give an error message that you, you are not supposed, you are not authorized to log into the system. Simple. This is the authorization check process. Okay. So, okay. The moment you log in, you got an a not authorized to uh, access this. What do you do? How do you know which all authorizations you not? Just execute the SU53 transaction. Then you will get to know what all authorization is missing. We will, we will, we, I will, I will give you a demo. Okay. If a user is not able to authorization check and if you want to know how, what authorization this guy is missing, that also it is very simple to identify. Okay. So now let's, so authorization check any questions. Okay. And then the another important term. Okay. So in this one, fine. You, we are defining what all activities a guy can do in this system, right? 
but can you define what all he cannot do for example he is a basis guy i want him to give the access except divide access everything please provide it's a simple right coming in reverse direction instead of providing 100 uh, transaction codes and 100 uh, activities defining can you do like okay except debug access can i uh, give him everything can you do that anybody you understand except uh, debug access give him everything so that kind of thing can we do that in a reverse way everything that is not explicitly allowed is forbidden that's it this is can be described as a positive authorization concept you know there are authorization concept so this is a positive authorization concept which means if you have not defined for him that these are the activities and these are the uh, authorization transaction codes he can access if you don't mention that's it he cannot access anything else so even though if he has 1000 activities that has to be explicitly defined in that authorization object and that will be allocated to your role and that has to be assigned to that particular user you got it but anyway that is one time activity as once you create the role or the authorization objects that's it so they will be available so it's very important guys again it's an again a true or false question during certification so same question which i have asked you so in your customer client if a customer ask you to provide access apart from this particular accepting this particular transaction code is it possible no so so everything that is not mentioned or clearly defined in the su uh, pfcg so which will not be uh user okay so now we will do the um user roles and assigning roles to the users okay so the, i am going to introduce you the another transaction code which is pfc now we are going to the concept of role so the user uh, assignment and the role creations and the user comparisons can be done from the pfcc okay so this is also a very important thing you can create a role and you can assign the authorization objects i mean extra authorizations and it is simple you assign that role to the multiple people basis guys or fico guys or something i mean whoever is it belongs to them okay so you can assign a same role to the multiple people okay but a user can only access whatever the roles he has been uh, assigned and what are the authorizations he has given to him okay a role can be assigned to the multiple users you know both the ways i mean you create a role and you create to the entire all the users that i will show you how to assign that okay that is possible so role is nothing but it's a group of uh, authorization objects so you can define it and then you can assign to the user particular user so see any roles uh, which starts with this sap right they are the uh, standard roles i mean sap provides them by default but you always better not to use these roles so i mean by taking a copy of these roles you can create the your own roles so changes the role administration for web channels so let's you know i'm trying for basis one okay fine take it any role so you see this so you just display this one ah it's very important guys so menu you can define uh, what are these guys can do display delete logs data browser call view transaction system log web dump analysis so because it's a developer role so st22 analysis is important so you put all the things menu you can define here or there are some web related stuff also you can define so this next thing is authorizations so guys this authorizations and then user it always has to be green color remember so this role even though you assign this role to some user he may be able to log into the system but he will not be able to do anything in the system okay that is a problem so the reason you have not uh, done the authorizations properly and your user master comparison did not do so the importance of user master uh, comparison is why why sap has put uh, complicated this you know simply you create it and you assign the authorizations and you give it to, you give it to the per person i mean simple assign it it works no sap intentionally uh, put here you have to generate an authorization object okay so here you see there is no profile which means it is useless no matter you whether you assign so first of all you have to generate the profile for this one and then you have to assign to the users and then do a user master comparison that is very very important guys so i mean in most of the cases you get issues because of these two things so these two has to be uh, green color and you should know what all users it has assigned and you have to do an user master comparison first what we do is let's try to do the uh, 
I'll give you a demo. We will copy it to a different one. So now I am going to do a copy roll. So, I mean, it won't allow you to use the SAPs. Uh, it's not recommended. You always take a copy. So, for example, I'm doing a TCS underscore copy. So, copy all. Let me copy it. Okay, I've copied. Now, let me do this thing. Or let me go back. And then let me change it. Okay, I'm going to assign ABAP, use, uh, uh, ABAP roles to all of you. How am I going to do this role? So, I can give it to anybody, whomever. Authorization hello, which means some problem. What is the problem? You come here, there is no profile here. And then users, you have not assigned. So now first you fix the authorization issue, this one. So you click on this. So it has generated. So which means you just generated the authorization profile for him. Okay. So and then save. Good. So now you come here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign this to the TCS user one, TCS user two. Let's do this. Okay. Users have come and these are the validities for you guys. Oh, this validity has changed guys. So, I mean, it has changed to 1999. So that user, it took time to reflect. So now I'm going to do the user master comparison. You must save the role first. Yes. I want to save the role. So profile comparison, user attempted profile comparison. Update the profile first thing. Ah, see, so which means your authorization is still has some problem. So that is why it is not doing the, so here at the bottom. So which means the profile has not generated properly. Okay, status, current version not generated. You see here. So these are the important things you need to check guys. So now what I'm going to do is change authorization data. So it will give you a disclaimer, what you are doing. All right. Let's test your knowledge. Here's a question for you. Which of the following is a benefit of SAP basis in terms of system administration? Option A, simplified user interface design. Option B, centralized system monitoring and management. Option C, improved supply chain management. Option D, enhanced customer relationship. Take a moment to think and when you're ready, choose the correct option. Remember, each choice holds a key to unlocking the answer. Good luck. Type the correct answer in the comment section. So sometimes based on the role, it takes time. So let's do that. Good. So I, I told you a few things. Object class. So this is the object class, SAP role for administration of the ABAP channels. One diagram I told. And these are the activities. You know, he can do cost application, application objects, activities, what he can do, basis administration, he can do, basis development, environment, he can do. And if you scroll down, you will find what all things he can do as a part of this, you know, activity. So I told you activity, right? What all activities he can do? He can change, display, delete, execute, activate, administer, copy, download, everything. So even if there is a start, then in which clients, everywhere he can do. In name of the systems, any, any, you know, star, 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 which means, so these are the activities he can do. So as I said, it's a positive um, role concept, which means whatever is assigned only he can do. Rest all he cannot do. Rest all activities forbidden. So these are all activities he can do as a part of this one. And then administration of the internet communication again here. So again, add, create, everything is given. Star, star, star. Okay, so like this, you can add one more also if you want to add something else, you, you add it and basis administration. Let's go to the basis administration. So you can check the system authorizations. Let's see. So SICF, yes, you have the SICF access and then system administration function. So these are all things, okay. So this is what I was explaining about the object class and the activities, what all, this is an authorization, uh, how this works. Now, what are we going to do? you have to generate guys so this is important guys generate there are open authorizations still okay generate profile is created okay then save so not generated again this click on this generation button generate okay Prof profile created authorization profile is current you see this earlier the status was different and then this authorization has become green you got it guys. So you always have to generate the profile and it will tell you that this authorization profile is correct. Okay. SAP want 
introduce this to do this for every role i mean at least once whenever you make a change it's a double layer protection so even though somebody created a role and assigned to the users it will not work until that guy comes here and do the authorization i mean this one and they can restrict this who, who, who the uh, whoever can change this also and only the authorized people can generate this profiles that also they can restrict it so that uh, you know anybody can uh, simply can go and change these things they will not do they you know it should not be possible so sap wanted to introduce an extra layer of authorization and a team lead or somebody can generate these profiles then only this role works even though you create you have an access to create a role and you create it but you will not be generate this authorization until unless you generate this profile current it will not work okay now the second thing user so who is this user so tcs user 1 tcs user 2 is and now you do the user comparison okay so complete the comparison let's do this now see now it has assigned this to the the comparison user must completed so now this part also becomes green clear so then this role works for sure now you go to the su01 so tcs user display and then roles perfect this tcs has assigned and it is in green color which means you have given some abap authorizations and you have assigned to this user and then this user will be able to work properly with this authorizations hey there ready to dive into the world of sap basis our course is here to guide you through it step by step in this course you'll learn all about sap basis it's like a tool shed for managing stuff from making sure we have enough resources to get them where they need to go our course covers everything you need to know from the basics to advanced tips and tricks it's created by experts who really know their stuff your instructors are seasoned pros who've been in the game for ages they're here to help you learn and answer any questions you have and guess what our students absolutely love the course folks just like you have found it incredibly helpful the best part it's budget friendly this amazing opportunity to learn won't break the bank ready to become a sap basis pro sign up on our page now for more info head over to zarentech's website stay tuned for more updates